Darkest Dungeon is about making the most of a bad situation. You are not expected to succeed on your first expedition, now we know, or even your tenth. Heroes will die, failure will abound, and the world will seek to smother your flame. Take heart, do not relent. Press forward through the encroaching gloam and face your fears. Redemption at last can be found deep within the icy depths of the, wait for it, The increasingly loud soundtrack of Darkest Dungeon 2! Now that's a proper introduction. That was better than my first try. Let's turn that way the hell down. Yeah, so folks noted that the game was a little loud last time, and I didn't actually get to hear how loud until I watched the VOD. Uh, it turns out it's quite loud. My bad. I'll, I'll fiddle with this real quick before we get started. <laughs> it's Bandcamp Friday. Make sure to pick up Encroaching Gloam's new album, says Jacob's Pillow. Oh, that feels good. That feels good. To read a chat message aloud and then say the person's name who said it again? That's another thing that I actually prefer about Twitch's chat is that it makes the name of the user a different color for every person. So I can more easily read out your name after your message. You may have noticed that period of time we were on YouTube, I stopped doing that. It's because I couldn't read your name anymore. It was this, It's the same color as your message in the YouTube studio, that same base white. So I can't differentiate it anymore. I just see it in bold. Now everything's nice and candy coated. It's like, uh, it's like my chat opened a bag of Skittles. All right, let's get this volume set up because last time I thought I did that, but I did not. Unless this is my other profile. It isn't. I just named this one profile. But yeah, welcome everybody. Oh, I'm I'm so excited. I'm so excited to be doing this again. To have everything I don't know set up and functional, you know what I mean? Like I it, it took a few days. It took a few days of straight, straight work, but it was worth it. That's where I've been this week. Uh, I, I had a little bit of hypomania. I focused, I focused in on, you know, this. Because, uh, believe it or not, this took a couple hours. I know it doesn't seem, I know it seems quite simple, but I've shown off the layers before. That's archived elsewhere. It was a pain in the ass. But it was a it was a worthwhile pain in the ass, I feel, because there's so much more I can do with it on this website versus YouTube. Stream Elements has a lot better integration here, you'll see. Uh that all still is good. I didn't change any of that from last time. I didn't so I didn't change any of this from last time. But if it runs like crap, let me know. Because we got some stuttering on your end last time we did this. Hey, Mr. Leno. Oh, man, that's a name I haven't seen in a while. I, I am doing well. I'm doing better than I have been in a while, my friend. I hope you're doing well, too. Let's keep going. Long and lonesome road. Get our, get our horses walking. Now, this is tradition. Every time I am named after the flagellant, but sadly, he's missing this time around, which means that we're bringing along some of you on our journey today. Now, we learned last time that other than Dr. Beak, the characters in this game are the characters from the comics, not just random heroes that wander into your village to assault the darkest dungeon. No, they're meant to actually be the characters from the backstory comics from the first game. Well, once we've seen them to their fate, I suppose we can then decanonize them other than Dr. Beak and start naming them after you folks. First time around, we'll bring around the real one though. See if they make it to the end with you. An ocean of emptiness, slowly swallowing the world. Yeah, but what about in the game?
the seat of your denial, perched precariously in the murky gloaming. Watch out for marked men on that lonesome road. I wish, you know what? Maybe I'll do that Fallout New Vegas stream in seasons. We finished it with Zion. Maybe I'll do a season two of it where I just pick up that save because I still have all that stuff. Thanks, thanks Bethesda for actually backing up your save files elsewhere for no reason. Be, it, just in case, oh, I don't know, someone happens to lose their operating system hard drive and have to swap platforms. Not that I'm in denial or anything like that. That's what we're here to defeat today. You have cowered in your crumbling denial long enough. Boy, what a phrase, right? He said that to me the second time on my personal save, too. And now what denial is, a form of cowardice, hiding from the truth. The between the mythos of ancient cultures was not a new area of study for either of us. But it was there that we first noticed the pattern. The crossroads, where lost souls hope to find their way. Yeah, the thing is, ancestor narrator, I guess, I guess he's not my ancestor in this game. I guess in this game, he's just the narrator. Well, that's the thing, narrator, is I already kind of know about patterns, cycles, misery. I kind of know how those go hand in hand. Played a game or two about that. I found the archives before we get started of our streams of Returnal. I found, I found some archives of our Returnal streams. Oh, huh. You visit the Hope Candle shop after picking your heroes. I did not know that. I thought it was in the other order. Whoa. Well, I guess we're doing that next time then. Fair enough. I guess we're bringing along a whole gaggle of new folks this time because we've got a bunch of different unlocks now. Now we sure do. Here. Anyway, I recovered those Returnal archives, and I'm going to be posting them on CJ VODs because that was a really important stream to me. Returnal? I'm so glad I was able to recover all of those, including the Aesop Rock one. That was great. That one was a lot of fun. But we did this. We reached the second inn with everybody. Hell, we reached the last inn. I can't, I still can't believe we managed to do that on a brand new save file. On a brand new save file, we managed to make it to the mountain and beat the first encounter. I don't know how many encounters there are. I was blind at that point, but my God, I can't wait to make it even further. Right here. If you complete a character's goal, that, sorry, let me say that Guy Fieri style. Right here. If you complete the goal of a character, you unlock a thing for them? I, I, I guess you have to select this? I don't know what the... I didn't know you have to select this in order to unlock it. But I guess we'll do that this time. We'll put everyone on their path. Whatever that means. Well, welcome back, Baristan. Who wants to be Baristan? First one who says me says gets to be Baristan. Why not? Pride. More devastating than the horrors of a hundred campaigns. JT Jag, my man. The classic. I recall naming characters after you in, I think, the very first Darkest Dungeon stream I did ever. Oh boy, that JT looks real good in this font. Look at that JT. I just gotta say, that's aesthetic as hell. That looks like the, the font for the evil within. <laughs> Damn, that's a quality JT. <laughs> Well, it's like whenever I see a CJ, right? That C and that, hey, I just gotta say, that C and J go together aesthetically very well. It looks like a face. I've done that my entire life. <laughs> I, I only thought to do it for my Twitch live streams when I had to make an icon for it that was circular. I was like, shit, it's not square anymore. All right, well, who wants to be, uh, well, let's see. Who are we gonna plop in next? I'll surprise you. Grave robber, who wants to be grave robber? Avarice slips unseen into the catacombs of the mind. Jacob's pillow. But, I mean, all right, hey. <laughs> I 
All right, all right, we got two more. Dismas, who wants him? Uh, say Dismas. <laughs> Instead of just me, say Dismas. I'll force you to type something else. Kiwi Satan managed to squeeze in a pun, too. Hunted. Harried. A fugitive seeking to outpace the past. Yes, indeed. Seek and you shall find, my friend. Should I include the Kiwi? Is he an outsider, the Highwayman? He's from a foreign land this time. A region beyond the uh, inky abyss we now find ourselves in. Wherever the hell it is. It seems like the estate from Darkest Dungeon 1, but a lot of time has passed, and now there's a big old mountain there. I mean, the mountain was there before, but now it looks a little Darkest Dungeon 2-y. Indiscriminate science stains the surgeon's hands. Sorry, Dr. Beak. One more show. I think we may put Dr. Beak away once we unlock some further healing. Or perhaps a class that can heal themselves a little more effectively. For now, we're running with the same team as last time, just so that we can put everybody on their paths and uh, unlock uh, alternate modifiers on their skills. I don't, I don't quite know what these do, but I didn't know last time that I had to click this in order to enable it. Right? Of course. We must name each Dr. Beak in succession after her, you, you, you know, we have to keep the line going. But I'm gonna imagine that it's not a genetic succession. She just names one before she bites it. So it's one of you. It's just that you happen to take on the moniker of Dr. Beak when you put on the mask. Don't worry. If I didn't get to name you, you're under there. Okay, who's running with what today? What are we what are we doing today? Who's 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 got the absolute worst skills that a man at arms could have? I had one where he got stunned. 50% chance at the start of every turn once, and that was rough. Slayer of Plague Eaters. Good. It seems like a mace would splat stuff like that pretty well. Doesn't like being on fire, that's pretty normal. I also don't like being on fire. Oh man, we have an we have an ascetic highwayman. He has given up everything. This he has become a man of prayer under there. There's like a gigantic cross necklace under there. He won't even self-flagellate. That's why the flagellant's not in this game, is they removed self-flagellation as a mechanic. Okay, now I don't see that as a negative. Hang on. The game this game says Toon Hummer is a negative. As if it's going to annoy people in the wagon. I, I absolutely refuse to believe that. Dr. Beak? Dr. Beak clots easily, kind of makes sense, given what she's covered in. Blood, not bandages, I mean. Uh, fear of gentry. That's one I've never seen. Huh. Oh boy. So, I guess, do I guess Dr. Beak and Baristan are gonna have to guard each other. Excuse me, JT Jag. Don't worry, I'll get used to calling you your names as they appear on screen. Okay, I guess if we face down any plague eaters, I'll try to remember that. Jacob's pillow? Now hang on, the name there, hang on. I'm not gonna think about that. I, I just thought about my own name and then, never mind, it doesn't matter. Hatred of fanatics. Me too. Me, me too, Jacob's Pillow. Not a fan. Oh my god. Jacob's Pillow is going to get really stressed out. We are going to have to make you our resident corpse eater. You are going to have to get over your necrophobia. Because Audrey has a skill that can destroy graves to, to, to heal on uh, that turn. So you're going to have to get over that as we go. That's some stress you're going to have to work out yourself. Now last time we tried a pretty standard setup, but now we have a couple more skills to work with, which means we could do something weird and stupid. I do like doing weird and stupid things. 
What's what's the, what kind of weird and dumb shall we go for for our first run here? Not a whole lot we can do with Grave Robber. Gra mm, nope. My executives, they dysfunctioned. Grave Robber. I think we're good. We'll stick her in, uh... I think we'll stick everyone pretty much the same way we had them before, honestly. Dr. Beak has a fascinating one now, where she can... If anyone has any positive tokens, like, say, Bolster from Baristan, heal them for more. So, at some point, I may put this skill on and have Baristan be a, a buffer. You know, because he's literally a buffer. That, 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 that JT Jag. Let's see. How about we try Point Blank Shot again? Because point blank shot was a lot of fun, and until we reach that uh, until we reach that point where we can start doing combo skills, I'm gonna take off tracking shot. Because though that though those were quite effective last time, we needed to wait until pretty much halfway through the game before I could start setting up combos and then executing them on the same turn. So we won't do that this time. This time we'll try something different. So that this run is a little different than the last one. Bellow, we didn't even try. We didn't even try to make JT Jag here a Bellow fellow. Maybe we will do that. Yeah, we'll see. I think we'll leave everybody else as they are for now. We'll just get going. Because we got some uh we got some hope candles to spend. Although. I did like the way that we made Dr. Beak and uh, Audrey on the last stream an absolute plague on the world. We're going to have to do that again today. There we are. Pretty similar setup to last time. Oh, but don't worry, it's gonna mutate real quick. We've got hero shrines to find. The road is yours to travel, but you are not alone. Ah, we got friends with us this time. Game running well? I should hope so. Hey, get it? Get it? You see what I did there? Welcome back to the Altar of Hope, everybody. Uh, the, it's, it's not much of one. No further statement. Uh, but it does kind of look like we are rebuilding the ruins of... Ruin has come to our family. We, have, we are rebuilding the ruins of the manor, it seems, in some form. And at the end of Darkest Dungeon 1, a near cataclysmic explosion of darkness seems like a pretty fitting way for that game to end. So, I'm gonna say that that's probably the culprit of a lot of what we're seeing here. But we'll find out what our buddy the Scholar has to do with it along the way. First things first, the living city. That's where our heroes are, right? Hearts and minds will carry the day. Well, we're gonna need some strong hearts then. We got quite a few to choose from. Not this guy though. Bounty Hunter will save for a little while because he's got a fascinating gimmick. We may very well never run into the Bounty Hunter if I unlock him last. So I I will save him because I don't think I'll have enough supplies to ever make use of his services right yet. But otherwise, we got a whole cast to choose from here. Let's grab the Hellion. She seems like she's got a strong heart. And biceps. Hellion. Ho oh, ho! He said her name. Okay, well, hang on. Well, we have to replace the flagellant then. Yours truly? Some days I feel like one. Leper. Yes, indeed. Uh, I should hope there's no cougar to go with that leper. 
Now let's see. There's something fun that you can do with your hope candles regarding heroes. By spending just a few more, you can unlock uh, little bonuses on their intrinsic skills, but also additional trinkets. Interesting, and entire, entire paths. So this is what we're on now. Now that I've clicked the word wanderer, I didn't know I needed to do that again, but that's fine. You can also unlock paths here, which just do all kinds of fascinating stuff. This one makes Beristan basically into a frontline buff, heal. He doesn't heal any HP, but he can add resistances to your team. It, it turns him into a support class. Dismiss? This- hell. This path for Dismiss is pretty much set up for point-blank shot. The closer he is, the harder he hurts. Surgeon? Oh god, Dr. Beak. Oh god. We could- we could give each Dr. Beak a new profession to misuse on the path to the mountain. This one's for healing, for sure. Grave robber? Oh, now those are some- those are some good ones. I use arranged skills a lot. I'm grabbing that for myself. You increase that dead eye time. It's like I'm streaming Red Dead. I promised I'd never do that, but I'm reconsidering. Maybe in a year or two. I don't know. We'll see. Let's see. We'll start unlocking some trinkets and stuff, I guess. Uh, but but some of these are some of these are specific to the class. You see, these are the trinkets that are specific to them, which drop from bosses, from loot chests. So we gotta be kind of, I don't know. We gotta be kind of careful which of these we unlock, because we don't want to encounter them too often versus stuff like the cultist trinkets and other stuff that will be for everybody. Because if I don't have a Plague Doctor, and it gives me a Plague Doctor trinket, I will just have to throw the deuces at my wagon. And throw it out. Thus, let's unlock a Plague Doctor exclusive trinket, despite what I just fucking said. Here we go. Give our grave robber some death blow resist, why not? And you know here, since we've just unlocked Hellion and Leper, let's see if they have paths that we can pick. They do. Holy cow! The Ravager path is mean. Just bleed the whole world. I told you she's got a strong heart. I am no coward. Come make your end. Good stuff. This is rank one Hellion. Who needs to yop? Chop skills. Yeah, make him even slower. Because that's what the leper needs. The leper needs to go absolute last on every turn. And hurt more than anyone else. You know what? I'm taking that Hellion path. I'm interested in that. Why don't we try that? Let's give it to her. On our next run. I actually like this, in hindsight. That this is all planning for the next run, in essence. Because all of this stuff that we're discussing here gets to pay off the next time that we play the game. And we'll have even more candles to spend by then. More possibilities have opened up. In advance, basically. Loot from running over to Bree. Bah. We don't need these quite yet. Bree relics for arriving at the hoarder, though. Fascinating. Oh, well, come on. We have to unlock the filthy stagecoach skin. There is no shame in celebrating your gains. I'm with you. Although the filthy stagecoach skin is a it's a 
stressed stagecoach skin. Str okay, once it reaches striped, then they start to demonstrate prestige. Right now, they just demonstrate strife, which is the opposite of what we want. But I'm running with, I'm running with my stream chat, so you know it's okay that it's filthy. It makes sense. Memory is the hearth that warms the mind. Yes, it is. I wonder what this does. Would you like to unlock this, like, right away? Maybe on the next run. We'll save a couple of candles and do that on the next run. By the way, there's a building down here that you can't select, I've noticed. There's something interesting. I just, uh, I... Maybe at some point we'll unlock the ability to select this particular building. But right now it is shrouded in so much inky fog that it wards away my cursor. Spare a thought for tools of iron. Such implements will serve us well. You don't know how many tools of iron I'm about to unlock, my friend. Let's do this. We need more combat items. We need bandages, medicinal herbs uh, of the green variety. But we've got the pipe weed, so that's close enough. A drop of sanity in a sea of madness. Good if we need to shove someone. Oh, that's that's good on cultists. Well, linseed oil goes good on cultists. Thanks, Lin. Lin, your seed goes good on cultists. There we go, clotting powders. That's the type of stuff I'm looking for. Now we don't need Dr. Beak to apply resistance to everyone on our team every round. Thanks, Dr. Beak. You, you, can, you can take a rest. Your tired arms. New instruments will help us diagnose the world's affliction and overcome it. That's a really good thing for him to say when you unlock the flame resistant powder. That's very good. That's very thematic. He was waiting. He was waiting for me to unlock that specific one. Killing salts. Oh, that's good. Man, clearing days and stun. It'll wake you the absolute hell up too, according to it. Oh, great, Caltrops. Who doesn't love Caltrops? Oh, Caltrops for everybody. Oh my God, this one's really good. Whoa, Caltrops just affect the whole enemy party and bleed everybody slightly? Damn. Just trip up everybody like a bunch of cowardly ninjas would while running away like ninjas always did, like cowards. <laughs> Anytime I mention ninjas. Stimulants? Nah, they're no good for you. But they make you want to fight. That's true. Death cap spores. I'm familiar. Uh, oh, that's great. Oh, that's very good. Enemies in this game now have death blow resistance naturally. So having an item that you can apply to them, just huck it at them, throw it at their head, just throw it in the mouth of the Sarlacc to make it more resistant, to, uh, less resistant to dying. Blight resist, very good. I think that's nearly everything for resistances. Venom, bleeding, uh, stun, move resist, fire. I don't remember how many other debuffs there are. Horror, we haven't unlocked the laudanum yet. Chalk dust. Again, cowardly ninjas. We're just gonna throw chalk dust in people's eyes and run away. Okay, let's try some in items. Let's unlock some more pipe weed. This is fun. I kind of like doing this one at a time, actually. Nice! Restorative herbs. We need those because that was a problem we really had last time near the end. At the inn in this game, you heal mainly stress, not HP. You have to feast on slime mold to regain your HP. So this will help. No longer will our heroes have to feast on slime mold. Now they can eat lavender. Deacon! Deacon is helping us! Mop in a bucket. Nice stress relief. That'll... You know what? That's good for you. 
It's exercise. It's it, It'll work out your stress. Or it'll make you more stress if the damned spot won't out. I have heard that that it may cause you to walk into the sea. Uh, but we'll... It's fine. It's later. For now, we'll make it to the mountain. We can still eat the slime mold if we want to, right? <laughs> of course we can. And of course we will have to. Of course we will. Whittling tools? Of course. I'm looking for more items that increase the relationship between the party out of these in items. I would love to see more of those. Yeah, baby! Like the whiskey bottle! Two targets, third of a chance they become way less friends. <laughs> Two thirds of a chance they become greater friends than ever before. That's kind of how it goes, isn't it? <laughs> 67% chance to become greater friends. 33% chance of waking up in the morning in a shrub. Broken window next to you. Stale bread. Have you ever been defenestrated before? I have not been, but I do love to use that word. Okay, stale bread is slightly better than slime mold. Even in terms of how it works. Songbook of Touching Dirges. Whoa! Whoa! That's a great one! It makes everybody better friends. Oh! Oh, they just bust out a guitar around the campfire and sing a song together. Well, that's lovely. That's, uh, that's two whole pips on the relationship bar for everyone in the party. Slightly more... Stressed, I suppose, but such is the melancholy world that we live in. That's a thing to use first. Well, that's a fun one. That's what I was looking for. They're getting a little more expensive now, but let's keep going. You start with plenty of trinkets, so I don't think we need any more yet. 75% chance of hitting the dartboard. 25% chance of hitting Baristan in his good eye. Got it. There's a dartboard. All right, fine. We'll do some. We'll do some trinkets then. Well, you know what? Here, just a couple more, for variety's sake. A book. My time in the desert. Huh. Oh. Oh. Is this one intended to be from the? Oh, what is it? The uh, one arm lady with the buckler, the class from the first game who's not in this one. Shield bearer, I think her, was her name. Or shield breaker, I think was her name. She had a spear and one arm. <laughs> snake stabber. There you go. That's essentially what it was. Yeah. She stabbed her way to the front with a snake. And then the other ones in your party did that over and over until everyone was blighted. She wrote this book, I'm pretty sure, about that tactic. We'll give this to Dismas. But anyway, you can tell it's written by her because it had one of her skills, in addition to the, I assume, the setting of it. Her thing was that she would come to the front and then stealth to the back. That's really cool. That's really cool that they kind of gave you an indication of who that's by. I like that a lot. Or, or what region of the world it came from, you know? I like, ah, oh, that's awesome. That's really cool. Here, you know what, we'll do stagecoach items. Yeah, give me some more interesting stuff to, to slap on. Yeah, sure, like an explosive safe. Oh yeah, incendiary cocktail, smoke bomb, i bomb. I don't even have any of those yet. Uh, presumably I do, but it, I haven't come across any of them. Hot damn. Hero shrines, this is good. I, I am glad I got this because now we can stack up on new hero skills. Uh, between streams, once this fella and the narrator have made the greatest of friends and it stops giving me that dialogue, I'll start doing runs off stream um, to get the rest of the hero skills. Because you can replay their mini games from the main menu now, which is really awesome. I have a way to show you this whole game, <laughs> and I'm really glad about that. Uh, 
No, no thanks. I'm not interested in this. After going to the Ford the Fodor last time and seeing all of the flesh trees, I don't want to do that again. I've had enough flesh trees, thank you. Then again, that region turned out real well for us. That was one of our better ones. Blah! Oh, not him! Ah! Oh, anything but him! Oh my god! The, 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 so the collector's apparently no longer a problem. We don't have to worry about the collector anymore. Good news. Someone stole his shit and ran away. He can't he can't take the eternal spirits of heroes and make their goddamn dismembered heads part of his entourage anymore or whatever he used to do. I love it. Oh, that's perfectly I I don't know. That perfectly encapsulates this game, that they took one of the most dreaded random encounters from the original game and turned him into an item that stacks hope. That's incredible. What a, what a way to flip the theme on that douchebag. One time I ran into him on the second week and I beat him. I got a YouTube video of that. Get owned, collector. You're part of my collection now. Yeah, Dismas carrying his own head was kind of... That's... <laughs> I can see why the man is so troubled after that. That's the kind of stuff that only happens to a and d style party like this. Party of four adventuring nuisances like us. Here we go. Bottle case increases stacking for our buff items. Buff our resistances. And hey, look. You've revealed Laudanum is still in the game. Hey, you. Hey, you, combat items, give me the laudanum. Molotov cocktails. Goes well with the... Yeah, you know what? Goes well with the whiskey we unlocked. Well, that was fun. And I love how the buildings slowly reassemble themselves. Very, very slowly as you spend the candles at them. That's... That's such a wonderful small effect. I mean, this one's almost done already. It's getting there. I just wanted to show this process off because why not, right? We have time. We'll show the game in its entirety. Now let's see. Yeah, so the recollection is just our, oh boy, everything we've picked up so far. And, and yes, indeed, it lists new items at the top, but stuff that we picked up on our last run is also here. So we get to, we do indeed get some fond recollection of ripping the faces off of the griblies in that beast den and using it to cure Dismas's syphilis. Taking it to the library and returning some books. Coming out ahead of the game. I mean, we made it all the way to the mountain. We kicked the asses of so many cultists last time. Let's see if we can do it again, why not? Once more into the maelstrom in search of what hope yet remains. Last time we found some. Let's find some more. Yes, indeed. So I haven't changed any visual settings. So it should look the same with our horse squirreling, squirreling all over the road, multi-horse drifting. I haven't mentioned at all how the horse controls yet. I am actually controlling the horse with W, A, and D. I just didn't get a chance to mention that last time. I am the one who decides if we run over the debris. I guess I'm sitting on top of the carriage. Hey, Desperate Few. How you doing? Hey, Descriptivist. How you doing? Welcome. To Darkest Dungeon 2. Let's give some assistance to the folks who need it. Look at this, they're willing to part with some of their valuables, too. We could go with some early trinkets, or we could stack up on food, even though no one needs healing right now. This is something I hardly ever do. I, I hardly ever stack up on stuff early, because I figure once you get to an inn, you may as well empty your inventory, because who the hell knows if you're going to get a legendary trinket or something. Hell, you may buy bandages, and then end up finding bandages. I think Dr. Beak's got the smart idea. Hope is contagious. 
once it catches. Let it catch on their flesh. An inkling of potency still lingers in some of these well-worn relics. And reflect. Reflect indeed. Your coach is laden. You can carry no more. My god, it is. It gave us everything. It gave us everything that I just unlocked. I was I was kind of just talking about that, about building up an early stock. Oh yes, I'd forgotten that because we didn't unlock a whole lot at the start of the last run. Well, let's dole out all that combat stuff that we just got. Oh man. We're going to have to drop some of it, but that's okay. We don't actually need all of it anyway. Uh Well, that's going to help us out quite a bit. Just find some to... Find some to drop here. There are a couple of these I think I'll keep. I'll take the freebies. Once again, this is a fun system. Ensures that every run starts you off with just a... A little bit of variety, fun and variety, that you didn't have available to you last time, long as you unlock something new, and nothing is very expensive either. Well, here, we'll get rid of the fire resist, because we sure as hell ain't going to the city first, if it appears. This death blow resist is nice, but it won't help us early. Movement resist, we don't need that either. There we go. We'll give the, we'll give the remains to the rest of our party so that they can buff each other. Get buffed, my friends. Once again, trying something different this time around. Who are we giving this to? Well, it's gotta go to JT Jag. There you go, buddy. The Garden Gauntlet. I mean, you're already wearing one. You're essentially wearing a Garden Gauntlet underneath your Garden Gauntlet now. So, now your arm is twice as reinforced, and it'll get twice as broken by blunt trauma, but that's fine, because it's twice as defensible if it doesn't. So let's just hope your arm has- it never gets broken. I sure hope we run into some incendiary cocktails, actually, because that- that seems like that's gonna be quite fun. I know I threw some away there, but- because I forgot about our stagecoach upgrade. I forgot it lists those under legendary upgrades. Over the leaves and through the hills. To the very first inn we go. His stifled smirking betrays a malign madness. Hey, Descriptivist, I've played a couple of dozen hours of this game, so it's cool. I know how it works already. Thank you, though. I appreciate it. I imagine folks who join the chat and then immediately start giving advice kind of look like this guy. But it sure is helpful advice that they give. The thing is, I don't know what I want to give you, buddy. I do like the idea of more stagecoach upgrades, but our stagecoach itself currently only has two slots. I do believe that they've changed it such that we need to spend our hope candles on that. Let's see. Strong box. Worth investing in early. Thank you, my friend. For once, you don't have an inventory completely filled with garbage. I mean, there is still that portrait of the ancestor back there. I'm gonna tell you, nobody wants that. You may as well dump it in lava. Let's see. Looking for items that make our party more friends, but uh, sadly he ain't selling any of those today. He heard my negative comment about the chat, and now he's punishing me for it. Listen, I take the chat's advice. It's just, I like to ask for it first. If I ask the chat for advice, then I'll totally accept it, but like, never mind. How about you buy a trinket? I ain't gonna save these. I ain't gonna save these baubles. Hmm. I do like how this early stretch sets the tone for basically your entire run. Let's get someone faster. We got some 
We got some members of our party that could stand to pick up their pace a little bit. Uh, buy some bandages, too. Based on where we may be going. Maybe. That's the thing. I just bought a caltrop on accident. Oops. Guess I'll save them then. I guess I'll save those. I... You know what? I specifically discarded the caltrops earlier, but that's fine. I'll save them for later then. Even more caltrops. See you later, hoarder. Take care. Kiwi Satan? Apparently also a fan of Darkest Dungeon. Recognizes the hoarder from elsewhere. As in Dismas, his character does. <laughs> And that's something I do so like about this game. A recognizable, the the first the gasps of, of Darkest Dungeon One are. Giving way. Yeah, speaking of bulwarks, we got problems, my friends. Let's get to it. Let's see. All right. Well, they've got wonderful blight resist today, these lost souls. Let us perhaps put them to rest. The entire team gets to go first today. The whole thing. The whole team gets to go first. We didn't even run into one of them, one of them weeping widows that I do so love. Dr. B can't do so. Can't do so much when there's no one in the back. Could just shoot him. Ah, but they're so weak to bleed. My friend, my friend, I'd love to be rid of you. Ah, crap. Ah, oh, so very close. Ah, oh, well. Dainty Jag taking our first stress of the run. That's apropos for Baristan. That's pretty much how it always happens for him. This zombie in the front seems to just always shamble directly for Baristan, first thing when he's in my party. In that way, I know what to expect. Predictable. Truly. Friends already? Jacob's Pillow and Dr. Beak? Scavenge what you can, and be off once more. All right, Do Dr. Beak, you need to slow your roll. Last time, Dr. Beak began to romance essentially the entire party by the end of our run. I will not have you doing that to my viewers, Dr. Beak. They're supposed to be enchanted with me, not you. Do Dr. Beak became amorous with Audrey and Baristan. Although it was only a fling for the two of them. Push on to the inn. Rest and resupply await you. Simple and clean. Just how I like it. We're starting off on the right foot. On the really right foot this time. We got some real positive relationships building among our party. And that's what this first little stretch is really about, in my opinion. Rest tonight. Under the mountain's unblinking gaze. I do love it. I do how I do love how if I weren't jabbering to you folks about every decision, it would take about 15 or so minutes to get to this point, right? It took us about, I don't know, 25 with me talking. But from the start of a run, I love that that first little run up to the Torch and Crown, that first tiny combat is actually really about building up supplies for the rest of your run building up their relationships and stress to start the the snowball effect basically decide who will be friends who helps each other early on they're doing great look at them all they're just so happy to be here all of them oh my god i can't imagine a happier crew jt jag in the front Dr. Beak in the back, Kiwi Satan and Jacob's Pillow just lamenting the state of mankind. Don't worry, we'll make it better. Let's see. 
Who are we giving this wolf's blood to? Who, who do we think, uh... Well, let's find out who has the least speed, why don't we? But it does decrease the max HP, so maybe we should give it to someone who doesn't have very much, because then the penalty won't really matter. Yeah, we could... We could do that. That's actually... A, there are two choices we could make here. We could give it to the slowest member of our party, Mr. Jag. Or we could give it to, uh, to Dr. Beak here. We could make it so that JT Jag can move at the front, or so that Dr. Beak will always move at the front. And that is an, that is an interesting choice. Because right now, pretty much the whole party is at the same speed. You know what? Well, well, we will do that here at the beginning. Yes, indeed. Here at the beginning, we have everybody at around five speed. You know, Kiwi Satan and Jacob's Pillow are slightly faster, but only by a little. So the turn order is going to basically be everybody in our party goes first unless it's cultists now we just need to make them even faster and like each other more let's make them like each other more well let's see how much they like each other already let's see oh jacob's pillow jacob's pillow is already starting to fall for dr beak's endless charm kiwi satan pretty neutral on dr beak but again, slowly, it's slowly happening. I'm thinking we could, I'm thinking we could build on that. It doesn't have to become amorous. That's a, uh, cause there are a lot of virtues in this game. We just happened to have our entire party become the shag wagon. It, you can also become things like respectful with one another. So perhaps that will happen. And Dr. Beak's w wiles won't charm everyone in the party every time she shows up. What do we got to work with here? In spite of what I just said, we can actually save some of this stuff until later ends when the party will be more stressed out. Here. We got to keep our songbook of touching dirges. So, have a tune, everyone. Jam out. Wow. Slow, haunting whistling indeed. Yeah, Kiwi Satan, he, uh, he seems like the type that would know a slow, haunting whistle. Let's see. Let's see what it did. Everybody, every, everybody got a flat two, guaranteed. Oh, I missed what Dr. Beak said. I hope we get another songbook of t touching dirges. I mean, nobody likes a nobody likes a dirge unless they like to be put in a mood like this. But when you're already in a mood like this, how much worse can it get? Uh, okay. I guess we could find out. We now have room to find out. Want to play some darts, folks? Let's let's play some darts. Let's see if we can hell. Let's see if we can make them like each other that much just from the very first in. Oh, this will be interesting. Oh, this will be very interesting. Dr. Beak and Jacob's pillow. Go for a game. I think they're, I think they only need one more. You, you want to have a drink? I, I'm, I, it's, uh, uh, you know what? I think I'll have these two fellas share the drink. These, these two ladies have partied enough. My God, get some rest before you poke an eye out. Although, to be fair, you kind of, you, you're kind of immune to missed dart throws. So it was good I gave that to you. It, well, JT Jag also, but that's because he's got one less eye to hit with a dart. All right, fellas, enjoy. And they loved it. And they loved it together. 
Kiwi Satan and JT Jag. Overriding that asceticism, apparently. Excellent. You got over your you got over your virtues real quick, buddy. In times of stress, good for you. That's realistic. That's pragmatic of you. Here, let's get JT Jag's health back up since we gave him the wolf's blood. Uh, Jacob's pillow. I'll, I'll make you a little. I'll make you a little softer, Jacob's pillow. There you go. Now you can absorb a little more. Let's see. Man, and we got some we got some restorative herbs to give away too. Nobody's stressed out anymore. I think I'll just I think I'll just keep my hands on these in items until the next one because this first round may be a short one. Before we do anything else, let me give a combat item to Dr. Beak now that I have enough. Here you go, Dr. Beak. Uh Yeah, I'll give you the Hey Dr. Beak, would you like would you like the crow's feet? Get it? Haha. <laughs> uh, you see? Cause. Pros. Birds. Dr. B. Never mind. She can't. She's not very expressive behind the mask. I can never tell what she's thinking. Let's see where we're going. The first of many forks in the road. Choose your path and ride out unbowed. Well, we're not going to the sprawl, narrator, so I'm going to say the shroud is our only path to, cha uh, to choose to pursue. To, that, there were a lot of words I wanted to say there. We can get a grave robber trinket. The one we unlocked, as a matter of fact. What do you know? Very nice. Visit three plus assistance encounters. Hey, not bad. We spent pretty much all of our supplies in order to gear up for the first leg of the journey. So this will be a great way to restock, is to kind of push us towards assisting the uh, desperate few or whatever it shall be called in the shroud today. Time to get gribbly again, everybody. The barnacled timbers of the coastal villages are sodden with salt. The Golden Coast. Secrets. Yeah. Who doesn't love it? This innkeeper looks like he has a sausage casing on his head, says Jacob's pillow. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> he does. Maybe he likes to keep it tight. Like, you know, I mean... Oh, hey, JT Jag. From the whiskey bottle, you gotta... You actually really did give up your virtues for the whiskey bottle. Whoops! I think I may have just done that. I I think by giving you the whiskey bottle when you had asceticism, I gave you Tipler. Sorry! I guess it's a slippery slope, dude. My bad. Oh. Look, even he's got one. Sausage casing man's got one. Oh, let's see. Precious relics remind us of a time before the end. Yes, sir. And I'll take some more bandages then. Since we're headed for the... Since we're headed for the, the fish gutting area where the fish will gut us just as hard as we'll gut them. Experience, however painful, Beige. is the greatest teacher of all. Nah, homie. What if, what if one day he just went experience beige? What are we doing today? Well, we're headed towards the Shroud, which I assume is fish people, which I assume are still strong to Blight? I think they were strong to Blight in the first game. If they were weak to Blight, I guess this is the run I find that out, or remember it. Baristan. Jag. Bar Barajag. Bear trap. Maybe we, I would very much like to trap my enemies in place. But this is what I wanted to focus on, was making JT Jag stand into a, a kind of half damage, half support role. Because Dr. Beak has this, indiscriminate science, which removes positive tokens? but also removes negative tokens if we upgrade it. 
So we'll, I don't know. We, we could upgrade some of Baristan's buffs here that he can give to other folks. Let's see. <laughs> we could give his garden to someone and then remove it <laughs> when we don't need it anymore. Just for example, there, there's a lot of possibilities actually. And some of them are niche, yes. Like that's for example is a niche one. But there are some really fun ones. Wanna get used to You wanna get used to point blank shooting stuff? Let's try that. That seems like fun. Here. Oh boy. We can make point blank shot hurt a whole hell of a lot. That seems like a great early strategy. Having Dismas advance, Kiwi Satan, blast him in the face and then back off. I like that as an early strategy if we're focusing on main damage because see, on Kiwi Satan here, I also have open vein. So I want him to stay in the front two lines. So he'll be like, duelists advance, point blank shot, open vein. Duelists advance, point blank shot, open vein. You got your roll on lock, buddy. Ah, uh, let's see. Blinding gas was crazy good last time. Dr. Beak. My friend, if we run into a group of fish people, or people fish, either way, any type of hybrid, any type of hybrid, you are responsible for making sure it cannot attack me. Best of luck, my friend. The next stop is leagues away. Plan accordingly. It's time to grill some fish. We've got the explosives magazine. This will serve well. Strong box. Bolt it on and be off. The mountain will not be denied. Now we'll come up with a name for our stagecoach along the way. Once again, we've set the stage for our journey. And now we must embark. Praise sun indeed. Though I, I, you, you know what? I gotta say. The, the, uh, I mean, it's like two souls references in one. It's like we're walking into Bloodborne land. I know just how forbidden this place is gonna be. I know just how Cthulhu-esque the Griblies are. God help us. If he's still listening. Propriety floats listless on the tide, brined in noxious degradation. Yes, indeed. And, um, about that, about that whole degradation thing. If we happen to go for what I assume is... Well, it's not an, it's not an assistance encounter this time, I suppose. It could be anything. This one's guaranteed one. I was gonna say we're headed straight for that lair if we head to the right, but well, we'll just ignore that then. Stick to the left path. Seems easy enough. Which is a great thing to say in Darkest Dungeon. That's a phrase that often has absolutely no negative ramifications. You will fight so that others may flee. Yes, indeed, and I'm, I'm gonna say there aren't too many folks that are left to flee this area. It just seems kind of like a bad idea to build an area on Your water at all. through them, and so they must fall. Oh, great. Let's hope it's not cultist fish people. No, it's just fisher folk. Excellent. Yeah, they do, they do stand quite in my way given that we have to stop off somewhere and refill our water bottles. We have to boil some water. It's all salty around here. Completely undrinkable. Oh, everyone wants to take it right to them. Everyone is psyched about it. And JT Jag's got experience with fishmen. There are no plague eaters. 
But oh yeah! Aspiration unites the hopeful. Hopeful is right! Let's keep it alive, shall we? <laughs> I feel like he was being sarcastic there, though. You can't say kid to him. You can't. I, you know what? It's a joke between the two of them. They shared it over the whiskey bottle. Hey, Captain, get up here. Yeah. Holy shit. Well done, JT Jag. Well, for the past hour, this is what you've been waiting for, and we're finally here. Welcome, everybody, to the real Darkest Dungeon. Hey, Dismas, get up there. Go, Kiwi Satan, go! Oh, man. I was good to not rely on Blight here. I was very good to not rely on Blight. Yeah, I'd rather just hit him in the damn face. That seems great. I would love to hit him in the face. Oh, I can't wait for the Umi Bozu. No, this is the Umi Bosun. I, I know it's uh, very similar, but if you look in the corner there. No! Oh! I think that was the very first attack. That was the very first attack you've done on this run, and it was a crit. Well done. The slow suffering begins. Oh man, we got we got Kiwi Satan as one hell of a needler to the rest of the party. Speaking of needles, yeah, that's quite the bleed. That lasts for a while. You back there? I was hoping you would get up here. That's okay though. What do you think? Think we can blight him? I sure would like to. I just want to get the captain out of here before he does too many moves. If I blight him now, he'll die at the start of the next turn. It would be nice for Dr. Beak to get a crit and just kill him, though. Crap. Nah, you can't do that to him. He's the class that doesn't move. You know, I haven't checked out what these barnacles actually do. Damage you when moving. Well, that kind of well, that kind of interrupts my strategy for point blank range, now doesn't it? That's kind of why I wanted to get rid of that guy. Oh, well, fair enough. Uh, let's see. You know, I kind of I kind of would like to get rid of this fishmonger because it seems to be secretly the most dangerous enemy. It's keeping the rest of the troops fed. Fair enough. All right, well, I, uh, I terribly apologize for this, JT Jag, but Kiwi Satan is about to make you bleed. The good news is, he's gonna make the bosun bleed even harder. Christ, he bled him right into the afterlife. And do not relent. Yeah! Nice heal. Told you it was important for the party to like each other. Captain versus Captain. And yeah, it did in fact count as JT Jag moving, but it's fine. It was in the service of great justice. We ain't going hungry tonight. Yeah, let's see you try that again. Well, I was joking, but... Your accuracy needs work. If only you had another eye with which to aim. Still waiting on those bandages. I think on the next turn I'll have whoever's holding them use them on Dr. Beak there. About all Dr. Beak can do from back here. Dr. Dr. Beak ain't the best at fighting the back lines more for stunning, stunning and plaguing the back lines. Which is why we upgraded it. But that didn't miss. And plus, we can always have our buddy Dismas just shoot the bastard. You know, my favorite skill that he does, the one that's just called to just shoot the bastard. I believe it's... Oh, huh. Maybe I didn't... 
Oh, maybe Dr. Beak has the bandages and that's why I didn't notice them. Crap! Well, this is unfortunate. Uh, I actually, I actually kind of don't want him to, to take that bleed if it throws a knife at Dr. Beak again. You know, you know what? Hey, why, why don't you just... Oh, oh, that's right. Yeah, that's, that's real bad. That's a real bad skill that it can do there. But that's exactly who I wanted it to be done to. Perfect. Uh... Yeah, let's just get this out of the way here. Haste and carelessness. All marks of the unprepared. That's fine. That's just a setup for the knockdown, my friend. That's coming later. Here, you can have this back. It's lodged in... It's uh, currently lodged in Jacob's pillow's sternum. Ah, oh. uh, let's see. Oh, hey. These bears stand ain't bleeding anymore. Who does have these damn bandages? Hang on. Who did I give them to? Nobody. What the heck? We'll look after this. A petty hindrance. Sorry about that, Dr. Beak. Cook down these nightmares and blaze the trail to your redemption. Hey, look. Another songbook of touching dirges. Excellent. We'll save that till the next end. The, the baubles for this area are untainted sea stars? Okay, I actually like that. I like that a lot. They're really valuable. I assume if I give them to someone like the Hoarder, he will do arcane experiments on them and make them into fish people, so I won't be giving them to him. Those will probably be going to the innkeeper. The loathing festers. Well done, everybody. That's one loathing down. It's more like a fiefdom of loathing now. An elementary problem, is it not? Yep. Kiwi Satan wants to go for the lair. Kiwi Satan is feeling confident after that very first combat in which Dr. Beak almost bled to death. If I say good for you, Kiwi Satan. That's guts. Bandages, shit! Thanks, Jacob's Pillow. This is why you stop before combat encounters, my friends. But it's okay. We've run into enemies that are weak to blight. Thankfully, not too big a mistake. Uh, what a fool. I'm such a fool. That's the type of fool that I am. I'm the type of fool that in the chat, I say, don't help me unless I ask for it. And then I myself am a forgetful person and don't equip my trinkets. We encountered this problem with the first Darkest Dungeon stream too. But that takes care of that problem now, doesn't it? They'll, uh, they'll go away eventually. This fella, though, isn't going anywhere. There. You two! I've got a feeling that this big giant man is going to try and chop off our tiny legs with his... It's, it's about a leg-sized axe. It could take off a leg pretty well. Let's not let him do that. Again, I have to keep him from protecting them, though. Otherwise, he very well shall. Then we won't get a chance. Okay. It's not a problem. Oh, boy. Actually, it's not a problem. Horror only has a 50% chance in this game versus the first one where it was a 100% chance. Guaranteed. For your money back. That was a little harder than I expected you to throw that, but that's actually okay. There we are. I was hoping I'd get that off first. JT Jag here has heal on his primary attack. We talked about this last time. Combo attacks are a great way to self-heal in this game. They seem to have done a wonderful job of making it so that you can 
generally give each class a way to self-heal so that you're not, you know, reliant on ounce of prevention or battlefield medicine. Well, hell, that'll only heal six. That ain't actually too great. I'll wait till Dr. Beak is hurt even worse for her to heal herself. So, sorry, Dr. Beak. You're gonna have to limp along for a little bit because it's actually, funnily enough, better that way. Oh, that's right. I'd actually forgotten about a, a mechanic there because JT Jag was protecting Kiwi Satan. The repost there didn't apply. Whoops, that's something I'll have to remember. There we are. Oh, oh, Dr. Beak has lots of wonderful animations for rummaging through her various pouches. Each of the different animations for selecting a grenade has a different rummaging animation for pulling it out of her various pockets. We ain't doing a whole lot of damage against this fella, I gotta say. He's really stressing me out, too. Does he got death blow resistance? Sadly, he does. All right. A slow dissection. We'll get him to the death's door early then. Unavoidable end. Let him step through on his own terms. You know, when it's his turn, I mean. Well done, everybody. Although, quite a bit of stress damage on that one. I do like the simplification of the stress system going from one to 10 now, instead of from zero to 100. It's a case of having less granularity paying off more. Let's not forget those damn bandages this time. Why don't we? Jacob's pillow, you can have those. Next time Dr. Beak bleeds, we are going to use them on Dr. Beak. And that'll improve your relationships. Look at this. JT Jag and Kiwi Satan are already hopeful that this journey shall be carried to the end. Oh, Kiwi Satan is the aesthetic one, excuse me. Which is a positive quirk, I suppose. The, the game considers this to be a positive quirk. Which, which I guess means he participates in nofap? Good for you, I guess. Sometimes it's good to practice temperance. Avoid addiction in life. I guess that's why he was able to withstand that whiskey bottle earlier. All right, who do we want to... Well, uh, there's a lot of bleeding going on here. There's a lot of there's a lot of bleeding going on in this area. I'm gonna say I'll say we'll give it to Kiwi Satan, because if I give it to any of the ladies in the back, they are Well, hey, that's a You know what? We'll give it to Jacob's pillow instead. Jacob's pillow, you can have it. Since those ladies with the knives, I assume they're ladies, they look more like jellyfish now than any sort of human being. So I can't really tell. But I think that's kind of by choice on their part. They would prefer to look like fish rather than people. Point is... Let us hope their desperation can be eased. They're gonna make us bleed. But maybe a little bit less now. Oh, everyone wants to help out. It's like you know that's what we're here for. Our swagger will rouse their spirits! exclaims JT Jag. We cannot let others fall while we succeed, says Kiwi Satan, thinking of everyone there. Jacob's pillow, says yawn. Dr. Beak, humans tend to exude positive airs in brighter climes. Interesting. Dr. Beak and Jacob's pillow here are the two dissenting parties. But this is a complex relationship interaction. Take a look at this. If I pick Dr. Beak, uh, the other two over there on the right will still appreciate the relationship. 
but everybody will take a hit if we just leave, which is honestly kind of fair. Sorry, Jacob's Pillow. I gotta say, JT Jag's got the best idea of any of us. We're going to lose... We're going to lose quite a bit of light no matter what we do here. Hopefully we run into more assistance encounters along the way that give us flame back. Our apologies to Jacob's Pillow. Two facets of the same stone. Never one without the other. Take a look at that. Another relationship already. We're making headway. And it was only a minor hit to Jacob's Pillow. Wasn't even all that bothered because, hell, look at all that loot we're walking away with. Ah. Uh, but that's the thing about the Grave Robber is that it fits her character to be that way. It's not your fault, JT Jag. Let's take a look at the items we have equipped here. We'll take off these crow feet because the... While it is a funny joke to give them to Dr. Beak, uh, we are going to end up bleeding quite a bit more versus these fish. The bosuns, the captains, those ones that throw the goddamn whittling knives that they're making food with out of presumably human parts. That's a, wa that's a wasteful action. Oh boy, interesting one. 15% healing given, but you know, doesn't deal as much damage. That one's got to go on Dr. Beak, because Dr. Beak doesn't currently do much base damage anyway. That'll take Dr. Beak's damage down from 2 to 3 to, like, 2 to 2, pretty much. It won't do a whole lot. But again, she's going to heal herself pretty soon, so it'll help her out. Oh... Oh, I do so love the sound. Let us temper this world's cruelty just a little. Oh, not the sound of splattering the tentacles. I like the sound of the stagecoach rattling on these wooden boards over the sickly ocean. It seems pretty much appropriate. It's it's a it's great foley work because it sounds like it's about to collapse at any moment. Look at these people just standing on a tiny little pier. Waiting for a boat to carry a stagecoach? Yeah, right. Would you like to share some horses? Let's see. There we go. This will get us quite a bit of flame back. We do need, we do need some spark. Oh, we're here. Let's, let's read the chat here. Chat suggests uh, moving Dr. Beak to three and Audrey to four so that Dr. Beak can use perhaps uh, incision. But I that is there these two are basically interchangeable right now in position, but I think I'll leave Dr. Beak at four because if I moved her to three, um, Audrey would lose pick to the face which is just raw base damage. Again, raw base damage is why we're here, because our Blight isn't gonna do very much right now. That's why I left Dr. Beak in the back, is so he can stun. Let's see. Well, hey, look, these two want the same thing. Do I really want that clutter? Do I really want the clutter? Yes, is the answer to that. I'd be a fool not to want the clutter. I'll take the clutter over the relics. We do have extra stacking chance on them, but we'll pick up more relics along the way. And they'll stack from here. Yay, more in items. It's pretty much exclusively in items. Your coach is laden. You can carry no more. But this is good though. This is good because it means we can get rid of the ones that uh, don't do stuff like improve our relationships. For example, these my time in the desert books. This is only a 5% chance to stealth, and I don't like relying on those, so we'll get rid of those. Get rid of one of our restorative herbs. We're gonna pick up- we're definitely going to pick up more slime mold, so I'll get rid of my slime mold. There we are. 
So stale bread and slime mold seem to be quite common items, so we, we don't need to necessarily worry about them. N not necessarily. Because we're just going to come across more, and they only stack to two. Get rid of the dartboard, why not? Now, pretty much everybody is already friends. Check out our relationship score. It is our third or fourth combat encounter of the game. And already, Kiwi Satan and JT Jag are hopeful. And Dr. Beak and JT Jag are inseparable. JT Jag, you're a hell of a commander, Commander. I salute you, man at arms. Now, Jacob's Pillow, Jacob's Pillow has a little bit of work to do, but oh boy, Dr. Beak is right on the cusp of romancing everyone in the party, as she usually does, so we'll let her do it. You do it, Dr. Beak. You do what you were meant to do. Keep our party together. Now. What have we here? This could be a problem. This one is our last known assistance encounter. But if I go to the watchtower, it will reveal all of these, you know, uh, it, it will reveal these unknown paths. So we could take the guaranteed assistance counter encounter and skip the watchtower there. Man, that's the second time I've done that when they pair these two. Speech impediments are weird. You know what? Everyone in the party actually pretty much would rather go and help out right now. Skip the scouting chance. Okay. Fair enough, folks. It's worth healing the stress to listen to your party. The lost souls of a dying world. Empty of hope and humanity. And I'm pretty sure they just improved their relationship, Dr. Beak and Kiwi Satan. Hold that thought. They did. They just did. Oh. They may be about to be united by combat. Oh, man. Well, all right, Dr. Beak, do what you do best. Yes. Oh, and she did. Yes, she did. Here, get that lost soul out of here. Come here, lady, come here. Dance with me, my dear. Let's see. I could just get rid of her on this turn. Oh man, what's your, hey, what's your bleed resist like? She's looking down at herself like, well, I do have the robes. It is a beautiful dress. Bad news, you've exposed your clavicles to me. Nearly the entirety of your pectorals, my good lady. You know, now that I've sliced them open and all of that. But again, the living undead and all that. Ah, yeah, yeah. You can do whatever you want back there. The slow suffering begins. Now, problem is, this fella over here is going to unleash horror on my entire party. He's, he's just going to do that, and there's not a whole lot I can do about it. So I figured I'd just let him do it. See, right now I can't hit him anyway. Ah, uh, what a shame. Audrey currently doesn't have a way to stealth, so I guess we'll just work with what we know. That said, Dr. Beak may still be able to hit him. I wonder, I wonder, Dr. Beak. You know what, we'll leave JT Jag where he is for now. I don't think we need JT Jag to guard anyone either. I think he just needs to beat some ass, crush some fleshy, pulpy skulls. They look so pulpy. It's it's November. It's rotting pumpkin season. But yeah, I think Dr. Beak can still hit this fella. Stupendous. That was stupendous. Well done, Dr. Beak. The absolute unlikelihood of that. 
to go, Dr. Beak! Dr. Beak just did an off-target crit for maximum possible damage. Dr. Beak is the one I put that trinket on that reduces the max damage that she does. And she still managed to do a crit for her maximum damage with that attack versus an enemy that was stealthed. You go, Dr. Beak, you kick ass! Blow that guy away too, why not? Screw him. Yeah! Oh, the combat in this game is just such fun. It's such adrenaline, right? It's such adrenaline versus the thought that takes place when you're rearranging your inventory in between combat. The peaks and valleys of it. They're exciting. And just as intellectual as when you're, you know, clicking on stuff for your guys to equip it on their bodies. Evelyn Padoru with the Dr. Beak emote. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that emote returns. It was always there, but it's good to see folks using it again. Uh, Kiwi Satan, you caught... Oh, my friend. You caught dysentery. I know what that's like. You have my sympathies. And, wow. I kind of wish it had appeared on the last stream, which had been titled Organ Trail. Though it is still befitting of the stagecoach. No! Oh. Yes, so running over stuff in the road gets you relics and occasionally healing items, but it also stresses out your party, so I try not to do it on purpose. It's okay to do it on accident. You must be strong enough to shoulder more than your share of the burden. Well, tell that to my horses. They're the ones that can't carry too much of these people's crap in my inventory. Hey, desperate few. How you doing? Whoa! Whoa, JT Jag! JT, uh, JT Jag is feeling greedy today. What the hell? Whoa, JT Jag. Is that a... I don't know. Maybe it's because he's a tippler. Good lord. Meanwhile, Jacob's pillow over here sees the sympathies. We've, we've got pass over that chest or we will crush you. He's still he's still feeling the heat of battle. Calm down back there, JT Jag. You wait in the stagecoach. We'll let Jacob's pillow handle this. Jacob's pillow has a noble's touch as a former noble. Maybe we'll get to the grave robber story today. My goodness. An unexpected find. Thank you for the bandages, folks. We need them. Clot, everybody, clot. Yeah, I know. I've had him smashing people this entire zone, and he, he himself is like, I'm mad. What, it's it, like, what is it, Mel Gibson in Signs? I've gone insane with anger. You know what? I wish they, I wish the aliens had believed that, honestly. It was convincing. Desperate to survive the rising tides, the fisher folk of the coastal provinces resorted to a debased worship of the sea. Yes, so that is kind of a fun way that this is different than a lot of, uh, shall we say, media based on this kind of mythos, is that that was the ground at one point. The ground is down there somewhere, and now it's not anymore. The sea levels just decided to rise one day. Um, is that a gigantic fuck-off cannon? That, is that a, is that a giant can, uh, yeah, yeah, so I'm a little bit afraid of this fight because of the implication. What, uh, well, that's, well, that's a little bit intimidating. That seems like something I'd probably want to take care of right away. I, I don't know what that's doing in this game. I may want to just ignore this guy. Honestly, I may, I think I may want to ignore this man. Let's just take out his big dick back there first. You've been down worst. I mean, it is pointed directly at his head. Like if it shoots right now, it's going to hit Audrey in the hat. It's going to hit Baristan in the head. 
Who knows? Maybe he's got iron in his scalp. I don't know. We'll just peel away the layers of its armor one at a time. It, it, there doesn't seem to be a human being controlling it. it. It seems to be operated by skulls, actually. It runs on Warhammer 40k logic. Holy hell, it's got stone resist. Uh... It's got everything resist, honestly. Good luck, Dr. Beak. I can't, I can't believe it, Dr. Beak. You're incredible. Dr. Beak, you are my lucky charm. Thank God I've held on to you over the years. All right, fine. I've got a feeling this thing is gonna wheel itself forward. So, okay. We'll point blank shoot together. One unit! Oh, what a coward! It's not even gonna get up here! I'll make it get up here, then! You there! To the back with you! <laughs> what a terrible idea! Oh! Oh boy, JT Jag! You are staring down the barrel now! Man! <laughs> It's kind of funny. It kind of, the thing kind of looks like Reynald's helmet in a weird way. It's like Reynald has returned from the grave to deliver holy vengeance upon us. Ah. Uh. Well, that was probably a bad idea. It did just load a shot. All right, fine. Get back there. There we go. Now it's dazed and blind. All we gotta do is stun it. Again, peeling away the layers of its armor one by one. Ah, oh, damn it. Well, get this jackass out of here then. Turn him into a gravestone for this thing to fire at us over. Yeah, fine. A promising development. Anxiety for men's insidious fears. Yeah, th that was an appropriate number of O's on that boom, I will say. That wasn't so bad, though. That could have been worse. It could have hit Dr. Beak. And check it out. JT Jag gets a free heal after all that nonsense. So you're not gonna wheel yourself forward, then. You're just gonna stay in the back like a huge coward. What a coward this thing is. You know what? Don't need to do it anymore. Fine then. Pierce the armor. Tom Hanks. Shoot through the slit in that tank and blow it up. I, I still want to believe that he was the one that did that in that film. And not the planes. <laughs> he had divine vengeance in his hand and it was called the 1911. Dr. Beak, you're going to get the chance to finish this thing off, actually, because it only has two HP left. Congrats. What a meltdown. We are the flame, burning brightly for all the world to see. I have a feeling that that can go very, very, very wrong if you leave the cannon as the only enemy in the fight. I... I played Darkest Dungeon 1, and I do I do recall a fight in which you do not want to leave the small party alive, specifically of the two opponents, but it seems this is the inverse. Uh, take out the take out the man's take out the man's cod piece first. He's compensating for something, alright, and it's his own lack of damage to deal. He's got nothing. Our team is quite stressed out here, but it's okay. We're on our way to a hero shrine. Oh, JT Jag and Jacob's pillow. Closer friends all the time. Who shall we meet today on the road at the Shrine of Reflection? Well, I don't know. Let's see. We haven't unlocked 
a single skill for the grave robber yet, I don't believe. We could spread them evenly or between streams. I could just look it up and beeline to the skills that I would like, but we haven't we haven't seen any backstory from the grave robber yet, so all right. Now, I do believe I remember the grave robber story. Her uh, her swap from uh, nobility to grave robbing is not exactly noble in itself of an action. But that's fine. You have to wait until there's a grave in order to rob it. Especially when you have a rich husband. If I recall how the story went, though... Chapter 2. Nightcap. He wasn't such a good person anyway. Night after night of disrespect and abuse, enough was enough. I very much agree. It's time for some pushback. Let's see. Oh, I love these minigames so much. I love how you can see her outfit strung up, waiting for her almost. Just these little bits of set dressing. Get changed. You've got a dagger to throw in this guy's heart and his neck and his head after the kneecaps first though. Come here, jackass. Bad news, placation doesn't seem to work. It's all we can really do, though. Such is the life of nobility, am I right? Oh. Look at what this guy is. Ha have you noticed what he is? He's that enemy from the first game that you hate. The one with the wine goblet. The skeleton with the wine goblet and the dagger that inflicts horror on your entire team. This game is fantastic. It's fantastic. Of course they made him a dickbag in life. Of course they did. Oh boy, hey! You can't get threatening! You son of a bitch! Oh yes. Oh Audrey, it's time to be, it's time to learn some skills. This is good. We have to think now. Let's see. We're stealthed. What do you think? You think we got time to poison it? Hang on. We'll see. I don't know how to win this one. Boy, oh boy! We've been caught. Ah, he was guarding it. I see. You motherfucker. Oh, that animation of her taking a breath was really good. That was really good. Ah, damn. Take another one, I guess. I, I'm not so sure. He just reapplies the guard. I guess we gotta wait for an opportunity. Aha! We had to wait for him to take a drink. He's not looking. Got it. The Queen of Blight, her first act. Just wait it out. Just wait it out. All you have to do, like I said, 
There has to be a grave before you can rob it. Ah! Almost there! Hey, jackass! I want a divorce! Yeah! She listened, smirking, as his empty apologies came in desperate, choking yags. And still, they were not enough to save him. You do have to wonder if she threw a knife or two at him before he died. Now that's demonstrating your independence. Good for you, Audrey. Well done. What do we get? Oh, that's a perfect one. That's a that's a perfect one to get after that quest. You can now come out of the shadows, put on your hat and be yourself. The noble's dead. Get rich on his grave. Ah, good for you. Hell yeah, Audrey. Hell yeah. Did you see what she just said? The gasp as he expired was the only time he ever pleasured me. Said that to the whole wagon. Hell yeah! Hell yeah, Jacob's pillow! Hell yeah! This game rules. I love this game. Oh, she's taking it rough, but it's okay. It's just the memories. Oh, and speaking of memories, I remember you. I remember you and the bleed that you do. Here. You are the guys that all do bleed, aren't you? How do I un how do I unselect this? Ah, oh, boy. Let us take a closer look at the thing. As repulsive as it is. Yes, indeed, and I love these. I love that these look like classic Scooby-Doo villain space helmets on them. Such wonderful enemies. I just love how they are clearly human that have had something parasitically grow out of them. Like, uh, uh, I don't know if he's alive under there or not, but he won't be for much longer. All right, so that guy can hit any of us. Yeah, great. Well, whatever, I'd rather he not do that. But his bleed is pretty weak compared to the other ones, so maybe I'll save that. We're gonna get this bosun first, because his, boy, his uh, ability to pull us out of rank is potentially uh, rude. It's potentially rude. Nice abs, though. You know what, I'm gonna guess that that's I'm gonna guess that he had those in life before he was, I, I'm gonna guess before he became a shambling corpse. He already had abs, guy already worked out. Oh, but yes, this fellow here has the potential to ruin my strategy. And we don't need to give that skill to Audrey just yet, but someday, because you know, right now she doesn't have any skills that give her stealth. So, we need to do at least her next hero shrine before she'll get the skill that gives stealth to her. Unless the corpse eaten one does it. If this hits, we could finish him with Blight, right? No, we can't. Crap. Ah, oh, damn. It's just that this specific fella, the bosun, doesn't have very high blight resist compared to the rest of his fisher fellows. Guy didn't get inoculated from the blight. Whatever, let's try it. Because Dr. Beak can always try again. There you go. That's a little better. Oral Grief. That is a hell of a name for an attack. Thanks for not inflicting barnacles upon the grieving woman there. You know, grieving over the death of her husband, clearly. That's why she was upset, uh, upset before we walked into that fight. Fond, fond memories of the man uh, dying miserably. Speaking of dying miserably, oh, I shot the water out of him. He sprung a leak. Nice heal. 
You know what? I'll leave him set up for a combo then. Hey, Cap, how you doing? Whoa, thanks, Dismas. Yeah, the old one-two punch, baby. Zap him, then whack him. Well, we don't really need to use that then on JT Jag. We can just kind of let JT Jag bleed. No offense, JT Jag. You know what? 30% blight. The slow suffering begins. Let's see. Ah, uh, Dr. Beat can't get any combos off of this, but ah oh well. She got a combo and a critical for maximum damage. I'm telling you, she's unstoppable. Excuse me? Well, yeah, let's... Insufferable fog indeed! You're, hey, the, the, fo the literal fog of war is creeping in. Stop that. Quit ringing that bell. You know, I've just considered I can't see this man's face. He's so utterly mysterious, the captain. What are we thinking? Self-heal or heal our friends? I mean, he's gonna die on the next turn, but we've got another combat to get into coming up pretty soon, so I'm gonna get our friends this ready for that. This one has been tended to. Yoink! Oh! I should have poisoned his wine instead! This one she would have been better at that. Tended to. Oh boy, the fog really is not helping us here. We're the only ones helping each other out. I wonder if the fog actually affects our accuracy. Continues. Maybe if we continue to let it roll in, it, uh, we'll find out. And be off once more. <laughs> Don't worry, everyone. I got this, exclaims JT Jag. Yeah, you ain't wrong, buddy. Everyone else misses? JT Jag's mace has no choice but to hit, given that it's twice the size of a man. When you're Goliath, everyone's David. Am I gonna die at the mountainous path to the final boss like the last run? Possibly. I'd say it's probable. But thank you for having the confidence that I'm going to make it there again. I appreciate it. That was a hell of a compliment, my friend. Thank you. I'm still impressed we managed to do that. I, I, that still completely surprises me. Here, we can take these bandages out of our inventory and then stack them to consolidate. Check it out. Now both of these, both of these ladies have two again. Yes, so... Ah, there we go. Dead of Night actually does give you stealth. Hmm. And here I can... I can have Jacob's Pillow call all the attention if I want a combo that way. Interesting. If we go up against, say... Hmm. Enemies that hang out at the back. That would be very, very helpful against. So... Cultist altars, for example. Cherubs. Enemies that stay in the very back and are immune or resistant to blight. And every time you try and pull them forward, they have a move that sends them backwards again. That would be really good for saying like, nope, get all those out of here. And also, hey, guess what? I'm over here, asshole. That'd be fun. That'd be a fun way to, that'd be a fun thing to try someday. Such confidence. Well, you know what they say. Confidence surges as the enemy crumbles. And boy, they're crumbling. They sure are crumbling on the first leg of the journey here. She weeps for the fallen and knows she will join them soon enough. Man, that's pragmatic of you. That's very pragmatic of the nurse. I know I have mentioned this as often as I can, but I do so love that the game incorporates its motifs visually in at least two forms in all of these places. 
look, there's the stress icon on that grave. And then the torch is up here as literal torches this time. A lot of the time, a lot of the time they're not literal torches, but she's an assistance encounter. So I suppose the, the torch of hope for a nurse makes total sense. I, hang on, your tent kind of looks like the flagellant's hood in a weird way. That, I don't, wait, I don't like that. Are, if I go in there, you're not gonna, you're not gonna mace me, are you? That's fine. <laughs> hey, Kiwi Satan, I got good news. We have the opportunity here to cure your dysentery, my friend. We'll check what she's got in stock at the store as well, but uh, I don't think I have any in items that get rid of uh, diseases. Yeah. So dysentery is actually pretty rough. Minus 20% max HP at the start of every region for the rest of the game. And Dismas has pretty low HP, the Highwayman. So that's that's pretty brutal on him. I will actually, excuse me, I will spend the money to get rid of that. We can suffer no sickness on this pilgrimage. God, it's like he knows I'm playing Oregon Trail. He knows it's dysentery. I would love to know how you cure dysentery. That's got to be like curing IBS. His colon has to feel so much better after that cleanse. Ugh. All right. What do you think? Not too much longer to go in this leg of the journey, so we can start preparing for the next one now. Um, after this, it's mostly cultists, and we've got a lot of bandages already. Buy a couple anti-venoms while I'm here, because I usually end up going to a couple of different locations each time between, you know, um... What is it, uh... Resistances to each run. I end up going, hey, here's an area where everything gives bleed. Here, here's an area where everything gives blight. Here's an area where hope springs eternal. Once again, in spite of the pragmatism. Good for her. Not betraying that Hippocratic Oath in times and smells like this. I'd be one salty individual. The docks are choked once again with the repellent stench of rotting fish. Oh, God, I, as I mentioned, oh, what a descriptor. That's way more descriptive than you needed to be, my friend. Now, I've kind of run into an issue here with my strategy of, let's see. I've run into an issue here with my strategy of using JT Jag to heal stress and buff with positive tokens and all that. Uh, we haven't... He's had his own stress healed by other members of the party that are friends with him. So that's, uh... He needs to have high stress in order to start doing that, other than bolster. I kinda hate these fishmongers. These fishmongers are kinda screwed. Look at them. They are, uh, hold on. Let's just get a closer look here at this bloodborne looking thing. Let us take a closer look at the thing, as repulsive as it is. I've actually just considered, earlier, I said that this enemy lacked an eyeball to throw a knife into, and so it makes sense that Audrey missed. But actually, that appears to be the same eyeball. Oh, that's that eyeball, all right. It's just that it's migrated a little bit. It migrated. You know, like fish do, like salmon. How about you migrate to the fucking afterlife? Go get munched on by a bear. Uh... I haven't even taken a look at the one in the back there. Uh, uh, can I just, let me just get a real close look at this BB looking thing over here. What? That's, look at this chupacabra looking thing. Oh! 
Wow! It could just do anything to anyone? Oh, God. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. I'll keep in mind that it can just decide to... They can just decide it's time for anybody to be screwed over and get diseased and... Uh, you know what? It seems like it has the range for that. Ho-ho! Again, more of JT Jag's stress just vanishes off the grid. Oh, Dr. Beak strikes again. Huh. Same resistance to bleed as blight on the wharf rats. It's a heck of a name they got. Well. Well, they're about to beat my ass, so I guess I'll... I'll set up repost. Go for Kiwi Satan. He'll slap you back. He's kind that way. Ugh. That looked pretty stable. Thank you for doing the needful. A promising development. Thank God. Uh oh. Well, maybe I shouldn't have thought. Uh, I shouldn't have thanked my lucky stars too soon. Oh boy! They grow up fast. Whoa! He became a bosun. He he went from boy to bosun. That's a that's a hell of a mutation. Okay, well that's fine, I suppose. That's fine, I suppose. Get back up there, then. Uh... No, actually... I've got someone else who I'd like you to meet, Bosun. Now that you've come of age to join the Navy. His name's Dismas. In this case, Kiwi Satan. Oh, we're all, we're all getting be barnacled here, but I'm not too worried about that right now, actually. I've got bigger concerns. Meh. So JT Jag, you uh you are about to start bleeding again. You are be barnacled at the moment, but we have the bandages for it. We can heal him. We have the technology. Who has the worst bleed? Oh, his actually ain't that bad. I'll let him bleed a little. Speaking of, a certain someone could use a little bit of extra pepper on him. Just a little bit. Well, you can't get lucky all the time, though, Dr. B. You have to leave some for the rest of the team, I suppose. Fair enough. Well, well this, that, that's kind of a dick move by Dismas here. He doesn't actually need to move. He doesn't need to repeat the action, the damage that he inflicted there. Kiwi Satan, you can stay in place. No kill like overkill. No kill like bosun kill. Once again, we handle things one at a time around here. He's just gonna stay stealthed back there, huh? Big ol' coward. Big ol' coward, that's what he is. And neither of them are bleeding all that bad, but like I said, we do have to start planning for the next region here. Because we're almost at the end of this one, which means cultists. What a welcome one, nonetheless. None of my generosity is calculated, actually. It's all completely on the fly. It's better that way. Appliance of harm. Now my appliance of harm, always purposeful. Practice harm reduction on your friends. And effective. Now on the enemies, you can do whatever the hell you like. As it turns out, they kind of deserve it. Well, my 
entire team gets to perform on this one. The whole team just gets to show this wharf rat what's what. My friend, you've been beating on us for this entire, entire battle so far. Have some of your own. The nervous systems of some jellyfish. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke about how they have no intelligence whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, confidence surges as the enemy crumbles and all that. It's okay. We got the hoarder coming up, and I have been saving my baubles because I've had nothing to spend them on. My friend, I, I sure hope, I sure hope you're keeping that torch as lit as it looks. Not nearly enough baubles for what he's selling, which is which is some quite rare stuff. Minus minus a third on your flame drain. Ah, but this is just for this is just for relics. There's the annotated textbook. It got added to the item drop roulette as the rest of the character trinkets did. Well, I suppose we're saving then in that case. I'll see you next time, my friend. Thank you for providing us some respite, honestly. Although I will say it didn't smell any, or very much better being near him versus, well, the open ocean. Just as briny in a strange way. I don't want to think about his brininess. That's probably the king of the fish people, is his brininess. Oh, we may be about to meet him. Well, unless it's only cultists today, I'd be okay with that. Knock, knock. Oh, great. It's one of these guys. Yeah, this fella... This fella could be a problem, because... Well... Currently, Jacob's Pillow's not doing great on stress. So if it starts to stress us out and inflicts, uh... If it, if it inflicts horror upon us and all of that... I think we'll try to focus it down first. Before it can play its... Giger pipes. It's Giger-like bagpipes. Man, I gotta play Scorn. I'm really, I'm, I'm really interested in Scorn. I heard that, I, I have heard that as a video game, now that it's out, Scorn wasn't the greatest. Uh, guess what? Don't care. I live for that aesthetic. That horrible, gribbly aesthetic. Oh, Scorn looks so great and terrible. Yeah, fine. You're not the only one with a bulwark of denial. The bulwark of denial is part of why I'm here. Well done, team. Making fast friends. Very fast friends. Ooh, okay, Dr. Beak. You got this, come on. Plague grenade, my friend. Ought to hold one in each hand. Dual wield them. Pumpkin bombs like the Green Goblin. And a hoverboard, also. Oh, Dr. Beak, you're the coolest! Oh, Dr. Beak, you're so cool! Nocturne Commune. Yeah, why don't you go paint a portrait, Van Hoch? Targeted the wrong person. Or the right person. I figured that most of them were going to go first on the next round. Yeah, you there. Hey, you back there. You're next. Ha! Take that! It's actually still blighted more than it's healing. So it's still going away on this turn. All according to Keikaku. Uh, translator's note. Keikaku means these guys are fucked. 
I feel good today. I feel pretty good today. Let's see. I don't necessarily want to use point blank shot while they have the chance to dodge it, funnily enough. Yeah, that's the, that seems like a better idea. Interesting. It's a bad idea to leave the altar to last uh, because they can do that whole, what's it called? Oh, Azoic End. Yeah, we're not going to let it do that Azoic End that it only seems to do when it's alone. I guess I'll just take this point blank shot and hope it hits. I mean, it's Dismas, I mean Kiwi Satan. There's always next time. There will be a next time, don't worry. You know what would be handy to do? Boy, double crit. Good thing I brought bandages. I forgot these things do bleed. I completely forgot. Here, fellas. The both of you. Both of you in the front are hard targets for the bleed. And you will become softer. Like a, like a drained grape over time. I'll try not to let that happen. Oh, boy. One, one more... One more stress and JT Jag can use his heal on... Well, I mean, he can use it anyway, but I'm waiting until it'll be effective on Jacob's Pillow. All right, fine. In that case... Take me a draw for stress, why not? I already am. There we go, that's what I was looking for, as a matter of fact. Bone weaving. I can do that too. Check it out. Watch my bone weaving skill. Oh my god! He's bleeding for four for five turns. Yeah, fuck that. This wound at least has been tended to. We're not even letting that bleed start. I could use ounce of prevention, but I didn't upgrade it, so it's only plus 15%. At this point, not super worth it. Hey, you, cut that out. As they say on the full house. Well, they used to say it. They didn't, eh. Yeah. Fell off popularity over the years. All right, fine. Not a whole lot of options here other than just hit the motherfuckers. But that seems to be an effective plan, as it turns out. Don't worry, I got a plan for you, Kiwi Satan, and her name is Dr. Beak. Because once this thing's out of the once once this thing's out of the way, Dr. Beak won't have too much to do. Although could be Audrey, could be Jacob's pillow. A little help impeccably timed. Why not? They're about to they're about to try and murder us, so. Let's see. It's not going to take any blight from this on this turn. It's going to it's neutralized. It protected itself the little bastard. You are you are such a jackass. You you are a jackass, you little critter. How do I uh okay, what do I Yeah, this will get rid of it. Crap, it's going to survive that. It's, I think it's going to survive that with 2 HP. Hey, fellas up there in the front. I really wish you would stop doing that. Not, you know, not on my team, on their team. Yup. Yeah, it did, in fact. Well, now I'm not quite sure what to do. I was going to spend this turn focusing on these gentlemen, but now I kind of need to at least have Jacob's pillow uh throw a pillow at it. Honestly, a pillow would kill that thing at the HP that it currently sits upon. They're just gonna keep doing it. They'll just keep smacking them. 
over and over. They're trying to hack them like trees. Well, fine then. Yeah, it will. It will survive with one HP. I love video games. What a waste of time that blight was. I could have been spending it on these chuckleheads instead. Oh well. Next turn, you're getting healed by Dr. Beak, my friend. You need it. Now let us finish off the weaklings that have been completely kicking my ass for the entirety of this run. Yeah, so these... This is, uh... That's unfortunate. Turns out I... Should have been at least trying to stun these two guys so that they weren't just absolutely beating the hell out of JT Jag and Satan there. That's bad. I've got great news, Kiwi Satan. You're going to have to survive your first death blow due to poor planning on my part. It's going to be an exciting moment. Slow dissection. An unavoidable end. Please stop foreshadowing the deaths of my characters. Foreshadow their deaths instead. No setback. Nothing more. Oh. Oh, I've, got, I've got good news. You get to survive too. Oh. Oh, I love cultists. How I love the cultists. Five entire death blow resist, huh? Would you please guard that man who's on death's door? It's a good thing we built up all those stress healing items for the next time we're at an inn. We're gonna need them. It turns out. You ain't going yet, Kiwi Satan. Right back from the brink. We need you up here above ground. Oh yeah! Tried and tested. A bond to be counted on. Dr. Beak holds respect for Kiwi Satan as a fellow colleague. A scholar of the art of war. He's still got a 5% chance to survive whatever the hell this is going to do to him. And when he survives it, it's going to piss me off. But it's fine. We'll focus on the other one now. Yeah! Oh, Kiwi Satan's the one doing the complimenting. You've got gravel in your guts. Ah, maybe he's becoming a doctor. He's able to diagnose people just from looking at them. This is why you don't eat rocks, Dr. Beak. Think we can kill it on this turn? Don't matter. Because it's gonna attack Kiwi Satan. Nice! What will happen if I... Do they have a third row attack? What do they do in the third row? Nothing. They just heal and get closer. Well, I don't... I don't want it to do that either. I'd really... I'd really rather not heal or get closer. So I think I'll just hit it in the fucking face. Hitting it in the fucking face seems like a good idea. We're not gonna kill it on this turn anyway. Hooray! It was more like the crotch region. Or, or it used to have one of those, but I don't think it does anymore. Very jellyfish themed, this area. Alright, well, we'll just let it do its thing. If it's gonna heal, then it can heal. I can heal too. Whoa! Whoa! Kiwi Satan instant jealousy! My god, man! Oh. Oh, it did survive that! Haste and carelessness. All marks of the unprepared. It had a 5% chance to survive! What are you, Dr. Beak? Oh, man. Right. These two fellows are really making this cultist encounter 
a proper pain in the fanny. Jacob's pillow has taken no damage this entire time, by the way. They haven't even bothered to try and target Jacob's pillow. You know, the one that's slowly bleeding them all to death while everyone else takes damage after damage after damage. Uh, I don't know. Who wants it? Who wants it more? Honestly, Kiwi Satan could use it more. Crap! Oh, that's the trouble with positive relationships. I could use point blank shot to try and finish this thing off for good, but it would behoove me to also put this one on death's door. So let's try that. Hopefully they both bleed to death. Yes, indeed. Cut down these nightmares and blaze the trail to your redemption. Consider them cut. We had to throw knife after knife, stab blade after blade into them, mace after mace. Like, we were almost bleed characters there for a little bit to get those last two fellas down. God damn. Whew. It's a good thing we got all those in items to cure our stress once we get there. We're gonna need them at this rate. Well done, everybody. The loathing abates. Damn right it does! Precision! Poise! A, uh, a successful operation. Now, we are on our way to the inn, which means nobody is gonna melt down in the carriage, I dearly hope. Six leagues to go. Hold it together, everybody. We're almost there. That was fun. And a nightmare. That was both fun and a nightmare. Movement resist, huh? But healing received. We will give that to Jacob's pillow. Make Jacob's pillow's absinthe a little bit better. Some self-care, you know? I mean, also the corpse eating, but we're not gonna we're not gonna have you eat corpses just yet. Not tell it not tell it benefits you to do that. Oh boy. Oh, we've got a dark impulse too. Huh. Stress if you're bleeding. But you get bleed resist. 50% damage. Minus 33% max HP. Uh, yeah, I guess we could make Kiwi Satan into a glass cannon. It's Dismas, so we, we could do that. We got two free slots on the fellow. If you're bleeding, you'll take stress damage, but that's okay. You're, you're quite stressed out anyway. Can't get much worse now, can it? We can almost carry everything else to the inn, thankfully. Actually, we can. We actually can carry everything else to the end. Way to go, everybody. And look at that. Even even though they got some minor, minor hits. Relationships are still golden. Literally. They're literally still golden. JT Jag and Jacob's Pillow are for some reason getting a little jealous of each other, but we can do something about that once we get there. Dr. Beak and Jacob's Pillow, though. We can, we can hook them up if we want. They're one pip away. And we got in items pouring out of the carriage. More in items than I've ever wanted to see in my life, actually. Uh-oh. They're causing each other stress on the last leg of the journey. Quit it. Quit it, you fools. You're almost there. There's a warm bed waiting for you. There we are. Take a break, everybody. We would come here in summers of years gone to write, think, and rest. And 
We're past days gone. We're up to years gone now. I bet the water line was a lot lower then. I imagine that uh, the shoreline is a place that has a lot of taverns. You know, piers that once extended onto waters that were not above the height of a dozen men. Now they are over the height of a hundred, which is why everyone's turned into jellyfish. Only one stress heal, huh? Holy cow. Deal more damage to pillagers, huh? We should go somewhere there are bandits next. That ought to be, I mean, that ought to be fun, but that means that this is gonna be one bloody, one bloody route. All right, everybody. Kiwi Satan, we managed to get rid of your dysentery. Congratulations. JT Jag? Slayer of Pillagers! Well, convenient! Kiwi Satan? Raconteur? Which is true! That's true of Kiwi Satan! Knows how to weave an absorbing tail. I, I, you, can we you can, in fact, weave one hell of an absorbing tail. That D and D blood running through you. Jacob's pillow. Extra crit damage. That's excellent for the throne daggers. And Doctor Beak. Doctor Beak's got stories out the. Loeka. I shouldn't have said that. Sorry, Doctor Beak. So we have no money whatsoever, and because we focused on assistance encounters, we don't have any real mastery points to spend either. Which is unfortunate. But we did complete our goal here. Which means, look at that. We, we have a reason to move our grave robber to the back now. That was the whole reason we were doing that. Was to get the foreclosure notice trinket to put on her. And also to build up all of these supplies. There you go, everybody. Only positive quirks this time. Let's see. You ain't got a free trinket slot, Jacob's Pillow. Ooh, interesting. This has a downside, though, of reducing healing from every source, I assume, including your own. Hmm. In that case, we could make a swap here. That's interesting. Because wh what we could do here is move Dr. Beak to the third position and change up pretty much all of Dr. Beak's skills to be based around murdering the absolute hell out of our opponents. Dr. Beak is really good at murder, if you make her good at it. And we could make Audrey stealth and corpse clearing and support. Fascinating. Well, enemies hardly ever target her anyway, don't they? Huh. And hey, look, we do have this other trinket that'll offset the downsides of this trinket, so... Okay, sure. Let's give this clotting thing to somebody else. There you go. It looks lovely on you, Dr. Beak. It looks truly lovely on you. Your pallor shines. The pale beak you wear. Combat items. Got quite a few of them going forward. Get rid of those smelling salts. Watch me regret that later. But okay, if we are swapping Audrey or Jacob's pillow to the last position, then we can get rid of pick to the face. Yes, perfect. And on Dr. Beak, anything? Oh, Dr. Beak can still use all of the skills we have equipped on her from the third 
place. Interesting. Um, I guess we'll leave Dr. Beak the same then. Fair enough. Well, we'll head to the, you know, we'll, hmm. We'll focus on, we'll focus on fixing up our heroes right now. Let's check out their relationships. Now, Jacob's Pillow and Dr. Beak are only one away. Only one away uh, to come and becoming closer friends than ever before. Hell, Dr. Beak is just going to be friends with everyone. That's, that's kind of incredible, Dr. Beak. Good for you. Because once we use the songbook of touching dirges, everyone will take stress damage. But then they'll lose stress because of the tested relationship that'll give them a virtue. And if not... We have whittling tools. Everyone will take one stress damage. But that's okay. Enjoy a song, my friends. Tried and tested. A bond to be counted on. Man, Dr. Beak. Dr. Beak is only amorous towards the characters of the game themselves. It's like she knows it's you guys, and she is being respectful towards you and not romancing you on playthroughs in which you appear. Now, I know that secretly you all wish that would happen, so I, I apologize, but good for you, Dr. Beak, to respect their autonomy as members of my chat. The thing is, they all want you really bad, Dr. Beak. But there we go. Dr. Beak has at least... I mean, Dr. Beak's got perfect relationships now. Good for you, Dr. Beak. Well done. Everyone pretty much is friends in some form. We'll work on these two, I suppose. But oh, we're going to be getting so many combo attacks with... With Dr. Beak. Dr. Beak is going to be healing people's stress now. I assume. I don't know what all that stuff does on Plague Doctor, but we'll find out. Let's see. Hmm. If I use it again, we can get Kiwi Satan and Jacob's pillow up. That may be worth the stress. That may be worth the stress. But I think, I think I would rather not risk it, actually. Because in this game, when you reach 10 stress, as we saw at the tail end of the last stream, your characters start melting down, which removes all of their golden relationships and sets them at least back to neutral, but you can quickly make them golden again. It doesn't start them on the blue path. So we'll save that. We'll we'll save this one. Because I don't trust it just yet, and who the hell knows? Who the hell knows what could happen between now and the next inn? Calming incense? You two. You two seem like you could use it the most. Here, Jacob's Pillow and, and Kiwi Satan, take some of my incense. Please. You calling me tense? I might be. I might be a little. Let's see. Everyone could use this, huh? I think we'll leave JT Jag's stress where it is, since he can heal his own. Used to whittling. You know, that would probably entertain you in prison, Kiwi Satan, the high women. There we are. Now you two, Jacob's Pillow and Jag, can heal each other. Get some stress bolstering going. And...
boy, your HP ain't so great now, is it? Here. Give it to these two fellows, because they are going to need the traveling heal as we are traveling to our first combat encounters on the next leg of the journey. Who wants to feast on some slime mold? First one to say me in the chat gets some slime mold. If you're not if you're not hey, if you're not even a character, I'll feed you the slime mold. I'll send it to you. Oh, JT Jag's actually in the game and wants it. Alright. And you resisted the disease that it contained, whatever it was. Good for you, JT Jag. You're resilient. Alright, we'll give the other one to. We'll give the other one to Jacob's pillow. Jacob's pillow will will benefit from it slightly more. Wow, you actually got real lucky there, JT Jag. It proked the disease, but you resisted it. Very good. Good stuff. Here. Yeah, we can give the others the bread. There we are. Now everyone's got a little bit more HP for that next journey. Perfect. And... We have the ability to give someone Sanic Speed. We, we can give someone so utterly much speed with the Stimulating Poultice. That, that is... Absurd how much speed it gives. Uh, uh, Jacob's Pillow, you are going to be last in rank, but first in movement. Good for you. I gotta give that to him. All yours, my good lady. Speed keeps me alive. Speed? Jacob's Pillow am speed. Now who's got the least resistances here? It's also Jacob's Pillow. Jacob's Pillow actually could use quite a bit of this. But let's see where we're going next first. Everywhere in ruin. Everywhere in need. You are not joking. Okay. Fight one or less resistance encounters. We can't do that. We got up to about three loathing. So if we take this one, it'll get all the way up to like... Well, defeating the cultists will remove one, and then the next tavern will add back, I think, three. So it'll be at the maximum loathing. We will be a kingdom of loathing. May as well close the game and open up a web browser. So let's not do that. Now this, but, but we don't have to specifically go for the goal, you see. That's secondary to actually surviving. Now the tangle... May be a good idea. It may be. Oh, oh, that's kind of brutal, though. Minus 20% bleed resist. I'm glad I hovered over that. Never mind, then. F Fodor it is. It's time for more flesh trees after all. I thought we were done with those. We had cut some ribeye steaks and cut our losses, but no. The tainted crop continues to spread its tendrils of rot and pestilence. And it's about as he describes, too. He, he, hey, he ain't joking when he says all that. Okay, fair enough then. Well, we probably won't be going for the goal, but that's okay. We got some anti-venoms to equip and stuff, and well, I don't think the burn salves are gonna help us, but crow's feet, yeah, let's replace those. There we go. Listen. Practice. Improve. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of that to do here. We, uh, have... We, we, 
We did a lot of combat, but it was mostly road combat. Combat that gave mastery points was rare on that last one. What does this skill do if you upgrade it? Oh, that's just a... Just a self buff. Come out of the shadows. Hmm. Tough. This is real tough. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I want to focus on non elemental damage or just blight the whole fucking world again, like we did last time. Because it worked. Up until we had to fight cultists, and they started resisting every death blow, like that last encounter. Some preparedness. Some preparedness would probably help us. But what we should do is give someone a follow-up skill on combo, because in the fourth position... Our grave robber will set up combos all the damn time, with her, with her thrown daggers, so... Hmm. Wow, that's a hell of a bleed if they're set up for a combo. All right, all right, hey, hey, Kiwi Satan. You're getting better at opening veins than ever. You'll find an open vein. And if not, you'll make one. You're learning from Dr. Beak. All right. All right, we will do a little blighten then. Although, we're gonna be doing a lot of these, aren't we? We're gonna be doing a lot of flashing daggers. But maybe I should try upgrading flashing daggers. We, maybe we should just play into the trinket that we got and see how well it works when you spec into it. Because what it does is stealth her when she uses fla flashing daggers, which hits two enemies, so that's a 66% chance to gain stealth no matter what. So, okay, let's try it. That's two chances to gain a third stealth every damn time I use it. And now it does a little bit more hurt. It'll be great for finishing stuff off. Each improvement a new variable in the equation of your fate. We're going to have to call this one The Great Respect. I have decided. And we must change our stagecoach livery to be completely coated in all of the blood that splattered on it after that last cultist fight. Here, I'll change it again in case you didn't catch it. There's our default carriage, and this is what it looks like now. Default, and post-fighting those cultists. We may need to run it through a car wash. I doubt there are going to be many in the fodder. But we don't actually have anything to put on our stagecoach, sadly. Precious relics remind us of a time before the end. And they ain't going cheap these days, are they? Boy, nothing doing, huh? Okay. I guess I'll just hold on to what I have, which is not to say a whole lot. Rest easy, heroes. Uh, I am in a bit of a headache, so I will be right back. We are gonna go to that BRB that we... Oh, oh, look at that BRB. Look at it. I set it up right again and everything. The flannel's scrolling and changing color. The Patreon advertisements saying all of your wonderful names again, and you can you can once again donate on Streamlabs now that we're back on Twitch. Ah, oh. it's funny. I valued moving to YouTube to have everything in one place, right? But it was such a harder platform to do this type of creative freedom that. I ended up liking it less. 
The benefit I originally saw in it turned out to be a downside because the restrictions that YouTube held on its API kept me from doing stuff like, I don't know, the quacks that you shall soon hear when we start receiving subscribers again. It'll be fun. It'll be really fun to thank you again for subscribing. I always liked doing that. And that's, that's a real grandiose statement, but in all honesty, moving to YouTube, right, was a personal decision on my part, where it was purely based on my dislike of Amazon as a company. And I have since realized how short-sighted of a decision that was. I figured what it would do was make the stream easier for you folks to find it, but it did not do that. Uh, instead, what it did was put my live streams on a platform that's not for live streaming. And, you know, sure, it notified people, but people don't watch YouTube for live streams. People watch YouTube for YouTube videos and archives of live streams. They go to Twitch for live streams. And fair enough. That's the opinion I've come around to, is, hey, fair enough. I go where you go. We'll do it together. So, we will be back for our second leg of the journey in just a minute. If you have to stand up, head to the restroom, all that stuff, now is a fantastic time. I'll be right back. Because uh, that's what I'm going to go do, other than the standing backflips I mentioned. Always. Um, we'll play more Darkest Dungeon 2. I'll see you soon, my friends. And yeah, so JT Jag mentions specifically the issue is that I was not part of a partner network on YouTube, and partner networks are what start to advertise you on YouTube gaming. The public uh, live streaming kind of repository on YouTube, which is how people find live streams. Basically, what I was doing on YouTube was just linking the streams insularly to fans of my content already. It wasn't helpful at all for finding new people to watch stuff, so... <laughs> I would like new people to show up, because I would love to show them this wonderful world of gaming. Right back.
Hey, real quick. Um, just because I like to be honest about this stuff with the audience, um, you folks know, I've mentioned I've got BP2. Um, this week, I have been going through a period of hypomania. Um, I got a prescription about it <laughs> the other day, uh, but I'm going to go take that. So I'll be right back. Uh, I'll be with just a minute more. And then we'll get back to it. If you've noticed, I'm a little overexcited on this stream. That's why. I'll calm down now. <laughs> uh, but God, this has been such a blast so far. It always is playing this game with you folks. It really is. I'll be right back.
Hey, what's up? I return. I swear, there is just something comforting about this theme. I really could just listen to it for hours, bob my head to it during the maps. It's a contemplative theme for when you're putting together your character builds. It feels like the last bit of respite you're going to get before the pace of the tune kicks up again as soon as you get on the road. I don't know. This is so calming in an unsettling way. I don't know how to call it both calming and unsettling at the same time. The whole thing feels like a funeral march, but in a different way than the first game. Somber is a very good word to describe it. Melancholy was the one I used earlier, but somber's, somber is even more succinct, honestly. It really captures the somber atmosphere of the game. Where, even though, hell, this is one of my favorite things about the game, is take a look at our characters as we go back from the BRB. Take a look at them. They're miserable. They're so exhausted. They're halfway dead. And it's only the first leg of the journey. And I love that as an undercurrent. A sub-theme of this game, almost, is that we are trading our characters' hope, their own hope and faith in the world, for everyone else's. Like, they say it themselves uh, when you trade with the desperate few, you know? Like, we, we carry the torch for you. And in the process, our characters become stressed out. And, uh, I mean, it's such a realistic way to present heroism where it is at the expense of your own faith in the world because of what you see in protecting others. We are on our way to the mountain to do whatever it is it takes to free the world from the shackles of denial. You know, that inky black stuff that's out the window, even here in our place of respite. Oh, it's wonderful that our, our characters can't even catch a break here because if you look out the window, it's still reminds them of the journey. That's why they're all facing away from the window. I just love the thematic nature of this game compared to Darkest Dungeon the first, which had so much more of a negative take on the idea of vigilantism and heroism. The idea of becoming a legend in that game, making you unable to work with apprentices, for example. They, they won't go into earlier dungeons anymore and all that stuff. Like, it dismantles that idea. Whereas this game dismantles it in a very different way, where it kind of shows the realities of it in a way. In that one, you are assembling an... In, in the first game, you are assembling an XCOM group of heroes, and the effects happen to them, and you watch. In this one, since there are only four heroes, and we are technically them... Technically, we're the stagecoach, but that's like a Monopoly piece compared to these people. Point is, we're watching their relationships live and die. There is a, a further emphasis on actually caring about your characters this time around individually, which is just such a wonderful change. I just, I'm glad I took a moment to comment on that because it affects the tone of the game sideways, not, not in a way that is narratively worse than the first game. It's not worse in any way. Personally, I think it's better, but that's because I feel it has more nuance. I feel, narratively, it's just another way to present the same themes, and that's brilliant. It is a sides, it is a sideways narrative of the first game, in terms of tone. Can you tell I took a Xanax? I can form a goddamn single thought again. 
I do apologize for being so hyped up before the break. I'm just so excited to be streaming again and to have gotten this right on the first try. I just want to say, I was, as someone who has ADHD and all of that, terrified that this was going to take me an entire day to even remember how to do because I only ever had to do it once six months ago. Guess what? This afternoon, just before this stream, I set it back up. If I can do that, you can do anything you want to as well. Believe me. Now, it's on to the fodder. We are going for the dead space angle. We've ditched the Bloodborne, and we're headed straight to the meat pillars. And I couldn't be more excited. Did you switch Jacob's pillow to row four? Sadly, you can't do that in the inn. I could not find a way to do it in the inn. I think you can only do it on the road. The rancid crop grows unchecked and abhorrent. They don't look too rancid to me. Their, ran their rancidity... It looks about 3.6 runkin to me. No higher. All right. So let's put Jacob's pillow in the back there and Dr. Beak in our third position. Before the break, we set up the foreclosure notice. We, we set up the foreclosure notice on the grave robber and we gave everybody else a couple of skills that will have, a, 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 they'll have fun, let's say, if they combo. Kiwi Satan, our resident vein slicer, re resident vein seeker, is going to just bleed the hell out of everything here. And I mean, look at all these veins. Everything is is just disgusting and veiny here. Pick a target. Oh, let's see. Cultist encounter. We could, we could fight, we could fight some cultists early. We could go for the lair. Hmm, that's... We're, we're potentially prepared for that. This is an enormous leg of the race. There are just so many... Ah, there are so many combat encounters on the way there, though. Damn. I don't even know how you would fight one or less resistance encounter. Unless that's some kind of hint that there are no other resistance encounters on this map anywhere except for the ones that it's revealed. In which case, thanks, Darkest Dungeon 2. Well, we'll just go left then, I suppose. It's kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation sometimes. Damned if you do, damned if you don't, damned if you prolong it. You're especially damned if you draw it out. This unkempt study evokes a feeling of the familiar, does it not? Yeah, it does. Looks, uh, looks straight out of the previous run. I bet it's gonna have a, I bet it's gonna have a disgusting, horrible man with half his brain exposed. Ah, a bookshelf. Now, so I've played Darkest Dungeon before, and I know very, very full well not to touch these, thank you. Yeah, Dr. Beak doesn't want to do it. Okay, Dr. Beak can smell this bookshelf through her mask. Through the lavender that she stuffs in the mask to keep from catching, I don't know, Kiwi Satan's fart gas or whatever. I just can't, I, I don't know if I can abide touching the relics. It ain't worth it. I'm sorry, my friends. We already got trinkets. In fact, all of our trinket slots are full. But then again... Oh no. No, we shouldn't do this. The two that are the most stressed out in our party are the ones that want to do this. They are clearly driven by insanity. Dr. Beak, the voice of reason here. Worth hurting those relationships. It's worth it. Now, I don't quite know what the difference is between the green line and the blue line. Um, 
maybe the blue line means there's also combat on the road. I don't know. We're not gonna go fight those cultists, though, because, uh, fuck that with a capital F. No, the horses, the, oh, oh, okay. Well, the horses have decided to go left. That's apparently not the combat they wanted to do. I, I think you can change the horse steering sensitivity. Oh no! I, I think, I think Kiwi Satan just said bark underscore act out underscore banter. Don't do it! Don't act out! Kiwi Satan, now is not the time for insert underscore banter. Now is the time for insert underscore poison dart into clavicle. Thanks, foreclosure notice. Okay. So, yeah, he could just... He could still do this. He doesn't... He doesn't necessarily need to always be doing the whole... See, they're gonna make a hell of a combo, these two. I mean, they look like they go together. Flowing coats and all. They're gonna. Now they can combo off of one another. Yes, so Baristan... Oh boy. Oh, thank goodness! Whew! Baristan. The very first thing. See, I, I specifically made sure to remember this all the way through the break so that I would not... There is comfort in company. Forget your stress. Ah, oh, it's gonna go back up. It's going right back up. Oh, crap. What an encounter. Oh, it's custom tailored. Which real life human being is he? JT Jag, JT Jag, stay calm, my friend. JT Jag, please stay calm. We're good, we're good on the Widow. Yeah. Well, he's on cooldown. We'll find him some laudanum and chug it. He'll just chug it, just chug it on the road. It, like, it'll be spilling from his lips in the rattling wagon. But after this, he is going to need to drink it Amnesia the Dark Descent style. Alright, if I don't get rid of this thing on this turn, he's going to freak out. Stop it. I said stop it. Again. Straightforward. Whew. And effective. I'm I'm kind of glad for the debuff that has been given to, uh, or excuse me, the nerf, I guess, when it comes to game changes. <laughs> I'm really glad for the nerf that has been given to horror, because my god. Like, one stress guaranteed on every turn in the first Darkest Dungeon is a little rude. We are gonna have some real stressed out party members this time around. Hmm. Huh. You know, I actually don't wanna clear his combo. I don't wanna clear his combo. Okay, well, I'll do a slightly less effective blight on him then because I would rather someone else who has a combo attack Take advantage. Yeah, yeah, like Audrey. Audrey does a billion crit damage. Oh, look, he's right in the middle. I actually, you know what? Hey! Oh, Flashing Daggers has a pretty awesome animation. I don't think I've ever noticed it before. Straight out of Assassin's Creed, my good lady. All right, uh, well, this, we're back to Dr. Beak again. I was, I was hoping for Baristan. Okay. I suppose we'll take our time with the woodsman, because, you know, he really, I mean, he's giving us more opportunities to heal our party's stress here. Kindness. The game doesn't like when you draw out combat. We've discussed this before. The game has some, there we go, this is what I was waiting for. Six bleed on one hit, and then four to six damage. Bell that tree, Kiwi Satan. 
Well, he resisted the bleed, but still, a combo of nine. Is he dead? He's gonna wish he was. He's gonna wish he was. <sighs> you know, sometimes you just get unlucky with the numbers. That's actually something I like a lot about this game, is that it is very minimal with the dice roll aspect. But it's fair with the dice rolls when they appear. That has a random chance to happen with any party member. Just as much as he had a chance to withstand two death blows in a row like that. And here we go! Relationships paying off. Excellent. Please get rid of this man. Thank you. An unexpected find. Thanks for the pipe weed. I don't know if we're going to be able to make it last until the next inn. I may put this in the inventory of my characters, and then they're so stressed out that it's gone. It's roached. Side of the road, stubbed out. Hey guys, what happened to the pipe weed I gave you? And they're like, nothing, but we sure do feel better. All right, so that didn't, that didn't help JT Jag's stress, really. I've just kind of swapped it to Satan there. But I gotta say, that trinket we gave to Jacob's Pillow is, uh, to quote Winamp, it really whips the llama's ass. Two arms, though it brings no satisfaction. Oh god, yeah, it really doesn't. Yeah, it really, not against this. It's a good thing we blood splattered our carriage already. Because it was gonna be after this fight. Oh boy. This one's gonna... This one's gonna tear our team apart. But we honestly should. Because check out the loathing. We need to do some of these to keep the loathing down. Because we don't want the flame to drain because the flame draining is actually worse than that second thing that it says about enemy battle advantage chance. Because, well, if you recall the first Darkest Dungeon, if your torch goes out, more enemies spawn per encounter, multiple waves start happening, it's bad news bears. And you don't have any way to relight it in this game either. You can't just right click. I'm with Dr. Beak on this one. Dr. Beak's the veteran. Dr. Beak is even more of a veteran. I've got good news. We've got a dinner course first. Ugh. Ah, you know what? I think I'll point blank. I, th I think I'll point blank shoot it. Greetings! Yeah, because it can do that. So I, I, I figured I'd, uh, I'd get Dismas to the front before it pulled anyone else out of position. Okay. All according to plan. I was holding my breath there, you see. Uh, because, again, they help each other out. The, uh, uh denizens... Says, because they're all at least one creature, but many of them are more than one. This guy's at least two. Very Birkin. Let's see. That's right, Ted Anderson. You are here just in time for the animate meet. A C. Jacob staple. We're currently working on JT Jag's stress levels. He currently, uh,. He really needs help. They're bros for life. They support each other. 
Hell, the whole team does. That was such a rancid belch that Kiwi Satan had to teach that man some politeness, I guess. I, some manners? I don't know if he knows what manners are. He probably owned a manor. He's a lord. Oh, yes, he's absolutely deserving of death then. Uh, in that case... But I'm gonna think smart about this because they can just eat this livestock. Aha, right. Currently, Jacob's pillow is in stealth, so I think this repost will automatically miss him. I've always wanted a chance to test this. This is why I was stumbling over my words, is because I was trying to make sure that Jacob's pillow remained in stealth. Yeah! Okay, it turns out it ignores stealth, repost. So that was some pretty mad science. That was extremely mad science. I'll just take my repasts and accept that I screwed up this encounter. Once again, we're all friends here, so they'll heal each other without me needing to waste turns on Dr. Beat getting her to do it. And hey, you're actually a much better target for Point Blank Shot. Thanks for coming to the front. It was nice meeting you. To the next. Yes, so... I like that Audrey took stress damage even from witnessing that. Immediately. Immediately, Jacob's pillow's like, Oh, no! You can't rob Graves like that! You can't rob him while he's still alive! Well, here. Poison the guy like his drink. Oh, that would be great! If when they took a bite out of the livestock, if it were poisoned, it also poisoned them. What a great game mechanic that would be. Some kind of some kind of using a heal on zombies to kill them. RPG mechanic type stuff. God, this thing is so utterly resilient to everything I've got. It really got my goat. All right, calm down. Calm down there, Dismas. I was not going to kill that goat with you anyway. I have bigger plans for you. Cut him down! Oh god, he's corpulent. I don't want to know what that means. I don't want to know what it means to be corpulent. He's pustulent. I don't think he also needs to be corpulent. Pop him! Pop him a little bit. Oh god! Thank god he didn't get to do whatever it was he did because that looked like it was gonna be disgusting. Breakthrough. Thankfully, he is in just the right position now to beat his ass from afar. Well done, team! That's what I like to see in a death store. It's all just dead space where there once used to be beasts. Hey, we got a trinket. That's one I've never seen. It's a weapon? Interesting. Whoa. That's a quite good one. Just a 25% chance to blight on any attack? What? That's insane. And this is just a distant quality one. The legendary one has gotta be like 30 to 35% chance. For the downside? Wow, I mean, that's just Worth equipping on someone right now, but I don't even know who. Whispers. Who do I put that on? No, oh, not JT Jag. He caught something. Crap. I think the goat might have vomited on JT Jag. Oh my god, he caught sepsis. You can't... You can't cure that. I've watched like five episodes of House MD wherein people die of sepsis at the end because they couldn't think of another conclusion for that character. So many people in House MD pass away from sepsis. 
the JT Jag, we need to get you to a nurse. We need to we need to get you to Princeton Hospital. There's only one man who can save you. And he's currently busy playing his PSP in his office. <clears throat> Excuse me, my throat's getting all gummed up. All right, let's see. Okay, this is in items. Trinkets. I'm thinking... Audrey, honestly. I, I'm thinking... I'm thinking Audrey's. Because this 15% healing received from skills isn't much of an offset if she already has minus 75%. So, let's give her her move resist back. I mean, it's a, uh, you know, thinking about it, it's a cleaver. That makes me wonder if the thing that it is, is a hint as to who you should give it to. For example, if you give this to a melee character, you're wasting it. Because the melee characters like Hellion, for example, already do bleed and can already attack only the first or second or position or so. But it's a, it's a cleaver, so you th throw the damn thing, I assume. So it would be better on ranged characters. Cool. I don't know if that's intended or not, but that's neat. If that's like a, an uh, intuit thing, if you know what I mean. Uh, you know how video games kind of have those sorts of symbolism in the item where the thing that it is is meant to trigger in your head what you're supposed to use it for. Neo. Neo was one that did that a lot with all of its five million unnecessary items that it has. Speaking of which... We'll keep all these. Except for the burn salves, I think. Just clearing space for later. Because, hey, look! Porter's coming up. And I think I have a little bit of money now. After that fight. I collected some innards. And the hoarder seems like he would be interested in innards. Sepsis is a bigger killer than the nondescript anime cough. I know! Hopefully anime cough isn't a disease you can catch in this game. I'm sure it's real. Uh, kind of like that Korean fan death thing. Sleep in a room with a fan and you won't wake up. It'll suck out all of your soul. Or blow it out of your eardrums or whatever. What's up, pal? Uh, uh, what's up, pal? Let's see. Why did I almost say foul? What were the two... What were the two words that I was gonna say? Pa Man, that's the thing about speech impediments is like... Sometimes... I... See, maybe you've noticed... Uh, but now that I mentioned I have a speech impediment, maybe you've noticed that sometimes what I do is combine two words and then say both of the words. But... What was I, What the fuck was I gonna say there? Probably something about his backpack being all fat. Maybe that it's fallacious that he even exists in this world. I feel like of all people, the hoarder is the least likely. But given his new occupation, it kind of makes sense that he would make off with all of the treasure that we found in the first game. We are slowly building up our stack of baubles here. I was gonna say friend. That's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say friend and pal, and I said foul. Got it. Fuck speech impediments, dude. <laughs> Executive dysfunction can bite me. If you think about it, you can piece that stuff together. And in a way, it makes you more confident for the next time it happens. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry for getting all self-obsessed there for a second, but fuck, man. Like, if you have a speech impediment, and you end up stumbling over your words in a way that you can't explain, 
genuinely try to give it some thought because it'll teach you something about it. About yourself. <laughs> He's selling so many cleavers that I cannot afford. You got nothing for me, essentially, my friend. You, uh, maybe the combat items. I was looking to see if I could spend my baubles, but I still don't have enough. All right. Buy more pipe weed. We have relationships to repair. You know what'll come in handy here are the bandages, I think. Although, the medicinal herbs might help more because these enemies can do blight and and bleed. Blight and bleed is, is screwy, as Bugs Bunny would put it. Let's move on. You know, Ted, that's actually quite fair. Ted Anderson mentions that, you know, being self-obsessed is kind of how the world operates in a way. It Hell, is low indeed. This game to agrees. In destruction. The characters can become self-obsessed if their relationships dwindle to the point where they will no longer build with others until they're no longer self-obsessed with the person that they are blue on. Jealous. It's fascinating. The relationship system in this game is kind of... It's kind of like horoscopes in a way. It's kind of like the... Um, those online personality tests that give you a series of acronyms that mean something or whatever. They're so generalized that they almost work. Oh boy. This is a hell of a combo. These two back here? Okay, you two. It's time to get your blight on, please. Especially this lady. She needs to go first. I actually got rid of... Oh God. I got rid of all of my fire resist gear. I think, I don't think, I, my burn salves, I don't have them equipped well on done. anyone. Hot damn! Well done. Set them up, knock them down. Again, the power of friendship. It's real and strong. All right. Eat it, Houndmaster. There's a better Houndmaster than you in the last game. And look at that! After my repost. Oh boy. Oh, she got a turn. And my god, thank goodness that coat's made out of scale. That is a scale leather coat. He killed a dragon to get that coat. I'm sure they exist in this universe. Fine. Not necessarily according to plan. Steady yourself. Oh, but it all works out in the end, as they say. N usually not regarding a slow death by poisoning. That's usually not what they're talking about in those situations. And sadly, I was going to point blank shot this fella because I do so love to when it's going to do about 500 damage or so. But he gets a turn before that, so I should probably kill him. I should probably kill him. Holy hell! He's got he's got 12 HP. That ain't gonna happen no matter what. Oh boy. Oh boy, Jacob's pillow. Logged in to see Jacob saying probably. I think I know how this will go. You know, that is the thing, right? I do kind of play my hand when I say probably. I should honestly probably stop saying probably because if I probably keep saying probably, it's just gonna convince people that I'm unconfident when in fact I have completely unshakable confidence over nearly everything that I do in life. As you should too. It's just that it takes a while to build for me, that's all. Here, let me cut this dog's throat open. Perhaps. Or try. Like I'm playing The Last of Us all over again. Oh well. Here, Baristan, that'll make uh, this will make you feel good about yourself. Another uh, the mournful Clear whale. Impunity. Oh, 
Oh, and what do you know? Why, we get to finish this off with my favorite move after all. He didn't even have combo, and I did 33 damage. The past is gone. Let it die. Oh my god! There it is! I'm the one with the collector's head now! I took his head! I don't know how they had it, but his head is now a part of my stagecoach. Good, I say. It looks better on my stagecoach than it did on his neck. That was a large number. Yes, it was. Insult to injury and it healed everybody's stress. Big old crits are, are actually worth celebrating in this game because they heal the stress of your party or at the very least the person who dealt the crit. Oh, and we got more meat coming up. Oh, yes, we do. Let's see what the team thinks. Oh boy. Jacob's pillow, last position, knows sneaky tactics. Let's get him from behind. Interesting that Dr. Beak would rather save it. I think I'm with Dr. Beak on this one because after this we have a lair and if I really want to go for the boss fight if I think we're strong enough to go for the boss fight we're gonna want to save our strength and plus if we defeat the boss the loathing also abates and then we'll fight the cultists at the end to get it back down to zero Dr. Beak you are the voice of reason on this stream again minor hurt with the relationships but worth it it'll save our skins uh not that it saved the skin of anything else in this entire region look at it they want to go for it they're ready gt jag is dying of blood poisoning like booze man and yet he still believes we are the light upon the horizon Good for your unshakable confidence. Once again, you're like me. Oh, they're foul coming apart a little, though. And foul tidings. Wow. No the source is within. Okay. I I guess I'll drive it out then. I would love to. I, well, love is a strong word, isn't it? Good lord, this thing looks like that. That old movie, Monster House. Oh, the shape of the torch. I found it. Every time we come across a new building, I look for the shape of the hope torch and the stress symbol. The torch is here. This little V shape with a bridge. It's also kind of on the other side, but they use this a lot, this little uh, window shape, so I don't think this is it. I can't find the stress symbol. Does anybody see the stress symbol? It's that upside down half circle. It's not on the archway. It's on here somewhere. Every one of them has had both symbols so far, like a goddamn I spy picture. Oh well. I've got a feeling we're gonna get stressed out no matter what we do, honestly. Maybe the door arch is supposed to be it, yeah. I, that's the thing, it's uh, the door arch. You know, it, it has bricks out of place in ob oblong places. You're right, maybe they did intend for it to be this one, you're right. I don't know, but it's been so fun to look at these art assets up close now that they're actually 3D and all that. It's just so cool. This game is so gorgeous. I just felt like admiring that. I'll just admire that, mate. The landowner's manor. Do you hear the child's cries? Oh no. Oh, not that child. Oh no. There's only one child I know. There's only one child I know that lives in places like this. Although, although this is less 
there's less pork here. There's a lot less pork here. It's, it's just general meat here. God, I love that they have just an entire other gro goat growing out of them. Excuse me. Analysis is the natural prelude to action. Good lord. What? What is this, their favorite goat? They named this? This is their pet goat? They love this goat more than they love any other goat in the pen. It'll have to go first. It'll have to go first. Well done. Whoa! They're gonna make it go first! You go, team! Oh, yeah! And for getting a kill and a critical, they both got a reduction in stress. This game is doing its absolute best to keep JT Jag from stressing out. Thank you, game. Eat it! Beat up the livestock first! Ah, uh, but then again, those guys in the back won't try to eat the livestock if they're not hurt. A colleague's respect. Fellow dealer in death. Excellent. Uh, Dismas, you're gonna have to get back up to the front there. Dismas, Dismas Satan. Wow. <laughs> I had not until this point considered that <laughs> the, the, the comparison there between Dismas and Kiwi Satan. That's funny. Oh, and it gets Another funnier. Impediment cleared with impunity. Another impediment? I shall never stutter again. Uh oh. That's cool. We can fix this. Ah, crap, but he can only go one forward. It's good though. After this, everyone can move again. Get on up there. There we are. Now these are important. You may see up there in the in the top left corner, it is listing the number of fights before the boss. Two rounds, and then in the third round, uh, Mr. Dream comes out, and you have to restart the game all of a sudden for mysterious reasons. I don't know. I don't know why. Whenever Mike Tyson comes out, the game just shuts off magically all of a sudden. I'll, I mean, I'll be the first to admit that I never beat Mike Tyson. Did you? I never beat Turbo Tunnel. Did you? I never, I never poisoned a horrible blobby tentacle meat man. Have you? I comment again, by the way, on their red hooks. I love their red hooks. Weak as hell to blight you two. God damn, Audrey. You're in the wrong position, but you are in just the right spot. I mean, I mean, I could just finish him off. I don't even need to let him go. I could. My plan was to use Dr. Beak to finish him off with Blight, but I guess I don't necessarily need to do that now, do I? We got some real big DPS going on. I was, I was gonna insert another word there, but uh, instead I'll just do a stress heal. We don't honestly have any reason not to. The only person's stress it will heal is JT Jags, but this will finally, finally get JT Jag back down to four from five, which means less negative banter. Hooray. This guy's going to live, but that's okay. He dies soon, as the poem goes. Oh, and he'd love to make it happen a little faster, too. Oh, and he'd love to. Hasten it. Go for it. I would love to see it. Once again, stress heals. 
We're healing everybody's stress here. It's been a very stressful day for our party. Straightforward and effective. You're telling me. Only gets harder from here. I don't even know what we're facing at the end of this one. Sorry, did that say ambush? What do you mean ambush? You idiots knew this was coming. You fools. You are all out of order. Oh, that's bad. Whoa. Uh. Hang on a sec. <laughs> I had to think here. This thing has two attacks I've never even seen it do. Hey look, it's that bucket of slop from the newest Deep Rock Galactic season. Kiwi Satan, it is your job to take out the maid. You know this goop. You know the source of the goop. We were playing this the other day. Hey, Deep Rock Galactic, a uh, fantastic video game. You are a handful of four dwarves in co-op madness where you shoot bugs um, that resemble not spiders, but, uh, oh, I don't know. Kiwi Satan, describe the bugs from Deep Rock Galactic if you're heal, uh, here. Point is, it's a really fun co-op experience. Oh boy. There's just so many bugs to shoot. There's so many ores to mine. And as dwarves, we're rock and stone. Indeed, we must get rich. This is tough. This is really tough. I don't know what to do here. This sucks. They screwed me. I'm, I, I'm trying to think if I should just eat a turn to move everyone back. Yes, Audrey can move too. So, uh, Jacob's pillow, get back there. Okay, all right. Whew, I, f I figured it out. It took me a second. It took me a second, but I got it. Yeah, that whole time I was trying to plan out this entire turn. Check it out. Dismas uses Duelist's Advance, and now everyone is back in place. Get owned. Get on, Darkest Dungeon 2. If I lose this battle, that's okay. Your nefarious trap did not fool me. <laughs> I mean, now they all get to go, and that's gonna suck, but whatever. I say again, let them have it. Yes. Very good. This is no time to falter. Ugh. Stressing out my main man again? This is no time to falter. I heard you the first time. Oh, the flame's going out. Yourself. That's a lot of crits you're dealing there. That's far too many crits. And once again, everyone's out of position. Right. Damn it. I might just leave him there. I, I may just ignore Jacob's pillow's trinket. Uh, Jacob's Audrey's trinket. Hmm. Nah, I'm not gonna eat the repast with weakness. I'm not gonna bank on taking enough damage that on the next turn I can heal myself. That's probably a bad idea to be like, man, I hope I take 40 damage on this turn. God, I just, I hope this turn just ruins me. Spreading it wide for you, game. Keep advancing, keep advancing. They seem to love when you do that. No, please stop that. When I said earlier, okay, I so I was being a thing called sarcastic when I said earlier that I was okay with losing this round. I wasn't joking. I was joking. It was quite funny. I'm just saying I wasn't being serious, that's all. So fucking cut it out. How about you take this seriously? Looks like you're 
sipping that absinthe next turn, Audrey. Good for you. Because I think you can sip it and then also move. So I don't need to have Dr. Beak heal you. You know who she does need to heal, though? This jackass. My god. I didn't even notice for a second that... I, I, I didn't even notice. My Dismas was almost dismally dead. He's gonna he's gonna repost anything on his dying bed though. Impeccably timed. Oh, it's cool. Everything's cool. No reason to fret. She's been on death's door before. Hey you! Ah oh, crap. Wrong you. Oh. I really need to take this thing out, but it's gonna repost me. What? What? Wait. What? What is gonna happen if I do this? Are they just gonna repost each other twice in a row? Okay, I have to find out what's gonna happen. Are they just gonna hit each other until one of them's dead? Yeah, it turns out. Okay. All right, now's, now's probably not the time to ask for compliments, Dismas. Oh, finally. Oh my God, a reason to use Dead of Night. Chow down, Jacob's Pillow. Just to get you off of Death's Door. Steady yourself. Now I have an anti-venom and someone has it in their Steady pocket. Yourself. Oh my good god! Steady yourselves indeed! Thank you! Very hope inspiring. That is very, very hope inspiring, JT Jack. Now let's follow through. I would I would absolutely love to follow through. Uh Yeah, so Dr. Beak, you're currently taking Oh my god, that's a lot. Uh. We'll just do this so that you can move on this turn. Heal someone else. Who perhaps needs it a little more than you right now. Critical heal, thank goodness. Back in the fight, Kiwi Satan. Welcome back. I started calling you Dismas for a while because I was prepared for you to die. <laughs> I was preserving your character's dignity, basically, by addressing him by his maiden name. All right, well. Uh. Oh, Audrey's. Audrey. D D Jacob's pillow's weak right now. But Jacob's pillow isn't going to be attacked anyway, I assume. So that's fine. We'll come out of stealth. That's okay. Point blank shot, not the best, but well done. It destroy it destroyed Jacob's pillow's next meal. All right, so he's on his way out. Great. The world is better off. The world is so utterly much better off. Okay, fine. Screw this. The rest of my team has, like, no HP. Where is that bear trap? Hold the damn line. Don't care. I would much rather have the, uh, I'd much rather have the attention. Ah, oh, crap. That's not what that does, is it? is not the time to be sharing compliments. This is far too serious of a matter. Ah, oh, crap. Yeah, now is really not the time. Do I have balls of rock and stone? Do I think she can survive until the next turn? At which point she can eat a corpse and just heal herself. Don't ever tempt fate. It's never worth tempting fate.
It ain't worth it. Welcome relief from caustic agony. Err on the side of caution. And plus, honestly, it'll build the relationships back up, which they need after the small falling apart they had there before this. Uh, I'm not gonna say maligned. I'll say much maligned. Attempted the lair. Much maligned is more appropriate. An unavoidable end. Now I'm saving these, uh, if you if you're wondering why I'm not using neutralizing powders, um, it's because I'm waiting for what's coming at the end here. Why is your healing so low? Uh I don't know. There could be a lot of reasons why that is. There could be a whole lot of reasons why that is, some of which don't really have anything to do with me. Like the, uh, the hope candle thing still being quite low. Really, surviving with one HP. Now that's classic Darkest Dungeon. Ah, the Harvest's Bounty. That'll look lovely strapped to the back of my carriage. Oh, it'll look so lovely. That healed for like two points. Oh, that's because of the here. trinket that I have on. Pity those with a place at the table. Um, I'm a little bit. I'm so when you're t when you talk of harvest child, you're not wrong. This thing is uh, a full fledged cornucopia for the other inhabitants of this place. But I've got to imagine that with its size, it does more feasting on them than they do feasting on it. I do love the laurel wreath it's covered in. That's probably just because it can't reach it to eat it. Can I just take a quicker look at this horrible slug-like creature? I just love that the cornucopia is a wiggly snail shell. Ah! Oh, I really didn't want to look at it closer. Oh. Yeah, I can see the umbilical cord, all right. I don't, wait, but the umbilical cord is attached. So doesn't that mean that the umbilical cord goes to what was once its parent? Or maybe the parasite has has become its new parent. I don't, I don't wanna think about any of this any further. You know what I would rather do is put it six goddamn feet underground and then put 20 feet of dirt on top of it. All right, everybody's about to go a little crazy. And the putrid meat is about to move. What do you mean the putrid meat is about to get a move? It shouldn't be. I hope it doesn't. Uh, but yeah, here, I'll show you real quick. I've got the trinket foreclosure notice on uh, Jacob's pillow, our grave robber here, such that if Jacob's pillow isn't in stealth, Jacob's pillow gets crap for healing. Speaking of which, speaking of which, yes, so. Let's just figure out what the hell's going on here. Make a mountain out of that meat, baby. Oh yeah, they're connected, all right. Yep, it seems we found the hind, uh, the hive mind, excuse me. We found the hive mind and we just need to shoot it in its glowing yellow cornucopia. Okay, that's disgusting. This guy's like some kind of horrible reverse librarian. I don't even know if it does blight damage. I don't care. Everyone can have little of light resistance as a treat here. I'm, is that, is that the one that makes you lose your move? Oh, that's just a delay. Right, that's not a true stun. Darn it. Ah, well. Thing is, I can't reach it from here. There's meat in the way. Uh, I guess it's time to find out then if this is one of those fights where they want you to kill the ads or not. Let's find out. The ads can attack us, so let's find out. I mean, I've got a crazy good bleed. And I've got a crazy good blight to apply to the man himself. I could blind him from whatever the heck he wants to do to us. What's his blight resistance? His blight resistance is actually quite high. Hmm. Hey, you know what? Hey. My god! 
for once, uh, this is a special occasion. Dr. Beak gets to do outs of prevention. Oh, I, I'm all right with backseating when I ask for it. If I ask for help, don't worry. You'll know, I'll be screaming about it. Empowered, emboldened. I appreciate you asking. I appreciate you asking first, that's kind of you. Okay, I have a feeling we're gonna need that from whatever the hell it's about to do. It may be about to chow down on its own limbs, which is very, uh, I don't know, caught in a bear trap? Yeah, let's find out. One-two punch. Remember the one-two punch. Oh. What? No, no, no. That's not a tempting aroma. Oh boy. Oh, it does a whole hell of a lot of blight. It's approached and it it is on approach fast. Oh boy. Uh oh, it immediately screwed over Jacob's pillow's gimmick. Oh boy. It's about to go again. I have to get Jacob's pillow off of death's door. Holy hell. Okay. The hunger overwhelms all reason. And also your sense of smell really plugs up your nose, I guess. No! Reliance is a rare and wonderful thing. Whoa, stop it. This would be a great fight to have Dr. Beak's other heel on because that's a positive token. So you can remove that. You can remove this with Dr. Beak's other heel, I bet. Holy cow! Okay, you don't want, you do not want to let him get to the front. He just killed nearly my whole team. Wow, uh. Let's keep that from happening again. Wow. Okay. Well, attacking it seems a little pointless on this turn. Here, D Dis Dismas, you are... Dismas, you have not eaten since this journey began. Oh, God, and the hunger really does overwhelm all reason. Oh! Oh, no! Feed the hunger! Ah! Yeah, yeah, take a bite out of the one that's already got a chunk taken out of it. Oh boy. This is wild. I have come a I have come across a, a boss fight that I'm exactly ill prepared for. Welcome Fascinating. From caustic agony. Ugh. Dismas is starting to get a little jealous. I know he's low on health. I know the friendship's fallen apart. But I do have to keep my own healer alive first, my friend. I apologize. I'll keep you alive on the next turn. Ah, after all, you did kind of get yourself to the front. Wow-wee. All right, fuck this. Self-reliance is a rare and wonderful thing. We're getting her back in place on the next turn. It is important. It is important to get her back in the right spot. This is a tricky one. This is a, a fascinatingly tricky one. I'm loving it. I'm really loving it. It might completely screw me over. This might have been a terrible idea, but there really was only one way to find out, wasn't there? An unavoidable end. Let's see. What's his move resist? Oh boy, his move resist is garbage. JT Jag, it's your time. Get him to the back, please. I've seen what he does when he gets to the front. Here, who's... Yeah. We need to find whoever has... Like, everybody's buffed now. But we have to figure out who has the lowest poison resist because it runs out after a few turns. Get him out of here. Please. 
Oh, they're both hungry now. Great. It, I mean, and isn't it so delicious looking? I guess if I destroy them, then he can't use them to tempt us anymore. I guess I hadn't thought about that. This is such a brutal one. Keep him off of it. Because he's still got the guard. He's still got the guard there from JT Jag. Yep. It ain't getting any better for him. This thing's got real bad breath. It's got very bad breath. Oh, and she's so hungry. <laughs> she's out of position again. Wow. It's like the game knows what trinkets I have equipped. Then again, I did choose this fight, didn't I? That's the thing, is this thing doesn't have too much health. We could try to just burn the damn thing down. I've now, I've now realized why that's not such a great idea. Oh boy. What a dichotomy. What a dichotomy between this and our, our previous attempt. Now it's pointless to use Duelist Advance here, I think. Yeah, just keep bleeding the damn thing. I'm used to babies crying out in horrible agony. I do Let's Plays of the Dead Space games. Keep backing up, pal. Give me some space. <laughs> they're, they're shoving past each other. Oh, that's great. That's kind of wonderful. All right, get off of Death's Door. If Dr. Beak gets on Death's Door, I have a way to heal Dr. Beak. There's no possible worse way I could handle this. Once again, it's wonderful. On that terrible precipice. By the skin of our teeth if we survive this. Once again, teetering on that terrible precipice. Oh, it's a lion so nice he said it twice. Duh! Complication. There goes Kiwi Satan. And there go a chain of meltdowns. And here comes hatred. Resentment, the slowest and deadliest poison of them all. I can't believe bad breath is responsible for killing my party. After all this, you know what they were killed by? Avarice inspired by another. They didn't even inspire this avarice in themselves. What did they do to deserve this? This is clearly not working. Clearly the... Clearly this is one of them fights where they want you to take out the ads. I don't know how it managed to dodge that. That's Diglett using fly levels of dodge, but... Hey, fair enough, game. Ah, oh, they're resentful now. They're giving each other stress. Oh, we've got a real problem on our hands. Thank goodness I bought all that pipe weed. When I inevitably survive this boss fight, when I survive this boss fight, don't worry. I'll fix this. I got no more heals left, by the way. Dr. Beak can't do anymore. Everybody else is self-reliant from now on. Matter of fact, Dr. Beak doesn't have much she can do at this particular point. Because this sure as hell won't kill this putrid meat. Here. Nothing doing. Yeah, that's a hell of death's door. Thank God I gave him all that resist. Oh, what are you gonna make Kiwi Satan hungry from beyond the grave? Jeez! Let us hope they find peace. I'm gonna say they're becoming a part of the hive mind as we speak so yeah yeah i'll say their their deaths are mostly graceful oh oh jt jag you get to go out with a mouth-watering kiss a truly mouth-watering kiss damn it 
they don't let me slop on the man himself. Probably because he's a baby. Fair enough. Stupendous. I... Yeah, truly. Truly invigorating. Look at him. Completely drained. And once he survives this fight, he's still got half of the road to go. You've got so many death blows left to survive. Clearly, I misunderestimated this fight. Well, maybe I didn't misunderestimate it. I underestimated it exactly enough, as evidenced here. Guess that's learning for next time. He's even melting the graves. Once again, becoming part of the hive mind. It's the way they would have wanted to go. The characters that are named after chat members. In that way, it's completely fair. All of this is completely, completely fair. At last, the battlefield has claimed its due. Try and try again. You will break through this gloaming murk. And there we are. They, uh, they really toyed with their food before they dismantled our bloody, rusty cart. I, I think once I covered the cart in blood, and just showed it off publicly. Maybe that was some form of hubris, attracting the eye, trying to portray us as, I don't know, storied heroes who'd seen battle. But instead, what I painted us as was a delicious, sopping wet meal. <laughs> we, we were already soaked in other enemies' barbecue sauce by the time we walked in the door. I gotta go with JT Jag's assessment. After that enemy started pulling us out of position, and Audrey's healing went to pot because I couldn't put her back in stealth with the daggers because I needed to put her back in place. Yeah, our run was a little unsalvageable. Once her healing dropped down to the twos and threes, even from Dr. Beak. And to think, it started off so positively. Friends with everybody. But that's kind of what I love is easy come, easy go. I feel like we didn't lose too much from that. And we gained a whole hell of a lot of experience with fighting the enemies in the Fodor. Specifically, I don't ever want to see that boss again. I think he can go fuck himself. Once he's old enough. Who knows how many eons he will remain an otherworldly child. Maybe we'll see him as the Swine King in Darkest Dungeon 3. The goddamn glutton. He ate us all. We became part of the hive mind in the end. Congratulations, everybody. Honestly, you're better off that way given what's around us right now. That's right. The buffet is now closed. And we move on. Let's do another run. A nebulous nightmare. An apocalypse that only we can oppose. Capital W. The seat of your denial, perched precariously in the murky gloaming. I don't deny anything. I will say that my decisions cost me that last run. My decision to focus on a character with a very specific gimmick of maintaining in one position and then going into a boss fight was a stupid idea. That was a very dumb idea on my part. I shouldn't have done that. And you can't unequip trinkets during battles, or between battles in layers, so. Layers of the layers. So I was a little screwed, but I acknowledge that I at least partially screwed myself, because I do so love to screw myself. No, I mean, I hate it. I hate, I completely hate screwing myself. It was nobody's fault there but the games, hence the denial. The shackles of denial must be destroyed. You know what I think that means? I interpret that to mean that what we're doing here may secretly, quote unquote, not so secretly, have un un unintended consequences. Think about it. We, right now, 
are denying the mountain what it wants for madness to spread through the cultists. We shouldn't really release the shackles of denial because we're denying it its victory right now. So we kind of want denial to remain in this world. At least on our side. We spent long nights immersed in crumbling, worm-eaten volumes, plumbing the forbidden secrets of antiquity. The crossroads. Wait by the lantern's light, and welcome what help may come. I'm gonna... Ba based on what the narrator just said there, I'm just gonna go... They were roommates. <laughs> Just like a, a real quick like, oh yeah, they were such they were such bachelors. <laughs> the narrator and the scholar. Uh it's fine. You still can't see what this sign is pointing towards. For all we know, this sign could be pointing towards hope. Restoration. The rest of them are negative, that doesn't mean that, that one has to be. Oh boy. Big boy footprint stepping on up to the plate. Swing, batter. We have the leper. Greetings, Baldwin. His name is Baldwin, apparently. Oh, but it can't be. And of course, the Hellion. Must of course be Lynn. Time-honored tradition. There ain't no musketeer in this game. There's no flagellant in this game. Lynn and I had to pick different characters. It's tragedy, it's tragedy. All of you get to be your favorite characters, but I, I have to pick the other one that tortures himself out of pride. <laughs> ah, there's good news though. We can take along some of the folks that we brought last time. They, uh, they didn't make it to the second inn for reasons that will remain unexplained, but we'll leave them with their default names. We'll leave them with their default names on this playthrough because, uh, it gets a little confusing. I'd rather call them by their class names. The start of every stream, our first run, I think, will have characters named after the chat members. After that, it gets a little tiring to call them their class name, their original character name, and your name. That's right, you. You at home. We have to pick the Wanderer path again. Oh, or do we? That's right. We have unlockable paths for some of the other characters. Well, what happens if I pick Ravager? Does it set it to Ravager for everybody? No, everybody else, everybody else is still Wanderer, but the Hellion can ravage it up, bleed the whole damn world. More max HP. Now this is interesting. The leper's skills in this one are fascinating. I mean, he can he can chop from the second position, but he's mostly a self-buffing character. At least to start off with. In order to use Purge, we would need to put him directly in the front row, but I guess I don't mind not being able to use it. Because the Hellion... She doesn't. She doesn't start off with a move that moves her backwards. They are currently kind of oppositional characters. A little bit. Interesting. Let's have some fun. Lynn? Beneath bloodlust and fury, there is emptiness and shame. That is why you never let the fury subside, my friend. 
if you never let the fury subside, you don't have to face the bloodlust, emptiness, and shame, and all of that. Look at that spine suit she's wearing. Hell yeah. Buff as hell in this game. The 3D version of the Hellion is rad. Oh, 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 Kirby is pissed. And the leper. Yeah. Yeah, they did. They did a bit of a better job of representing how he's a leper this time around. A little bit easier to tell, poor guy. Making peace with adversity is the very essence of existence. That seems like something that he would write in one of his loser poetry books. It's cool. I'm a loser. I write poetry too. Studded belt. I love that the studs on his belt are all completely 3D. Guy's got studs on his back too. Oh, his story's a sad one. I can't wait to... I can't wait to unveil the leper's story because it's almost virtuous. I believe the leper was a hero. Until he had his... his frog eye mask. We'll find out what happened to him along the way. Let's see, who are we bringing with? As an occupational hazard? This is a good question. We have Audrey here, and we could put her down the dead eye path. Ranged? We could we could make her ranged focused and put her truly in the back, all the way, fourth position. Avarice slips unseen into the catacombs of the mind. We could keep her there. And I I want I want to bring on a healer. I, right? I, nobody right now can self heal. Leper can. Oh, and she's got her absinthe. Here's one thing that Darkest Dungeon 2 encourages you to do by having a slightly more limited class selection. One of which is also the occultist. He's over there. But we, we could not take a healer and be viable still by healing through curing status ailments and self-heal moves and letting the people who don't heal not get hurt. Or let them get crazy hurt in case of the Hellion. We could let the Hellion just trade blood with everybody and not give a damn. You know what? I think I won't do that until I've had some practice doing that on my own time. I'll try that on my own time. Dr. Beak the Third, welcome. It's your first day on the practice? Oh, my friend, get ready to make some deep incisions, deep cuts into the world of science. Indiscriminate science stains the surgeon's hands. So there is no character layout name for this particular pattern I've ended up with, uh, which means I'm fucked. If they don't give you a name, that means it's not gonna work. Who cares? I don't see any expedition as doomed. That's why up until the death's door blow that killed JT Jag, I was still hopeful that he would make it back onto the road. Because I am a fool, but it's okay. It's okay to be a fool. Yeah, Dr. Beak can still be our healer here. Don't honestly need to take anything off of Dr. Beak. Yeah, we're good. Go with what you know, Doc. What do you know? What do you know this time around? Voter scrounger? Apparently Dr. Beak II left some notes. Uh, apparently just discovered among the hive mind some audio logs in the last Dead Space game. Torn rotator cuff. Broke your plasma cutter along the way too, apparently. Well, I don't think you'll need that. That's okay. You'll be mostly for status, Dr. Beak. In effect. Oh, yeah! 
Audrey, very good. Audrey ain't going anywhere this time around. I hope we get that trinket. I hope we get that trinket this time around just to spike this game. Zero. Literally zero blood resistance by default on Audrey. Excellent. Honestly, I'd replace Leper or Hellion with Dismas. Well, I wanted to bring... I wanted to bring Lin and CJ together. But for the survivability of my team, it might be better that I do. No, I need to bring them to hero shrines to unlock skills for them. So we will take the classes that I decided. If your advice is better, we'll find out. Oh, uh, because I've already believed that it is. I, it's just I'm waiting for confirmation before I admit it. <laughs> CJ the Needler. Sharp wit, sharper words. Well, that's inaccurate. Give this guy a stutter. Then it'll be a little better. Clutch hitter. That's me. Hey, Dismas Jr. over here. You told me to bring Dismas? I've got good news. We are bringing Dismas. Elian, good at precision strikes, and has bad digestion. Yep, that tracks. My sympathies. Let's do it. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. Yep, you never know until you ride through the fog. I've noticed that our carriage is still bloody. The road is yours to travel, but you are not alone. Thankfully, honestly. Welcome, everybody. Back to the Altar of Hope. I'm not going to say that last run ended prematurely because I didn't make it to an end. We all died horribly in battle, and it was very painful, but the good news is it happened in like two turns instead of 50. It was over quickly for our heroes last time. This time. Let's see what we can do. When does the stagecoach get more room? 14. Hmm. So after our next semi successful run, we'll have enough stock for it, so we don't need to save. This as well. Spare a thought for tools of iron. Such implements will serve us well. At least they got a final meal. You know, and they and they they had been fooled into thinking it was a quality final meal too. So rest in peace. Rest in peace to everyone. JT Jag, Kiwi Satan, Jacob's Pillow. Oh shit, who was the last guy? <laughs> it slipped my mind because I didn't get to say it aloud. Oh Dr. Beak, that's right. Constant fixture. That's why I guess I didn't remember. You know what this game could use? A run history or a graveyard like the first game had just so that you can look back on heroes that you lost in previous runs. Perhaps it does have that, but I haven't checked the main menu close enough. Dr. Beak, Dr. Beak the second, that's right. Maybe, uh... Every twinkling recollection is another implement at our disposal. Maybe we will unlock some cheaper stagecoach equipment, because so far the stagecoach equipment we've found has been quite transformative, but it's been mostly endgame stuff. Make it to the next inn, and we may give you free bandages. Well, yeah, but that's not worth 80 baubles. Game's almost over. A welcome advancement in the science of survival. These almanacs, these almanacs would be handy to keep in mind. Handy to keep in mind and in pocket. We ought to get a shelf. We ought to get a bookshelf to put in the back of this thing. Really? Increased relic quantity. Get rich quick. 
refine all that was refine all those gribblies into gold. All right. I guess give us a couple combat items to start us off. This is great. I had no idea that this wasn't unlocked. Healing salve. Now anyone can heal. We have a combat item that's just a free third heal. Thank goodness. Thank, thank God I decided to click on this rhombus. This is the most important rhombus I have clicked so far for a multitude of seconds. Adrenaline tonic. I know what that's like. I was talking about the BP too. Wow, and that's a hell of a heal. Fallout stim pack looking thing. Put it in a pour it into a soda drink hat and stick it to one of my characters. Now. Allow a moment of recollection before we set out. Some peace for the fallen. There is a trinket we unlocked that I probably won't ever give to Audrey again because it is very, very reliant on her being in that fourth position. If she comes out of that fourth position or out of stealth, you're screwed. But what I'll say is where I screwed up was not using flashing daggers as often as I should have which was all the time. I should have done that, and I didn't. If I had opened that fight with flashing daggers, it couldn't have pulled me out of position. But she only got the flashing daggers effect from fourth position, and I think she started the fight in third, so I was screwed. Don't worry, we'll keep going. We got a whole lot of wiggle room to unlock yet. Sanctuary, as fleeting as a dying star. Wow. <laughs> wow. What a cosmically poignant line. That You can't just drop those on me when I'm coming out of a depression like that. You can't make me feel insignificant. That's not what this game is about. You're not supposed to do that anymore. I destroyed your heart of darkness. Now we need to rebuild hope. Facing oblivion. These folk have kept their honor. Have you? Arguable. I tried. I tried really, really hard. Man. Okay, for for a split second, this baby with a hand on uh, the man's shoulder, uh, I assume, had a full goatee uh, go, uh, going on. A, a, a full goatee grown. And... I was thoroughly confused. I was like, these really are desperate times. Kids growing facial hair that early. No, it was just my brain malfunctioning. Purpose draws within us like the sun. Well, I like the leper already. I like the leper's style already. But... I think I'll skip the food again. I think I'll skip the food in the name of a trinket because we unlocked a bunch and we only saw a few of them. So let's let's see if they have anything to part with. Because well, I, I don't think I'll be able to hold on to the in items. Making quick friends either way. Hey, what do you know? A clandestine cape. This is probably gonna go on to Audrey anyway. C hey, congrats, Audrey. Living is a struggle. They understand this. Wow, this guy really is like me. The, all the lines that they gave the leper, I like so far. Let's dole everything out. We will give the free heals to our non-healers. Everyone who, everyone who can't heal themselves. So, hey, what do you know? Uh, here, I'll give myself the adrenaline tonic. I'll give Lynn the healing salve. And that, that feels real narcissistic of me to call this character myself. 
That's the worst thing I think I've ever done. I'll try to call him CJ for the rest of this, so that I have no culpability whatsoever in anything that follows. Chance to stealth. Good luck, Audrey. Matter of fact, Audrey can't use pick to the face from where she is, but she can use dead of night from anywhere. You know what? We may end up with a better version of the gimmick we were trying to run. Let's try repartee. If she happens to gain stealth from the clandestine cape, I'll try repartee because on that turn, enemies can't hit her. She gets a free move if that happens. So I can, I can use the stealth to buff her and it draws attention to her, but that's okay. I've got the Hellion to deal with any problems that arise from that. The only way that could have been a better start for her is if I had also had a Baristan. If I had a Baristan with me to guard her or another character that could guard her or someone else to draw the attention. Now. My, my fellow, you, uh, my fellow, you skimped on the baubles again. That's okay. What's he offering? You know, I'm kind of thinking of buying this and giving it to CJ because CJ has three speed. CJ is not going to go first. CJ is already gonna go last in every round of every fight. So if I give him if I give him zero speed, I really have to wonder if that's gonna hurt him or help him. Get rid of the compress kit. See, we only have two slots on our stagecoach, and I want to keep this almanac until we go to the shroud. So, unless the shroud is first, we have a free slot. So I'm gonna see if I can buy something. Uh... Ah, I love the medicine chest. The medicine chest has saved my bacon. Well, it saved us, it saved us from turning into bacon on several occasions, being able to stack those burn salves. I think I'll stick with that. Speaking of burning, who's got a, who's got a combat item already? Can I see that? Yes, I can. These two chuckleheads. These two chuckleheads, they need something to throw. But also... Right. Relationships. Oh. CJ and Audrey are already friends? Huh. Well, I'm I'm glad they I'm glad they made fast friends. They might have rode in on the way here. Fellow eye line hiders, I suppose. They try to avoid the awkward stare of others. Uh one with a tall hat and one with an MF Doom cosplay. Um, nothing, nothing this time around. Sadly, that increases, there is the whiskey bottle, but I don't want to take it at the start of a playthrough because at the start of a playthrough, everyone is neutral. So I don't want to start them down the blue path on accident. Crap. Well, my good man, I don't think I'm taking any of these then. I don't think. Anti-venom, bandages, and burn salve. I'll take your bandages. That way I don't gotta buy them later. See you later. If I ever decide to play Darkest Dungeon 1 again. I don't know if he remembers the events of Darkest Dungeon 1. 
He, he may have blocked them out of his mind. He may be like Malencha the Hag in Dark Souls 2 and just be a wandering, traveling salesman that keeps his house on his back now. Because where else is he gonna put it? Not like he has a stagecoach of his own. Oh, it's a long and lonesome road. The bulwark of your denial is giving way. Every time. Every time it does in the end. Oh, simple. Oh, this is a pretty simple combat to start us off. Not bad. Look at that. Bunch of babies. A slow See? dissection. An unavoidable end. Now, this is what we're here for. This is what we're here for. The title I... N the, ti the title of this stream is Slap Yop for a reason. The Hellion was one of my favorite classes to stack multiples of in Darkest Dungeon 1, and you can't do that anymore. You can only have one of each class until the game becomes moddable and all that. Uh, but I gotta say, it, uh, the, the class herself did not get any less fun to beat the hell out of the enemy's ass. I mean, her attacks are just so fun. For you, my friend. Not like she could do too much else. It's okay. I withstand the stress. I think. Oh god, he withstands everything when you use withstand. Now, I think that, uh... That little speaker there down underneath the shield icon calls attention, so it'll it'll turn all eyes on CJ when he needs it. That, that self stress heal, interesting. I, that's uh, I don't I don't have that in real life. That I have the ability to self reflect, but it only increases my stress. Oh well, I left this guy alive so that I could hit him as CJ. Because check out this animation. Look at him holding that sword up. Hell yeah! Scavenge what you can, and be off once more. Leper and Hellion rule. They're a team! They're a duo of damage dealers! And we got support in the back! I have a feeling, I have a feeling this may work out a little better than we thought because we have flashing daggers and oh, whichever one, hack, wicked hack. I think uh, the, the one that hits the middle rows for Hellion, we can still hit the middle rows with everyone. Push on to the inn, rest and resupply await you. Listen to the jubilance in his voice when he says that. Oh, slime mold! Nice! Listen to the jubilance in my voice when I say that! Also, I appreciate that the icon of the inn is outside of the model for the inn. The this place icon. is a little worse for wear, but familiar nonetheless. <sighs> the only place you truly feel respite because characters from the first game show up and you recognize them and you're like, oh, thank God it's you. Oh, thank God. Please sell me something. Sell me anything. Something to put on my station wagon. Oh yeah, look at, look at them. Oh, the Hellion, Hel Hellin is ready to go. Hellin is ready to go and CJ is just waiting. He's meditating. Not slumped over like the uh, man at arms is. The leper, he's just breathing even, waiting. Wherever he's going next, I don't know. It's it's really fun to see the reworked and redone animations for these classes for the first time. I'm excited to see their flavor dialogue. Their flavor dialogue is really fun. Hell, Hell and the Hellion. So, okay, someday we're going to have to have a, a Hellion named Helen, yes. For the time being, it's Hellin. <laughs> Padoru. It is that season, after all. 
Here, Lin. Have some slime mold. It's food. You won't hear me complain, she says. Well, uh, I don't need to give the mop and bucket to anyone. The mop and bucket has a chance of giving stress to somebody, and it has a chance of relieving three, but nobody has three. And if I give it to CJ, it may harm him, because he could just self-stress heal whenever he damn well has a free turn. So we'll just kind of get rid of that. I'll just leave that here so that they can clean this place. Very dusty. Combat items. Do these stack? Only to two, because this game's a dick. Which is good. It means we'll have a leftover. Glad this game's... Glad this game's a jerk. There we are. Pretty much... Pretty much everyone has a healing item or a bandage now. Or, you know, some Tabasco sauce. Just in case he needs to get moving in the heat of combat. And hey, it fits on the leper, because, well, it'll take stress away from him. Right, this trinket. Let's give that to him. This is comical. This is, this is absolutely silly. He has two base speed. He's only got three because we have a high flame right now. When our flame starts to drain, his speed will go down to two. It's at zero. That means it's going to go down to negative one. He's not going to get to go until the middle of someone else's turn now somehow. They're, he's just going to cut into someone else's turn. That's the thing. You have to consider that this is about to sound really stupid, okay? But, but check this out. If I make him the slowest, he's back to going first. He goes at the end of the round after all of the friends and all of the foes. <laughs> so if he goes completely last, technically he goes first. <laughs> I just need to make him so slow that even the enemies will lose to him. <laughs> Terrible idea, but what if it works out? Your coach must be maintained if it is to carry you where you must go. Yeah, we'll head to the mastery trainer in a second. Oh, you meant... I know what you meant. You meant the... Right. Coach as in like this one, not like keeping her in shape. I'm sure she's fit as a fiddle. She's the one that keeps us in shape. First of all, let's see if we can go to the Shroud. Rain, fire, and rot. Is there no sanctuary from this madness? Oh, we'll find one. As a matter of fact, I got a map. Bolt it on and be off. The mountain will not be denied. I feel like you probably shouldn't bolt a book onto the carriage. It'll be kind of hard to read. But then again, maybe it's like a a token of some kind, like a, a, a spiritual occultist token that we just like a Bible that you hold up during an exorcism or something like that. And then I guess much like in The Exorcist, you just get laughed at and then the head spins in a circle and vomit propels you out a window. Well, let's see. Oh boy! What? No! I don't want to do that! You want me to clear out the lair on my first region of the mountain? I don't want to- I don't want to do that! Are you crazy? I- I might be that crazy. The difficulty scales slightly. I'm not that crazy. Not when, not when the leper and the hellion were both just unlocked, so they don't have any of their skills. We'll maybe go back to the fodder. We'll get revenge on the fodder. After all, there's booty abounds. The farms and fields of our kingdom overrun with putrescence and rot. Not for long. 
This will serve well. God, I'm hoping that it's not collector style and you folks, JT, Jag, Kiwi, Satan, and all them will appear as, uh, as specters collector style when we head back to the Fodor. This one, I'm gonna keep. I will keep the medicine chest and replace, well, we're not gonna need the book after we leave. Oh, right. We're not going to the shroud. Good thing I was thinking about that. Meet each challenge on its own terms. I'll keep the book then, because the shroud may pop up a second time. Again, this is why you think of every tab in the inventory just for a second before you set off. Just for a second. One learns quickly when survival demands it. Now, this will be interesting. We've got Lin here and we've got CJ. So, Lin and CJ have new skills. We haven't checked out the upgrades. That's right. Chop has a chance to blind me. Me as in the royal us. As in, it'll blind the character. Not like... He already looks like he has a hard time seeing through that mask. Maybe that's why I identify him. Isaac Clark style. I may give him this just from the beginning. Because chopping is what he's gonna fucking do. He is not going to be doing anything else. Pretty much. Until we reach a hero shrine. We'll just upgrade that chop right away. Let's head over to Lin. Wicked hack, just do more damage. Iron Swan is for the last row, but we can make it do a combo attack. If we had, hey, if we had Dismas, he could capitalize. Oh yeah! Yawping is good in this game. Yawping is good for the mid game. If, if we use Barbaric Yop, it'll exhaust us, basically, and make us do less damage for the rest of that specific fight. But, uh, it'll also weaken the enemy for that turn, in case they're charging up a big attack, or they're stealthed. It'll make them come out. <laughs> Which is pretty funny. <laughs> the Hellion can la- the, the Hellion has the ability to yell as loud as the Grave Robber's husband. <laughs> She has that angry, a booming voice when she yops. No, I'm thinking bleed. Uh, I love to bleed the enemies. We're going back to the Fodor. Let's get our bleed on. And if she gets out of position, toe to toe, we'll just get her back there. Toe to toe. You knew it. <laughs> Evelyn Padoru. <laughs> hey, look! From eating that slime mold, you actually got disease resistance! Holy crap! I didn't even know that was possible! Okay. You. So, from eating the slime mold, you can either resist the disease chance when it procs, get a disease, or proke an entirely separate chance to then resist disease. Hot damn! Well done, Lin. Spend what you can, or wealth no longer has meaning. Oh, if I got just it ever did. I got just enough for a round of cards for the for the table. I don't know. I'm tempted. I'm tempted to buy a round of cards before we set out. I know what I said earlier about the blue status effect. But that was only between two people. This is between everyone. Let's mix it up a little bit. Let's see what happens. Throw down your magic decks, everyone. Wow! That was, that was slanted towards the golden edge. Oh boy. Look at that. We are starting off on the right foot. Oh yeah, everyone likes each other just a little more. 
Oh, look at our path icons. Look at the, the, the little seal in the corner of your character icon is the path that you've chosen. And it has a different banner and a little stamp for that specific character class. And since we are a non-specific one on Dr. Beak, oh, that's cool. That's really cool. Well, we're starting out with no trinkets. Oh boy, Deadeye is right. Let's do it, everybody. Once more, unto the wild orange yonder. Yeah, we hit the odds on that card game. They played a game of poker and didn't hate each other afterwards. Nobody must have been lying. The rancid crop grows unchecked and abhorrent. Yeah, someone tried to check it once. At one point, someone tried to check it and they failed miserably. We are gonna stay the hell out of that lair. Oh boy. Lots of caches here. Look at that, the game's being kind to me. And a creature den, just for funsies at the end of it all. Well, uh, okay, we'll head for the hero shrine. Get a skill for CJ or Lin. I think CJ would be a better choice because Look right ahead. now the leper is really a place limited. To reflect, remember, and reconcile. And he's so negative all the time. What a negative Nancy that CJ. See, Audrey's trying to cheer him up. I wonder who she just gained relationship with. I wonder if that was CJ. Trying to reflection. Let's see. Giving CJ another move that's hopefully an attack. A lion in the blood-soaked grass, circled by hyenas who move as a pack. I'm gonna guess that's not how you became a leper, unless they had rabies. Leper, chapter one, shun them not. Yes, indeed. Despite the protestations of his royal advisors, he would visit with the sick and dying, providing them what comfort he could. Once again, I love that the story begins with a, an arguably good person. He's royalty, but he's visiting the sick himself. Shaking the hand of the person with HIV, you know, it, it, and um, that that's kind of the thing is that you shouldn't do that to lepers <laughs> that that's the thing is you can Gift the lepers you can donate to the lepers you can save the lepers from their fate and their misery What you can't do is go out and touch the lepers face to face it doesn't quite work that way oh boy okay let's see well what do we okay what do we want to start with I well I'm royalty to the front about what I expected I'll hear out your cries. It's fine. Self-stress heal is what I'm good at. It's my skill. Now all of you who are about to tell me not to do this, you calm down. You just, you just calm down for a second before I place my hands all over this leper. I can heal my stress later. I don't listen to my advisors. I'm a youth, you see. You see us youths? We know what's best for the world. Case in point, I don't know about you, but I sure do feel better. Look at 
that? Their whales are so pitiful. How could you ignore whales like that? Oh, man. My advisors are probably going to tell me to stay out of the way. Seriously, fellas. I'm breaking rank here. I choose not to listen to counsel. See? Oh. Boorish as hell. Boorish as hell, that interjection. Get out of here. If a leper I shall become, then I shall become a leper on my own terms. Thank you very much. They're all about to go, but I don't think they're going to stress me out enough. I'm already at the back. I'm at least pretending to listen now. What are they going to do? Chastise the lepers? Tell them to go away? Motherfucker, we're on their home turf. They're lepers. They don't have anywhere to go. What? You want a leper to pick up a giant sword? Or something like that? And wander the lands? Citing poetry? A uh, nonsense, I fucking say. Now, there's this, there's this thing about hubris that... I've heard on a couple of streams, folks have told me. Maybe... Maybe I should be listening to those people. Because I shouldn't, I shouldn't listen to my elders, is the thing. There, there are times when you should listen to your elders. And times when you should tell your elders that you know best. And be right. The thing is, you can also say that and be wrong. You can also be very wrong when you say that. We'll find out in two lepers or so who was correct on this issue. That is what I will say to my royal council, is I will say, in about two or three lepers, two or three lepers, we'll figure out who was the correct party politically here. I love this fight. It's such a cool use of the mechanics, isn't it? And... Look at how it teaches you the basics of the character you just unlocked. His self-stress heal is keeping him from losing this. His own actions heal his own stress and help him move back to the front. Aw, oh, hell. Aw, oh, rebukes on cooldown. Use the stress heal. Whoa, that was the stunned one! Excellent. Come here, my friend. Salvation is yours. Look at these guys. They just want the darkness to eat away at this world? You gotta do something. Like, yeah, I know these are lepers. But so what? Like, yeah, I'm making a bad decision touching the lepers. But so what? Someone has to reach out and touch face. Ah! I'm sorry, did you see that disease pop up? The ailing and infirm were far less repulsive to him than the venomous whispers of his scoffing entourage. Good. It's fascinating how the comic portrays him and the game itself followed through as a genuinely noble person that is kind of what i liked about the leper in the first game is that the poetic nature of the man his dialogue in combat his stoicism portrayed him as someone who actually would go out and hug a leper naively and then learn his lesson about it well now we've learned, and oh, I love that one. I love that one so much. That's pitch perfect. I love the disease pop-up of leprosy at the end there. That's so brutal, because that is one disease that the nurse is not going to be able to heal if we run into her. Yeah, there we go. He's got break now. 
Good. Okay. He is now the cultist destroyer. He will murder any cultist we come across. All those shields that those stupid altars add to those nocturne dudes. That ain't gonna be an issue anymore. I'm with the leper on that one. Compassion is its own strength. Maybe you can see why I wanted to pick this guy. <laughs> when deliberation is exhausted, trust your instincts. We're going for the cash. Yes, indeed. That is how you learn new moves for the Surprise characters and way, their backstories, and it's awesome. It. It's really awesome. It just makes me smile. It's such a unique way. And, and they've toned down the repetition that it originally had as well by making shrines much more frequent and easier to access along the maze as well. The shrines also no longer... They're, they're harder to fail now. They've, t they've tweaked them in such ways that make the mechanics so charming. It's such a charming way of storytelling. Like I said, it makes you care about the characters bits at a time. It reminds me a lot of Hades in that way. Bite-sized chunks. An impressive haul. Put it to good use. No shit! This is some of the stuff we had on one of the other runs I lost, I believe. I believe I had that work table loom. Yeah! Oh, whatever we're gonna make with this loom is going to look lovely. I can't wait to see the fruit of that loom. Let's see. We got in items, combat items, no trinkets, though. Well, here. Who would like a grenade? Would you? Hey, Dr. Beak. Dr. Beak, you're the resident explosives expert. Have a grenade. You do heals anyway. You might as well impress the rest of the team by doing damage. Oasis. I'm not gonna make it. I'm not gonna make a Wonderwall joke. Mm -mm. I wanna make a Champagne Supernova joke instead. What does the Oasis do? I don't recall. Push forward. Lamentably, there is no other choice. You don't say. And I guess this is a good time. We're gonna get into a scrap along the way. We're traveling the broken road today. Yeah, it looks like the Oasis may be stress heal based on the way it said one's mind. That's what I was thinking too. Stumbling. Whoa, Lin! Lin Lynn is hitting on Audrey! Of what they once were. Lin! Lin, you can't help yourself! Lin said maybe later we can get a drink. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, there's nothing to be sorry about. This thing's gonna become one heck of a shag wagon with Dr. Beak here. May as well get on the- you gotta get in on the ground floor before Dr. Beak steals everyone. Alright. Well, the urchin is worse. The urchin is actually worse to keep alive than the widow. Observe the subject carefully, and you will discover its weaknesses. See, that lighter stress symbol is horror, which lasts for multiple turns. He only a does a little stress. Thing. As repulsive as it is. But he can stealth himself such that I can never hit him. So... Even though she's gonna get a move, he's gotta go first. Bummer. But it is what it is. Audrey! You got dead eye. What does Deadeye do now that we're in combat? Oh, it just makes range skills kick ass. Excellent. Okay. Good for you. Ain't that the one that makes you... Yeah, and you got the clandestine cape, so... Okay, Audrey, good luck. Welcome back to the fold, Audrey. I don't know how you came back to life. Oh, well... I've got, a, I've got an action to perform after this, but don't worry. It's the funniest joke I'll ever make, so I'll remember it. I'll keep it in mind. Dr. Beak, in the meantime. Yeah, with the slicing. Thank you, Dr. Beak. Well done. Uh, 
Well, Lin just randomly began to bleed at the start of this round. That's, that's apropos, I suppose. Why the hell did Lin just start bleeding? What happened? What? What? What'd I just do that caused Lin to just start bleeding? Oh! Yeah, the downside of Ravager! Oh boy, we're gonna need bandages. Thank goodness I have that thing on my stagecoach. Boy, I did not read that close enough. Wow. I didn't read that nearly close enough. Well, I don't want to do toe-to-toe -to -toe right now, then. Uh... Huh. Ah. Oh. Oh, in this game, if it bleeds, is second position only. Let's swap CJ and Lin after this, too. Wow. I am learning things about them as we go. Good to know. Yeah, 10 damage to cut its entire head off in one blow. That's... It probably can't move much after that. All right, lesson learned. Continue with the strategy I know, which is to break this lady's mirror as soon as I, uh... As soon as she starts looking into it, honestly. Oh, the skull that's actually in the mirror is kind of creepy. Yeah, you're in the wrong position here. We gotta rearrange you a little bit. The only thing she can hit here are corpses. We'll have her yop. A dramatic yop. It's not gonna help her at all, but it's okay. She doesn't need to move again. Uh. You got- no, I said doesn't need to move again. Well, I guess you're making sure of it, though. I missed and I'm blinded. Lin, this is going exactly as things usually go for you and I. It's kind of what I expected when I brought us into the party, honestly. For Dr. Beak and Audrey to carry us. I'm just glad they're doing it. Good for them. Cut down these nightmares and blaze the trail to your redemption. I'll keep trying. They're stressing. They're they're slowly stressing us out, though. We need to be careful. Manage the stress. Get the relationships up. We didn't really get a chance to do that this time. Last time we had a whole bunch of affinity increasing items, but this time we had none. Just a set of playing cards. Well. I don't want to give this to anyone, really. I guess I'll stick it on Dr. Beak so it's not in my inventory, but this guy does pretty good crits. This lady does pretty good crits. This lady does pretty good stuff too. But yes, I'm going to move Lin to second position because she has a skill that I could probably use once a fight or so to get her back to first position. If she can't use, she can't use Iron Swan unless she's in first. We'll see. Maybe we'll run across a hero shrine and we'll get a skill for her too along the way. Hey, while, while we're here, CJ's skill, break. That's usable from first. So we can get rid of one of these. I don't, I don't self-reflect very often, unless I'm panicking. Take that one off. Unbefitting of a guy named CJ. <laughs> uh, I refuse to get too self-deprecating about it, though. That's the thing. 
I named the character after myself. I don't need to self-flagellate just because he's not the flagellant anymore. Oh, wow. Hey, they included the cult symbol. Did you notice in the flashback, on the banner behind the lepers was the cult symbol, which is these two lines forming a little, uh, a little blade shape around the top. Neat. This oasis has the cult symbol on it. Wait. Uh. It's also there on the bench. Don't put your butt there. There have been cultists here. No. These are the wrong kinds of soothing waters. These are the soothing waters of madness. Oh, everybody. No heat, no salts, no wine, but it shall suffice. Oh wow, Dr. Beak doesn't want to take a dip. Dr. Beak hears the occult whisperings in the background. Our foes may lose our scent if we bathe. Ah, she took a lesson from the Houndmaster. And you know what? You know what? CJ learned this lesson from Lynn. Never underestimate the power of a moment's respite. Take a nap, everybody. I wanted to get rid of that stress anyway. Uh... Again, that... That ethereal thing that happened there at the end that looked like a well of souls absorbing part of my humanity? I probably should be pretty concerned about that. I probably should be a little bit concerned about that happening there. That's normal, probably? Yeah, you're right, actually. Never mind. No question. Not in this world. Not in the Fodor. Oh, it's this exact combination again. Wonderful. Damn! You got lucky. That fire mouse got lucky. St two speed and you got to go second? I wish CJ would get that lucky for once in his goddamn life. All right, screw all this. Well, no, hang on. Let's not waste it. How about... Why, well, we have Dr. Beak as a damage dealer, don't we? Well, spread the plague. Sorry, leper. I apologize if this is offensive to view. The, the leper is probably just like, guys, what the hell? That's not, that's not cool. You can't, hey. <laughs> Were you not paying attention during the shrine? And they were like, no, only you saw that, dude. Well, she's on fire. She's absolutely, positively heating up. Whoa. They've got hella bleed resist. Where the, where the hella did their bleed resist come from? 73 bleed resist? What is this nonsense? That's a ludicrous amount. All right, fine. You know what? That fire mouth lady is gonna get one more turn and then die of the blight. So I don't actually need to worry about her. I don't really care if she goes again. For all I know, she's gonna set my entire party on fire. Can she do that? Analysis is the natural prelude to action. Yeah, yeah, she can kind of do that to anyone in my party at any time, but that's okay. We'll leave her. I'll take a risk and I'll leave her. Get a load of that dog. What do you think? Ah, it's fine. Just kidding. See, because now I can use flashing daggers and override that dog's dodge to kill this crack shot. I think. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it'll override the dodge chance if I use the flashing daggers, which is both of these targets. I guess we'll find out now, won't we? Uh, hey, you there. How are you doing today? Would you like to take 16 damage? How about 18? A promising development. Bad news, I'm set up for a combo. Good news is no one's gonna live long enough to do it on me. 
Don't you love how confident I am when I'm not the one whose life is at stake? Unfortunate that Yop doesn't remove dodges. You'd think it would shake that dog to its very core if Lin started barking at it like a dog. What? 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 Just like, I'm, I'm just saying, that's the sound she'd make. Well, fine. We'll fight this pup together. Okay, well, that quick, that uh, crack shot is a quick shot. He's on the way out. Firemouth is gonna live, which is okay. I'm okay, I'm okay with her surviving. Because the turn will be over. The, co the combat will be over on the turn after that. Hmm. If I can get her down to five though, she'll die here. Audrey, Audrey, you think you can do it? Whoa. Oh, she's got she's got two separate chances here. I was gonna whip it at that dog, but well, throwing knives versus dogs. The Souls games taught me that that is an unreliable idea. Whoa! She is a dead eye after all. Consider that lady dead. Wow, we uh, we killed all of the masters and left only the hound. That that's probably the saddest thing I think I've ever seen. Like, those were all themselves the hound master, and now look at it. That's uh, that's kind of sad in a way. I'll kill it in one hit with 18 damage to make myself feel better. I mean to make it over with faster. In this world, wealth is worthless without purpose. Leper and Hellion are a strong front row combination. That's the- if they manage to get out that 18 damage, hot damn. Those two in the back, they aren't to be forgotten either. That blight and- and if we put the stun on Dr. Beak, it'll hella help out. even sadder than that baby well which baby which baby are we talking about are we talking about the baby jellyfish whose ass i completely kicked or are we talking about the baby cornucopia that ate my entire team for lunch because there are two babies we encountered on this stream neither of which i want to encounter again i ain't i ain't uh into the idea here you go, Audrey. Well, no, she's got plus, plus crit chance. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to take that away from her. Still can't stack two of the same trinket. I don't want to give this to anybody. This is not good for anybody on the team, actually. It might be good on Leper at the beginning. The very beginning, because he already starts with high base health so he'll get high benefit from wearing it but i mean i would very much like a crit on 18 damage man i really would like that early early game go with what you know they say we got another cash coming up who knows who knows what it'll be what about the baby with the goatee Ah, the bi so they grow up fast. That's what I learned in this world. The landowners and peasants alike descended into an orgy of consumption. Now, narrator, I'd really not like you to say that word again. I'd really, there's a specific word in that sentence that you said that I think you and I both know that I didn't want to hear out of that man's mouth. Though I'm sure he participated in hundreds. Sometimes with, you know, flesh pillars involved, probably. I'm, I'm just saying, I saw the Crimson Court DLC. I know the kind of people he consorted with. I don't want to think about that. Awaits, eager to ply his trade. Yeah, consumption, exactly. 
After we eliminated tuberculosis, there is no need to bring up consumption again. It's got such a nasty history, I just don't like to think about consumption. That's all. Ah, slime mold. Fantastic. Thanks, ancestor. Of myself. Oh, and of course. We've got the hoarder coming up, but what have I to spend at his, his coffers? Smirking betrays a malign madness. It is a pretty malign madness, to be honest. I feel bad for the guy most of the time. Yeah, I got no baubles to speak of, my friend. I'm sorry. Not a bauble in sight. And my pack is laden with loot and supplies. The two things Darkest Dungeon tells you you're not supposed to have. Damn, these bleed items will really help us here. Damn. Ah! You're good, game. You're real good. Fine. This game, this game has got my number on the exact type of items that I like to keep uh, with Phoenix Downs. Uh, I, I was gonna say Phoenix Downs Syndrome, but I've just realized why people used to call it that is because it's an offensive term. I just realized that that's why people called it that. <laughs> game, game FAQs used to be pretty funny, but that's not acceptable today, so let's not call it that again. Um, yeah, I never used my Phoenix Downs back in the day in RPGs, and well, I have to learn to let go. I have to learn to let go. Oh, it's acceptable to laugh. It's just not acceptable to continue to make it after you're aware. Forget the burn salve. I burned myself on that joke. All right, fella. What do you got for us? Anything of worth? Hero shrine scouting. I mean, I think that would also guarantee a another hero shrine in the next location if we strapped it to our wheelbarrow. Our, our wheelbarrow of future corpses. Hmm. Consolidate. That's what I'll do, is I'll consolidate. Turn my one burn salve into multiple... multiple medicinal herbs. Then I think I'll save, thank you very much. I'm gonna save up, my friend. Your selection, uh, your selection is just gonna fill my pockets prematurely today. Yeah, we got a beast den coming up, and that's going to result in some chaos. Absolute chaos, but we're in the Fodor, so I'm guessing it's going to be bleed-based? I'm gonna assume it's gonna be bleed-based. The Adrenaline Tonic is a great healing item, but it requires you to be under 50% HP, so I think it might not be worth taking. We may want to just take some basic healing supplies into this first one. Let's do it. Let's do it, why don't we? I mean, what could possibly go wrong, am I right? What, what, could, what could possibly go wrong? What, you think I'm going to the lair? No. You saw what happened last time. Oh, Lin wants to go to the lair. Lin saw what happened last time. Wants me to get eaten for lunch again. Dr. Beak, stop hitting on Lin. Quit hitting on my partner. <laughs> I, she can't help it. Dr. Beak is just so utterly charming. Ah, the spider webs. I don't like it. Into the beast den we go. Oh God. Where even, I don't know, where could the stress symbol even be on this one? The shape of the trees, maybe? Do you guys see the stress symbol? Or the torch? Either one of them. They've got to be here somewhere. 
I'm looking in the cobwebs. I think the spider web is supposed to symbolize the stress lines. Maybe so, you're right. Yeah, that that could be that could be its manifestation. You know what? You could be right with the lines going straight into the center from the outsides. That's you may be very you may be on the money, my friend. Good motif spotting. Well done. Yeah, cuz yeah, cuz look at the look at the webs in the background there. The lines going down towards the center and then the stress icon. Very good. Very good. The the cobwebs are a natural fit. Holy shit, Lynn's got a plan! Press on! They are but beasts! Yeah! Let's go crush some rats! Lynn and CJ are together on this one! Oh yeah! Okay, team. Let's take the heads off these worms! Outgraded, outgraded flashing daggers, but I'm not gonna make use out of it just yet. Again, it'll be great for finishing enemies off. Soften them up in the middle. The slow suffering begins. No, it began when I started this run, my friend. You know what I think we could use here is a party shuffle. No, no, I remember this. I remember this from last time. We need to make sure that we take all of these jackasses out at around the same moment. We need to be very careful because they will eat each other and they will reform each other. They are, they are in a way, beautiful creatures. They are beautiful, beautiful abominations of nature. Bleeding crew, always bleeding ourselves, but it's fine. We'll make them bleed right back. You're right. Steady yourself. CJ's corpse clear. Oh, I caught the oozes. Well, what is the, what's the oozes do? It just makes me have a chance to get blighted at the start of every round. Yeah, yeah, that's accurate. That's completely accurate. All right. But you're right. Right there, purge. Good call. So we don't actually necessarily need to worry about that. Crap, no matter what I swing at, I'm probably gonna miss. See, that is the balancing of Leper, is that he does huge damage, but he has a 50% chance to miss every attack if he gets on this streak of being blinded over and over. Oh, boy, do I wanna just hit him? Now nah, you know what? Here. All eyes on me. I'll wait. Yeah, because our buffs were about to disappear anyway. All right, everybody, you got all your buffs. Do your thing. Uh, Lynn, you want to you wanna just beat the shit out of this thing? Yup, a crit of 12. The results are encouraging. All right, let's make as many corpses as possible. Audrey? A calculated generosity. But let's, a welcome one nonetheless. Let's make some corpses! Yeah! Your turn, Dr. Beak. Oh! That works too! That also works! Get this thing out of here! It's nice that if you miss the attack, the corpse clear still works. That's that's nice. I don't know if it did that in the first game or not. Okay. Going about as well as can be expected. Oh boy. I guess I'll just stack bleeding on this one, too. I could just hit the damn thing, though, I guess. Yeah. 
Yeah, it turns out sometimes Another the uh, simple approach is better. With impunity. Well, this one's going away on this turn. And this one's... Going away if Dr. Beak does her doctorly duties. Your Hippocratic Oath, remember? Yeah! Well done, Doc. Speaking of Doc... Battlefield, Battlefield Doctorate Audrey. A little from her last journey out. Timed. That's right. First, do harm. I don't remember what comes after that. Oh well. I may have skipped that part. Messy. But effective. Well that's the thing, is that harm has to happen. Ah! Oh my god! <laughs> Fuck me! Those translated in 3D really well! Ah! <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god! That's so bad I can't look at him! That's fucked! Oh, give me a second. Oh my god! Oh my god! Fuck! Man! Fuck! Ah, I was like, ah! Oh, I was liking this game so much! Damn it! <laughs> oh fuck, man! Let's do it then! Fuck you! Let's get over it! Fine! Attack me then! Come a little closer, my dearie. Ah, oh, they got a chance to dodge. They got such a good chance to dodge. Ah, uh, I'm clenching my fists. I'm clenching my fists. Uh, they got shit bleed resist. Good. They're like real spiders that way. Mistimed as directed. We got this. Come on, exposure therapy. Now, if Dr. Beak heals CJ here, he'll get rid of both of his status effects. So sadly, CJ, I'm not going to heal you with yourself. I myself am not going to heal you. <laughs> I, I guess I should have suspected based on the cobwebs. Fuck, I, I'm getting used to them real quick, but God, the, when they move, I, I can't look at them. Fuck that. Fuck that. Fuck that! I gotta hover over them to get their blight resist. I can't kill it. If I kill it, the other one will eat it. Ah! Resisted the bleed anyway. Yeah, keep munching on me. That's fine. I'm gonna take the heal in a second anyway. That's the thing, is I knew they were still in the game because pretty much every enemy from the first game is in. Is the thing, but I'm so... I'm so... I'm not disappointed in this case because I knew there were spiders. But God, their translation to 3D is so utterly horrible. In the first game, they were these little cartoon guys that scuttled on the ground. But in this one, they're so bad. Like from an arachnophobia this standpoint. At least has been tended to. Jesus Christ! Thanks, Doctor Beak. Oh my God. They make spider noises. Uh, they're just so much worse in this game. They're just so fucking much worse in this game. Well. This one is a carrion devourer. 
So I guess I don't want to kill the spider, unfortunately. Oh, that's right, and they've got death's door, don't they? Well, let's... Let's hope that it, I guess, bleeds to death? Steady yourself. I'm trying, man. I'm really trying. All right. Well, Dr. Beak, you're gonna have to heal me again. I really would appreciate you putting that medicine to practice. I got a golf swing to line up. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. I brought him closer. Ah, fuck. I shouldn't have imposed this character on myself. <laughs> if I had time to use Ounce of Prevention, I would have, but I didn't know these were coming. Ah, uh, well. You know what? Dr. Beak, it's your time to shine. They're weak to bleed. Wow, the sounds they make. Hey, you know what? Good for you, Crisco. I'm glad you have a pet spider. I'm allergic to spider venom, so if a spider bites me, I'll die if I don't visit an emergency room within half an hour. I have reason to fear these creatures. It's okay. You don't need to talk about how much you love spiders when I talk about how much I hate them. The thing is, how much you love spiders? It doesn't make them any less scary. Let's see. I'm glad you love your pets, though. That's the thing. No matter what species your pet actually is, you should love your pet. I'm just saying, there are other pet choices that I would go with first, personally. Oh, boy. I'm gonna need that heal pretty soon, Dr. Beak. I'm glad it's coming off a cooldown soon. Right, so I'm not gonna go into creature dens again. I'm gonna not do that if the game gives me an objective. I, thankfully, don't have to stop playing this game. I don't have to stop playing this game. I just have to not go into creature dens, which apparently is where the spiders hang out. Lethality writ large. I wish it were writ larger. The faster this gets over with, the better. Everyone's blighted and bleeding. Thankfully, it's not that bad. Other than, other than CJ, who needs a heal very much soon. Uh, let's see. There ain't, there ain't weak to bleed. But th again, this thing's a carrion eater. Well, fuck it then. They can only eat one of the corpses. Get the spider off the screen. Yeah, make, make corpses of us first. Justify my decision. Hey, uh, CJ, would you like some healing, my friend? A little help, impeccably timed. Dr. Beak, now is not the time for flirting. Maybe it is. Maybe for Dr. Beak, it's always the time for flirting. Hmm. Well... Well, CJ can't do a damn thing here, now can he? Clear the corpses, I guess. Four! What a great animation that is. Okay. Finally, the bleeding has subsided. <laughs> For eight rounds in a row, Lin has been bleeding. What a trooper. Yeah, pulverize away. Not like CJ's gonna have to go again in this round. Ideally, he ideally won't have to go. Oh, he is. Oh, it's gonna be CJ finishing things off. He's weakened. He takes more damage. Oh, he's got less resistance to everything. It couldn't be anyone else finishing off this round of spider madness. Here, while we're here. Lynn have a healing salve. Gar 
garbage. Are you kidding me? I do so love Death's Door. It means I get to draw out the torture on my enemies. Bastards. Straightforward and effective. Unfucking believable. Unfucking believable. The translation of those spider enemies to 3D is petrifying to someone with arachnophobia. I, I, I have no idea how to describe how they hit exactly the wrong notes. It's the way their legs wobble, which doesn't happen to real spiders, but does in video games. Uh, it's the giant ass, the spindly legs that they stand up on top of, the mandibles twitching. It's, it's all of these elements that spiders don't really have in real life because they're quite small. They're quite small such that you wouldn't even notice if they did do that. They don't wobble drunkly. But in video games, they're animated. They're, they're terrifying creatures in video games. In video games, they feel like an arachnophobe sees them in the real world. That is why spiders as a pet I do not approve of. Glad you made that choice. It ain't one I made. The loathing festers. It sure does. The loathing sure as hell does fester. I didn't even check that trinket I was so mad at that fight. Fuck that. Fuck every video game that includes spiders. Like, I I don't know what to say. Like, the, there are games like uh, Neo, for example, which include common fears like centipedes and millipedes correctly, and then spiders incorrectly, on purpose to trigger arachnophobia in people. It is a pathetic gesture by video game developers looking to scare in the cheapest possible way. I don't approve of the inclusion of spiders as an enemy type in video games because they are almost literally never done in a unique way. They are the orcs of, of the insect world, essentially. They are the same everywhere they appear. <laughs> Thank goodness I was able to collect some congealed slime. We're gonna need to heal the stress after that. I'm gonna need the pipe weed. I'm gonna need the pipe weed. Not CJ. He caught the oozes from that nonsense and it locked itself. Oh god. What a creature den. What a game souring creature den. <laughs> it tried. It really tried. God damn it tried, but we made it through. The game just tried to make me quit. Do you understand what I'm saying here? The uh, I was literally an hour earlier into the stream, all of the stream the other day, saying that this game completely mystified me, talking about how its changes in systems completely turned me around on something I was initially a little bit negative on. And then I discover that one of the changes that they didn't make is one of the more insensitive ones. And it's like, fuck! All those compliments that I gave you still apply, but I don't believe in them anymore. Because it's like... You paid attention to the gameplay, and not the audience? That's how I feel about spiders and all... Oh, on all video games, but that's fine. We move on. We persevere. That is what I'm saying directly to the developers is you tried actively just now to get me to quit your video game. Why did you do that? That is how I feel about the, the one room full of 30 spiders in Bloodborne. The beautiful Why did you make me want to stop playing? Intentionally. I don't understand it. Undone. It's madness. Get these cultists out of here. They're the ones that are summoning the spiders. Ugh, oh, they look like they would, too. These look like guys that would love spiders, honestly. And not just as pets, I mean. See, having a spider as a pet, I can understand. Because it's just, it's, it's like any other creature that you put in a terrarium. But the cultists, they probably have spiders that they just let roam around their house. You better stoke the forge of battle. 
Oh, who are we letting have the taunt? Who gets the taunt on these jerks? Oh, it's gotta be Lin. For our honor, indeed. Amorous, baby! Our heart still beats. Desire will never die. You and me, Lin! Let's do it! Oh, that's exactly what I was hoping for. That's fun. All right, assholes. I've been saving this for you. Nice dodge. Helped you real. Oh, it helped you a whole lot, didn't it? Just slid right over to the back. Where you belong. Look at him. I love how... I love how often... How sheer often they get to move. They just jump to the front. It's like a hint. It's like they're giving me a hint on who to target first. The jackass with the bagpipes. Anxiety forms insidious fears. Ugh. My dark disquiet, as they say. Now that is an eerie harmony. Hey, Harold. See you later. I'm gonna guess that, uh, that guy was Harold the Herald. I say was. Emphasis on was. Now, this is where the yop comes in handy. So, let's see. We've got... These two folks here, these two, these two folks here aren't too big a deal. So I could move Lynn to the front and then have her strike this guy down on the next turn with her uh, Iron Swan. Have someone else soften him up like Audrey first. Yeah, all right. Well, well, hold on. Let me check CJ. What do I have equipped on CJ? Can he use everything from second? Not purge, but that's okay. He can use everything else. Get that dodge off of this jerk. <laughs> Never mind. He wasn't gonna dodge it anyway. Guess he had no plans. Here you go, Lin. A calculated generosity. But a welcome one nonetheless. I'd rather you than me. Let's see. All right, pretty much everybody is gonna get a move now, so CJ, let's go. Once again, all eyes on me. And Audrey is in stealth, actually. I could have used it on her there, but at the start of this turn, she got uh, at the she got it at the start of this turn, not the end of the last one. Excellent work. Watch this. Dr. B ought to, ought to be able to plague grenade that fella now. Unless... No, oh, very close! He's gonna last two more rounds, but I'll leave him alone. Let's focus on these guys instead. I ain't doing what I did last time. You may recall, last time versus the cultists, I left these guys for too long. Far too long. Stressful, but it's okay. We've got the pipe weed for that. Yeah, guaranteed crits, yada yada. The slow suffering begins. Again, I'm used to bleeding from every orifice. Try me, motherfucker. Ignore him, he's dead in two turns. Hey, you! I was gonna miss anyway, I'm a leper. My accuracy is only second to how often I get blinded and can't move. Mm. Angry crit, but not bad. Now, CJ can heal himself here, but I don't think it heals his bleed. I think he's still going to be bleeding. This one going away? Nah, crap. All right. Here we go, CJ, have it. 
bandage yourself up. We're the bandage crew. Two out of our four members just decked out in more bandages than a Final Fantasy character has belts. Lin, I'm not ready to relinquish you, I guess. According to him, anyway. <laughs> Let's see. That's cute. I won't let you go. Not yet. That was a hell of a heal, too, CJ. Nice. Ah, what a shame. I can't, I can't yop them. You know what? It would be worth it to try and yop them, I think, because that'll get rid of their dodge. All right, Lin, give it a, give it your best shot. Give us a barbaric roar. Damn. Pretty good. I mean, they resisted it, but not bad. That was guttural. He's he's going down on the next turn anyway. That ain't too good of a bleed. Let's just oh we can't. Okay, well, ain't too good of a bleed, but it's the best we got. Or light rather. Haste and carelessness. All marks of the unprepared. All marks of dummies who go out and hug lepers. Like, what if he was just more personal? What if he was a real douchebag about it? Just a complete jerk. Just uh, absolutely no sense of compassion, despite somehow being more hopeful of a person this time around. Well, I say person, but he, uh... That's stretching it for the uh, narrator slash ancestor. Yeah, I know! How you liking Death's Door, jackass? Uh. You know, despite not being the flagellant, I sure am taking a lot of damage still. How their blood shines on you. D damn. Thanks, Lin. I think. I guess the Hellion would be interested in that. She's like a vampire. A brilliant conclusion. 26 damage crit! Oh, CJ was inspired by that one. Ah, oh, screw this. A little help impeccably timed. I don't know. Audrey, who would you rather murder? You have a chance to kill one of them. One less obstacle in our path. Wow, and of course he survived the bleed. What are you, me? I'm the only one around here that can bleed for an extended period and survive. Animus grows in proportion to mounting pressure. Listen, Doc, you gotta protect who you care about. We'll let Dr. Beat get a little jealous. Once again, that's what we have the pipe weed for. Okay, well that's cultists defeated, and we didn't get a cultist trinket from that. Thanks, game. Only the Dark Impulse. Which is just base fire resist, which ain't great on its own. That one's nice, though. That one's the death blow resist I was talking about earlier. Mickey Mouse voice, a secret tool that will help us later. Haha. <laughs> the loathing abates. And that will not be a problem. I like Dr. Beak's assessment. Intriguing specimens, but better off dead. Uh, cause we've got yet another cultist encounter directly incoming. Another one, we get to fight more cultists. Like you, you thought that battle went on for a while. I got good news. We get to do it a second time. Who am I giving these to? Because I am taking that death blow away from those uh, Nocturne fellas. They are not allowed to have that anymore. Those weird, gribbly, half botanical squid men. Maybe they're completely squids, and that's just like a human trench coat they're wearing, like they're trying to sneak into a movie theater. I don't know. It's okay to let people get stressed out. We have this congealed slime that I stole from the spiders. I, I guess the slime was just the, you know, 
the droppings when I encountered them, if you know what I mean. What I left behind. We're good, I think. I think we're good. Fuck those spiders, man. Fuck that. Oh my god. Just unbelievable. Every time. Every time, man. I should have seen it coming. The cobwebs. I really should have seen it coming. I won't dwell on it, though. Because we're never going to encounter them again. If the game asks me if you're a creature, then I'm just going to ignore it. That's one candle of hope that we ain't lighting. Now, we got candles to snuff out. We got no time to panic. These guys, they're lighting their stupid blue cultist candles everywhere. You know, those ones that are all ethereal and kind of cooler looking than yellow candles? Well, fuck those blue candles. I step on those blue candles. I collect their wax in a jar. What if that's Reynald? What if Reynald ascended to the position of Cherub? And that's why he's able to read you the rights like Reynald always did back in the day. Ah, oh, I wish. I wish Reynald were here. If only, right? Well, forget it. Wow! Cut through his dodge and the bleed. Nice work, Lin. The team is holding it together. They're stressed. They're stressed, but holding it together. Now this time, this time I want to focus on the altar and the cherub first. We don't want our heroes here to freak out. I said a little stress is okay. Like I said though, for now, we'll just let these evangelists do their thing. It sucks, but there ain't much we can do about it. Again, there ain't much we can do about it. Perfect. That was the one thing that we actually could do about it, was stun these two assholes and move them to the front. Never mind. This cultist fight may be a little easier than the last one. The altars are what I would call a blight. And hell. Hell yeah, you want me strong and healthy. Minmo! Cat foods Minmo! Thing is, it's stunned, so it can't use Azoic End. Yeah, oh, and it, of course it's a big old coward, so it went stealth, but that's fine. Not like it can move anyway. Oh, see you later, kid. That's the first baby I've successfully murdered on this live stream. Let's see. And that is something I tend to do, isn't it? That that kind of is something I tend to do. We could just kill it. We could just kill the damn thing. The thing is, I'm probably going to miss. I'm probably going to miss. So I'll use Audrey. Because Audrey won't. How's your accuracy, Audrey? 100% hit? Yes, indeedy. How do you feel about it? Oh, she feels good Another at that. She's a dead eye for a reason. With impunity. Oh, yes. Let's see. Break his block. Check it out. What I was attempting there actually pulled through. Because I made CJ have minus one speed with his various trinkets, he goes last, which means he goes first. So technically, right now, CJ is setting up for the next round. Because everyone else is going to go before he does. So whoever goes... No, oh, I missed. You got to hit him to get rid of the defense. Darn it. I was about to say something really cool, like whoever goes first gets to deal 
the most damage and all that or whatever like he he who acts fastest or uh, something cool but i don't i kind of beefed it a little i'll just hit this thing in its stupid face now that death blow resist how long does that last it does one damage i'm sorry they still have five percent after that god damn it I mean, it'll bring him to death's door. That's the thing is, if you exhaust it to zero, I bet they just die. But he's got 5% resist. So I bet he's still gonna drop to death's door and then have to have it take effect. Yup, I knew it. Oh, cultists. Who doesn't love them? The slow suffering begins. Me, I don't love them. I've got the oozes, which makes sense with my leprosy. If that other guy was in front, I could use Purge on him, but sadly, I kind of have no choice. Yeah, this will get rid of his dodge at least. Yeah, go for it. Oh, of course, he's the only one that gets to go. What a jerk. Although, then again, He's not going to get to perform a second action. Dodge this. Oh, that was fun to say. That was kind of fun to say. I've wanted to say that to someone in a video game ever since I have played The Matrix. Watch The Matrix, you know what I mean. You know why I just said played? Is because when I was younger, I used to love going over to a friend of mine's house to play I think it was a oh god was it a GameCube game oh there was a Matrix game that was so excellent it was so utterly excellent and so so very underrated well I could count on him dying from the blight but I'm gonna not do that err on the side of caution there's a 95% chance he survives and that's too much for me What is that game called, that Matrix game? Defective. Had a whole bunch of fun cheat codes to let you go to the dojo, and I don't remember if there was co-op in it, but there sure as hell should have been if there wasn't. I just remember you could bust through walls, and you just... It was complete Matrix mayhem. Stra John Woo Stranglehold meets Max Payne meets moves from the Matrix, where you can dodge bullets with a hotkey. Was it, was it just called Enter the Matrix? I see. I thought it had a subtitle, but maybe it didn't. I remember, the reason I ask for clarification is because I think there's a bad one. I think there's a bad Matrix game. I just don't know. Oh, great. A Blight Dark Impulse. Yeah, I'd love it. I'll put it right on CJ, who gets Blight opportunities at the start of every turn. He'll just randomly become Blighted. Stress himself out all the time. Oh, wait, that's... That's kind of real, actually. Well, great job, everyone. There's no loathing to abate this time. A sunrise at last. We, we kicked ass. I mean, the loathing's ass, specifically. Trinkets. I don't think we need a second dark impulse, thank you. And we hardly ever are on fire. <clears throat> it's going to happen more frequently now that I'm getting rid of the Blight one, I'm sure. But I'll keep that because this one's interesting. More damage, less max HP. We could give that to CJ, this combo, and just stack damage on CJ. Or Lin. Oh boy, it would be good on Lin. Four to eight, because I've got, you know, the lepers got six to 16, but a 50% a chance to miss. And plus Hellion has quite a bit of HP to start off. It's either her 
or Audrey. But I like the combo we've got going with Audrey's cape, even though I haven't had to use it yet. Haven't gotten a chance, really, advantageously, to cloak her, but it'll arrive someday, and it'll be invaluable when it does. Uh, fuck that one. I've now, I've since learned that you want to keep from being moved at all times. You always want to keep from being moved. We don't need to fill all of our trinket slots. We do, though, have a chance here to fill up these because we're about to hit an in. There we go. Now go, my friends. Let's try not to go insane before we reach the inn. It's five leagues away. Lynn, it's five leagues away! Oh. Never mind. I feel better now at the very least. One step closer to the edge. And I'm about to break. There are yet places such as this where a little light still gathers. We've done it. We've done it, everybody. We made it to the Nomad's Wagon. Ooh. Hey, if we want to stock up on trinkets, this is the place. And thanks to our congealed slime, everyone is basically stress-free now. Thank you, my good man. Thank you for holding a candle out for hope. Literally holding a candle out. Yeah, I got the oozes, all right. Lynn gained a quirk. Kleptomania. <laughs> Klep kleptomania from the Nomad's Wagon. Listen, as long as all you take is chapstick and lipstick tubes, no one will ever know. Pill for a lighter, it's fine. We need it. Shroud Scrounger. Oh, if the shroud's available, that's where we're going. Audrey's all tuckered out. Only at half HP, though. Only when she's at half HP. And there we are. We've made it. We made it to the end. So. Oh, no. That's only... this. That's right. This only counts as the first inn. The next inn is the one we need for the Wanderer path to be unlocked. That's right. Unless... Unless that's just because I didn't have it selected before. And that is what this means. This... No, I remember what this is. This is our, I can't believe we actually did that with all the fights we got into. We actually managed to get in less than six combat encounters with all of the fighting we did on that long, horrible road. Way to go, team. It may have been exactly six. With all the waves of cultists we fought, hell yeah. Way to go, everybody. I will take those candles. Every little bit helps. Okay. Now. We also came away with a lot of mastery points because, well, there was the creature den. Sad. Sad that those give mastery points because they're quite easy ones. They're quite easy mastery points. Sad that they contain the fucking spiders. Like, for most people, that won't be a problem. But for us, streaming the game, it's a bit of an issue. <laughs> a little bit. But one we can solve. That's why this game's got branching paths. Is because if you know what's coming, and you don't like it, they're not forcing you to go there. Here. Let's load up. Conventional fare. But fairly priced. Trinkets are half price. I have no baubles! Oh, that's what I get. That's what I get for trusting the hoarder, isn't it? Look at all those trinkets. Look at that. It's discounted to 35. A legendary fire resist trinket, a legendary blight resist trinket, and I can't have either of them. That's what I get for trusting the hoarder, I suppose. All right. We need to do some fixing here. Now our cast, our cast has started to, well, not too bad actually. They were losing a few points with one another. Lynn and CJ are still 
a thing. Dr. Beak, Audrey making friends with Lynn. And everybody else, everybody else, they started to lose a few points because uh, we had to fight like 18 cultists in a row, give or take. I didn't, I stopped counting after the fourth that I killed. Dartboard, want to risk it? Three quarters of a chance to become closer friends. Hell, who's not far along? Dr. Beak and I. Well, I, I guess Dr. Beak and I don't stand to lose much. Although, wait, we're not really the best ones to play darts, are we, she and I, given what we're wearing? Although maybe that means that the leper always has narrowed focus. This mask obscures my vision, so... <laughs> I'm playing on hard mode, baby, I guess. Okay. Stun resist till the next in. We'll save those till we find out where we're going. But first, we got our pipe weed. Lynn, Lynn, I would love to share some pipe weed with you, but I ain't stressed out at all. You're sharing that with someone else today. How about... Dr. Beak? Dr. Beak can't quite handle her smoke, which is quite funny, given the type of character that she is, but that's okay. We'll get her used to it along the long, lonesome road that we were talking about. We're the only four that we have for company. Peacemaker. Lynn just got a skill called Peacemaker. What's that? 30% positive banter. That's accurate to the real woman. Le the real Lynn is good at bants. All right. Let's see. What else we got to use? Fire resist? We got the whiskey here, but that's got a lower chance of making friends. I don't know. Dr. Beak and Audrey. I'm thinking Audrey's. <laughs> Dr. Beak and Audrey? We, we shared the last drink. You can share this one. Oh, it burns! Ah, oh, oh, they took a hit from it. That's okay. They'll make it up to one of, they'll, they'll make it up to one another by being blight bros. Here, who has the least stun resist? It's kind of important we give that to CJ, isn't it? We'll also give one to Dr. Beak. Oh boy, CJ. CJ, I gotta say your burn resist sucks. Oh, oh, but being amorous means he has a fire in his heart. I love it. He's immune to, he's, he's resistant now that he's found love, the leper. Well. We'll put the stun resist on, on he and Dr. Beak, because they're, uh, they're, they're arguably the most important. Dr. Beak, because she heals people, of course. Myself, because, well, uh, 33 damage critical hit is pretty much all I need to say. Who's got fire resist? It ain't me. I ain't no fortunate son. But, uh, well, but you think he would have a lot of natural fire resist, given that he has no flesh to burn off. That's actually what he just said. He just said, not much left to burn, really. He knows. Sorry about that, CJ. That feels weird to apologize to myself. I should do that more. Here, Dr. Beak. No, we'll give that to Audrey for the ranged skills. No, we'll do better. We'll give it to Lynn so that she can yop at the start of the round and weaken everything before it has a chance to move. I can feel the blood rush. Hell yeah, Lynn. All right, uh, combat items are good. Stage coach. Each improvement, a new variable in the equation of your fate. Now this is an interesting one for sure. 
we did we we did actually get quite rich but if i take this off of the wagon hmm oh no that's not the stacking one now is it Scheisse. let's see if we can go to the shroud the provinces and camp tribes of our land crumbling and undone ah no such luck no such luck sadly Huh. This one's interesting. A path through the tangle. Cut down more skeletons. We can head to the sprawl. Hey, look, it's the foreclosure notice again. Yeah, no thanks. Clear out the lair. I say again, same answer. More cultist battles, huh? An additional flame drain which means stopping at assistance encounters the sluice is a free zone FYI really is it thank you that's something I would not have thought of that's something I would not have thought to ask I interesting I suppose if you want to extend your run you can go to the sluice interesting I haven't yet been there. We could try that. This could get us all killed. Let me take a look at my, uh... Let me take a look at our heroes here. That was only the first leg of the journey. We've got one more to go. And unlike the other Darkest Dungeon, they don't level up per mission they go on, for example. You know, they don't naturally gain more damage from leveling up from XP anymore. So their damage and stuff is static. Let me see if I can assemble some supplies. If I can if I can gather some supplies, we'll do it. I think there are two folks on our team I haven't given the bread to. Well, I have to buy the pipe weed. Of course I have to buy the pipe weed. Oh. A bit of comfort on the road to damnation. Oh, wow. That is really having an effect. The, um, uh, what we've got in our wagon. The assay gear. Why, what, assay? What are we assaying? What is, what is assaying? Is assaying when you go to something awful? That's a dead gay comedy for him. You can't do that. Only I post there. Let's see. Something to ease the rigors of the road. Load up on bread. Load up on bread, everybody. Jam and honey. Oh, Audrey's got refined taste. Oh, good for her. Lynn, Lynn and Audrey, one of a kind. One of a kind. The bread soaks up the wine. I'm gonna make them better friends. I'm gonna make Lynn and Audrey better friends because they're only two pips away. I hope they- I hope they're amorous too. I hope Lynn ends up being our lovemaker. Do I have- Do I have anything that could turn her into a matchmaker? Oh, I do. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Songbook of touching dirges, everybody. You're stress-free. One more. You can go into the next dungeon with one stress, can't ya? You're all gonna love each other after this. Sing a song of merriment end of the passage of time. So ennui, basically. Aspiration unites the hopeful. Yeah! Heart still beats. Desire will never die. This one is for you, Lynn. Lynn, you are now amorous with both myself and Audrey, and hopeful with Dr. Beak. Everyone loves you, Lynn. Everyone. Hell yes. And everybody else is well on the way. Time to go to the sluice and see it all fall apart. <laughs> I'm excited. 
I don't know what to encounter. I don't know what we're going to encounter. Perhaps I should spend the rest of my money anyway. Obviously, the mastery trainer we've yet to stop at. Oh, right. The restorative herbs. I forgot about that. Always forgetting those restorative herbs. Hmm. Not a lot. There's not a lot, honestly. I will buy one single Molotov. No, I won't. I'm going to save my money. The, uh, the thing is, he's not offering too much in the way of bandages, anti-venoms. You know, the things that we stack more of in our fucking wagon. Damn you, game. I'll take the extra inventory slots then if we're going to the sluice. Your academic instincts serve you well. There might be a forced creature den. Yeah, but see, I've just noticed there might be a forced creature den on any path through the game. What I was saying earlier about how I can just use the maze to avoid creature dens, well, I, it could be a question mark, and I missed a scouting chance. It, it could be on a path that I can't deviate from. I, I've just kind of accepted that spiders are a part of this game, sadly, and it is what it is. <laughs> It's extra mastery points is what it is. I'm gonna hold on to this book. I have faith. I have faith that we will run into the shroud before the end of this. How proud of you. Well, that's the thing is I say it unironically too. I, I say it completely unironically. It really is exposure therapy. It doesn't work on me in real life. Believe me, I've tried. But damn, in a video game, I eventually got used to the spiders in Bloodborne that have human heads and scream at you. The red ones with the stretchy arms that do an AoE, though, those ones I never got used to. Experience, however painful, is the greatest teacher of all. God, see? Exposure therapy. Even he believes in it. We've got four mastery points. I'm thinking beak. I'm thinking beak. See, we've already got... We've, we've already got a couple of fellows here who can absolutely kick ass on the front lines. So Dr. Beak hitting the back lines with Audrey is a good idea, I think. Got that dead eye for a reason. Okay, so now, so now Audrey, if she stealths, can also throw her dagger to ignore their buffs, which is awesome. So if that clandestine cape triggers on her, or hell, I may turn on dead of night. Whoa. Dead of Night applies for two turns if you upgrade it. That's quite good. I'm looking to see if we can start off any target combos on enemies. Iron Swan. Iron Swan would be good for the one at the very, very back. It looks like blinding gas is about all we have. Gas, as they say. Okay. We'll put blinding gas back on Dr. Beak. I don't know what we're taking off of Dr. Beak to do that. Maybe ounce of prevention. This sluice seems like a really miserable place wherever we're going, uh, but that's okay. Brought a torch to light up the darkness down there. There we are. I'm just saying ounce of prevention seems like it probably would have come in handy. But this works too. Let's try the sluice, why don't we? Abandoned waterways. Home now to far worse than rats. 
Now, Lynn and I both can tell you, narrator, that there is nothing worse than a rat. Shall we go drown some? He did mention water. What a cathartic stream! On a personal level. Whoa! Tread carefully and quickly. This is swine country. Cue the event sevenfold. Hot damn. This whole place is shaped like the stress symbol. There's even a wheel up there that's stress symbol shaped. Good lord. Yeah, we gotta go for the cash first for sure. Cash before combat in this case. And I don't mean, I don't mean the monetary variety. Had the seat of our regrettable research. What do you, what do you mean the seat of it? Th wait, this is where it all began? This is the heart of darkness for the scholar and the narrator. The academics cash down here. Oh, it's so, oh, it's lovely. Look at that. Back when I was an academic and he was not yet an ancestor because I assume he hadn't gotten busy yet and had me. Man, what a, I wish Dismas were here because this is a hell of a dismal place. Ah! Foul thing. Yeah, I'm with Lynn. Look at CJ over there immediately going insane. Mountains and valleys formed by the dance of sun and moon. What are you, where do you think you are, idiot? Bloodborne? Ah, shit. This is kind of a lover's quarrel for Lynn and CJ here. What do you think? Worth a little flame drain? And CJ going mildly crazy? While I'm here, hey Wazen, hey Grimlock Master, welcome, welcome my friends. Of course. <laughs> They're gonna take a relationship hit either way, aren't they? All right. Off guard. Scavenge what you can, and be off once more. Off guard is a very bad one for Leper. Last time I ever listened to the chat suggestion. Try as it might, the sun cannot match the moon. I'm with CJ on that, honestly. I fancy myself a night owl. Oh, crap. What actually did off guard do? Yeah, so, combat start, stun... Oh, 15% chance to weaken? Good lord. I wanted him to go last anyway, but now he's really gonna go last. The man couldn't get any slower. My god, and... My god, and what do we even get out of it either? Look at that. Nonsense. Nothing. Nothing but madness. I told you this is why you don't touch bookshelves in Darkest Dungeon. You saw that bookshelf earlier? I listened to Dr. Beak. Okay, I've got bad news. We've missed the desperate few. The, the These, I assume, were once the desperate few. Oh, and they're still desperate. It's just a different kind now. I could just hit the bastard. I do like to just hit him. Well done. Hey, hey! That's... The power of hope. Thank you, Dr. Beak. Oh yeah! Lynn has started to shout battle cries at our foes. Here, here, Audrey, try out that thrown dagger. <laughs> A simple solution. I'll just cancel that lady's turn and her bank account too while I'm at it. Send her debts to her next of kin. It's okay, they're not liable. Remember, if you die, your next of kin are not liable for any of your living debts. 
That's why they're called living debts. That's why they're called standing debts. They're called standing debts because they no longer stand when you die. Or when you sit down. I should really stop taunting the enemies because I'm just gonna end up weak on every turn. Have you noticed that? Every single turn that I taunt the enemies, I end up stunned. Oh, a leg of roast beasts, you say? That sounds delicious. Uh, well, but in this world, not really. Given the beasts of this world, I actually take that back. The past is gone. Let it die. Damn right. Trying every day, my friend. Broken mirror by broken mirror. Ugh. Oh, thanks for the slime mold pile of skulls. That's appetizing, all right. Your path lies through them. And so they must fall. Warren! I have to fight Warren? THE Warren? <laughs> I like how the whole entrance is shaped like the stress symbol. The whole thing. Oh, and it's covered in torches, but none of them are the ho none of them are the hope torch. None of them have that little V shape. It's just madness. Oh, there's one. Kinda. There's kinda one. Oh, god damn it. Warren's about to- Warren is about to steal all my money. He's about to steal my money! Here we go. I knew it. I knew it was pigmen. Oh, hell. What's the relationship here? Oh, man. They've already lost a few points. As good as it would be to have the enemies vulnerable at the start of the battle, I don't know if I want to take the relationship hit. See, because see, uh, uh, Lynn and Dr. Beak are already at maximum, you know, they're already at maximum uh, affinity. I will skip the vulnerability on that one. The vulnerability lies in my heart on this one. Look at me over there on the right. I just don't like this at all. I'd rather get the hell out of here. But, but I have to fight the pigmen. I have to see what it's like before they throw a boss at me. Ugh. No, oh, they're like Skaven in pig form. Yes. Lin just resisted the bleed and got a guaranteed crit. Oh, I hope it hits. Lynn, I hope whatever you are about to do is gonna hit these motherfuckers. Not too weak to bleed. Weak to getting uh, boop, uh, booped in the snoot, as they say, though. We'll just get rid of those dodges. No, I said get rid of them. Ragged hook. No, no. It's Red Hook. Red Hook is the name of the studio. Uh, hey, you need to, you need to cut that out, my friend. Out of stealth, you go. Early results are encouraging. Oh, he didn't actually move backwards. Son of a! Scream into the wind with me. That's a very Lin-like statement. That's Lin as hell. I know the woman. Okay, well, there is essentially nothing CJ can do here. I've got great news, CJ. Take a break, buddy. Yeah! Okay, so this is interesting. They are all stealthed. But Audrey can hit them, because she also is stealthed. <laughs> that guy in the back is sticking around, I think. I think that guy in the back is probably staying. I could clear the corpses. Well, there's only one. All right. 
to the front lines with you, Lin. Toe to toe. Like David and Goliath, as they say. If you're into pop punk. All right. Well, we'll just blind and gas them. <clears throat> Again, through the holes in the helmet. That worked. That actually really worked. Oh, boy. This... Oh, what? What do you mean? I can't hit him. Oh, oh, it doesn't ignore his, I see. It doesn't ignore his uh, stealth. It just ignores his, uh, I, guess, I guess his dodge. Crap. Okay. That's also fine. He can't stay stealth forever. I guess I'll just hit someone else in the meantime. Uh... Light, perhaps? I don't know. This is my first encounter with pigmen in this video gaming experience. A slow dissection. They don't like it. They're not fans. An unavoidable end. Rather leave his combo until I can actually take his life from him, you see. That's the thing, is I really would like to take his life. Please. Yeah, whatever, you can have it. I let him have it, as in he could just take my sword. I mean, look at the thing. Again, it's a... It's not a buster sword, it's a bust. It doesn't even get as far as the Earth sword. It would need to go further into the screen. Well, hell. You can't actually do the thing I was gonna have you do here, which was Iron Swan. That's okay, though. You can just hit this guy. For about as much Take damage. Much and do not relent. I didn't plan on it. Thank you. You mean like that? Is that what he means? To not relent? Because I could keep that up all day. I didn't even have to go. An inkling of potency still lingers in some of these well-worn relics. You know what I like about that statement? Is that it could apply to the relics that we've just found, the enemies that we fought, or our characters. I like that. I like that that could apply to anybody in that situation. After all, that's what we are. We're heroes of old, you know, from Darkest Dungeon 1. I love it. Random ally on turn start adds one positive token? But if your flame is low, you just have less resistance to everything. Huh. This wakey wakey, huh? Interesting. Well, I'm probably not gonna have the flame very high. I don't have any items to manually ignite the flame, so I'll just keep that in my back pocket, but I'll remember I have it, thank you. The loathing whispers. As it should, in the dark. That's the thing, is pretty soon the dark is going to learn to fear me. It just doesn't know any better yet. We have to teach it first. So general healing items seem better. Because though they do blight and bleed, and these don't cure blight or bleed, whatever. If I heal the blight or bleed, the enemy's just gonna do it on me again. Or some other jackass in the group is. So I'll leave them with their salves and their Tabasco sauce for now. What is the flame at? 63. Yeah. We are we this is an uh this is in a way for saving until the next region where the flame will be restored to 100 at the start. This is for getting a good start at the beginning of the next region, basically. Now that is interesting. That's very interesting. An elementary well, problem. Is it not? I see that creature den over there. Fuck you. Not this time. I'd ra Look, everyone would rather take the combat. CJ! CJ, what are you doing, you traitor? 
Did you see Dre? Did you see Dre? These rancorous beasts have some demonic spark of otherworldly intelligence. Well, then let's snub it out before they evolve. I'll, gr I'll gladly go back to the war and over going to a creature den. Ugh. Cuts, bruises, victory. That's not something I'd ever say, but it is a fact of life. Lynn, once again, sees the vulnerability of pigs as something she's pretty good at. Dr. Beak, Dr. Beak is the one that wants to peace out this time. Learned your damn lesson, huh? Ah, hell. Who can Dr. Beak take a personality hit with? Lynn, Lynn. They, they restored their relationship, so this is good. Oh, this is good. We get to charge into battle. Let's do it then. Sorry, Dr. Beak. For once, we get to listen to our gut and not our heart. Oh, because their hearts are the ones that are weak for once. That's a lot of bleed resist you got there, my friend. Only three enemies here. I'm wondering if I should move Lin to the front first. You could try and deal with the guy that doesn't have a dodge, but I bet you what he's going to do is skitter. You know what? He's going to put himself in stealth, isn't he, this jackass? Hey, you! Before you get any chance. Ah, crap. That's fine. If you skitter, the only guy that can go is your bowman. Yeah, talk about a stuck pig. Good lord. Stick him six feet underground for doing that. Hey, what a dick. Oh my god. Use that last healing salve from Dr. Beak there. There, Dr. Beak's inventory is empty again. I've been waiting for that. All right, screw this guy. Don't even give him a chance to move. Now, whether he skitters, he's gonna die. But aren't we all eventually? I mean, who doesn't love kicking in the ennui early? Ah, damn. Audrey, stealthed. I can't believe it. A perfect condition for thrown dagger. <laughs> to perfect effect. <laughs> Well done, Audrey. You really are a dead eye. So this is what we've learned. This is what we've learned about listening to the chat. Is that uh, situationally, it could be quite, yeah, it could be quite enjoyable of an activity. All right. Let's go toe to toe. If he's gonna attack Audrey, Audrey will attack him right back. Because I don't think. And, oh, I can yop him. Ah, that's gonna remove his stealth too. Or not? This is no time to falter. Oh, okay. Well, he he did away with his own stealth. Good for him. Decided to come out and face me. Bono with Slino. Aya! I say as I scream into the wind. The foul winds of this cave. Just barely. Just barely not enough health to heal her. If I let this go on for one more agonizing turn, I could. But I will. Now refuse. I outright refuse. There we go. Building our affinity back stronger. 
worth going here. And well, what do you know? We got a glimmer of hope and another rousing recorder. What? Okay, that could be kind of fun. That could be kind of fun. The loathing festers. I hope it does. That was easy enough. That was easy enough that I kind of... Hang on. Hey, Dr. Beak. Light our flame back up. Because, well, that's what the Glimmer of Hope does. And then... I wonder... I could give these to a couple of people. I guess it doesn't necessarily matter whom, does it? I guess for Beak and uh, Beak and Audrey, it's best because they're. Oh, hang on, Lynn is our fastest by far. Oh, right. She she has the buff from um, from the inn, but I can't take these off of her. This is the character class we've decided she has is to beat the ever-loving snot out of anything in her way. Boy, she is taking a lot of damage, though. I may want to take that off of her. We'll see after the next fight. Okay. Everybody else is good, I think. I, th I hope. I think. We haven't met anything with Deathblow yet, but then again, we haven't run into the lair, have we? Oh, God. Ooh, it is, it is somewhat hard to avoid the debris in here. All right, here we go. Now, once we reach Dr. Beak, we can light the room back up. Thankfully, do oh, Dr. Beat goes before any of the enemies, so we can light the room back up, and then we can feel the effects of those trinkets on the next turn. I don't know what it means by positive tokens, but maybe it's just a form of self-encouragement. Well, this stinks. Lady's at exactly the wrong spot. You know what? I'll have Lynn get her on the next turn. There we go. All eyes on her for a sec. <laughs> Flirting in the middle of battle. You can't flirt with people who are stealthed. You're gonna give her away. That's a Lynn thing to do though, again. Ah, almost one hit. You know what? A little bit of plague grenade in my life ought to that ought to solve that problem. Now, only one per turn? Really? Okay. Gone are the days. Gone are the days of just right clicking. There we are. And a little bit of light for this guy for the road. Ah. Nice protection. Just took that one right to my golden abs. Which, again, it's amazing how these characters, the Hellion and the Leper, mimic the real Lin and myself. <laughs> All right, uh, I shouldn't laugh at my own jokes because they have to be funny for me to do that. There we go. Oh yeah, Audrey's got speed. And stealth. That cape is kicking in. That cape is really kicking in. I don't need to have Lynn do what she was going to do now. Which was, you know, eliminate the one in last place there. Thing is, I want it to be Dr. Beak's turn so that I could use the lantern again, so. Now it'll Air on the side of caution. But effective. It's not messy. I don't see anything messy about it. I mean, all it left behind was a grave. 
Ah, uh, the game heard me there. The game was like, screw you. I'm ending this combat. Amidst the spoils, an artifact of unparalleled power. Uh, yes, in fact. What is that? Wait, that's the trinket that we were going to get for visiting that other area that I decided not to go to. The one that wanted us to do the lair, I believe. Hey, look, it's the bloodied branch for the Hellion. Uh, high damage to melee skills on a crit, but takes stress if she gets shoved to the back and has to move. And if it bleeds, does more bleed. Well, that's what I was hoping for. Hey, carrying on that, carrying on that flagellant legacy. The flatulent flagellant. As he was known among the camp in Darkest Dungeon 1. God rest his soul. In hell, but it's fine. He prefers to be there, actually. That minus 10% resistances wasn't so bad. That wasn't, that wasn't really so bad at all. Now this is, this is an interesting choice. We could get rid of 50% overall damage and trade it for additional damage on crit, but also more bleed. The only bleed skill she has right now is if it bleeds. 33%. That's only one more bleed from that skill. Hmm. But if the enemy is set up for a combo, it ignores their resistance now, so they will bleed. They will bleed! I wonder if that also affects the duration of the bleed. We could try it. We very well could try it. Because she's taking a lot of damage right now. And hey, look, that gave her some back. Because taking off the stained trinket, uh, re it restored her... It restored her max HP, and then deviated her current HP out as a percentage among the new maximum. Which is clever. That's a great way to do it. Rather than just having you eat the HP that you gain back like 99% of games do. Like, most games just have you eat that extra. But here, nah. Here they want to wring every little bit of blood out of the place, and I honestly don't blame them. I really don't blame them. Not one bit. Not one bleeding bit. Oh, everyone wants to fight today. Oh, yes. Nope, now it's Lin who wants to peace out. Whoa, what a complex interaction this is. Wow. Everyone's got feelings on this one. I assume at the end of this, there are still going to be cultists, though. Answer, answer this for me, chat, if you'd like. Are there cultists at the end of the sluice like there are on the main road? Do we have a mandatory cultist fight coming up? Or... A mandatory fight with some other swine I may know of from the first Darkest Dungeon. Because if there's a mandatory fight at the end of this, I'm going to perhaps be a little bit cautious. Because the loathing is going to disappear after we do that mandatory fight. If it is... Maybe I'll look this up myself, actually. Here. I can alt-tab out of the game now without muting it. Hmm. It seems we do have one coming. Yeah. We do have one coming, it seems. Oblivion's ingress is down here. Okay, great. Looking forward to it. Let's do it. I'll show where to strike. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
I I think we're gonna avoid this one gang I well, well I, I, I again Lin's logic is infallible so I think we'll think we'll all take the relationship hit here in the name of safety though I do like doing battle with bloody pigs we haven't met that big guy yet and I don't know if I want to supplies this way if you can make it ah crap I guess we've got no choice we've got no choice but to meet the big man it was waiting further up the road good news he's big enough to bleed a brilliant conclusion oh and he's got quite a belly to bleed from great blight resist on these guys which uh which is unfortunate yeah so this guy's name is swine brute so i have a feeling i should kill him first before any of the other members of the team here you go that ain't gonna do much damage have some blight we'll just let them skitter back there i'll i'll let them do what they will yourself son of a bitch Gotta keep that light up. Well, I did say I was just gonna let them do their thing, but... Setting them up to be miserable later also could help me. Let's see. Hey, you! What's your move resist? 50%? I probably can't move him. <laughs> Although I do have to wonder what he does. I have to wonder what he does if I somehow manage to get this gigantic pink orc to the back of the line. This is an orc. This is an orc that has dyed himself the colors of a man. This is no pig. Oh, he heard that. He's quite frustrated. Oh. Oh, and I do love that they're amorous, so they're protecting each other. And he's like... <laughs> Lin's over here like, you know what? That was a pretty good scream into the wind. There. Try screaming again. What's he taking? Ten? And he's got eight. And a hell of a lot of death blow resist. What a jerk. Absolute prick. No respect whatsoever. Because he's got he's got death blow resist. Sometimes you just get unlucky. And sometimes you get extremely lucky and pierce a thrown dagger through a metal chin plate. I've never even heard of a chin plate. I didn't know they needed one, but I guess they've got a lot of chins. I mean Look at the number he has. There's like one, two, like he's got folds upon folds. And then his folds go up if you look at him from the bottom. Just all of this, all of this man is just... It ain't something to look at. Let's see, let's stop looking at it. Mistimed, misdirected. Yeah, I was kind of hoping I would get him to death's door before he smashed us to pieces. I really wouldn't want him to do that anymore. Ow, my chest. No, I, CJ, that was the wrong time to take a dagger to the chest for your loved one. Take a, take a dagger to the chest for your loved one that isn't poisoned next time. Outta here, you. The work continues. I'm banking on this damage over time to get him. Banking on it. don't have too many folks left who can hit it from the back, so to speak. The swine, I mean. There you go, Lin. Have a heal. Have a pastry. No, that's not... Ah, oh, CJ. I mean, I'm sure she appreciates it, but... What are you, a nice guy? Get that corpse out of here so more people can hit it. The unrelenting yeah, the giant pig, I meant. Yields morbid gains. Oh, he was no, no. He was a corpse narrator. He just didn't know it yet. 
Well, ain't a whole lot I can do here. I don't really want to purge that big corpse because everybody else can hit row two. So, I guess just take a breather, CJ. Take a breather. Yes, indeed, autumn leaves. Compose a haiku and all of that. Jin Sakai over here. Meanwhile, Audrey's doing work. They falter, so press your advance. Consider it pressed. In this world, wealth is worthless without purpose. And some lovely playing cards to, once again, cause my team to argue at the table over plastic poker chips. Although, Kleptomania, huh, I may not be able to use this at all because Lynn has Kleptomania. We'll find out because we're making it to the end of the sluice. Absolutely. You there, Miss Beak. Have some death caps for so that that doesn't happen again. Well, I would hate for any enemy in the video game to defy my death blow. I grow so weary of this fight, says my CJ. And possessions bundled into this meager pile. <laughs> That's pretty great. I like that a lot that our caches are called the academic's cache and the narrator's old junk is called the swine's cache. Well, let's see if the swine prince is waiting inside. Uh, thanks for the slime mold. You know what? Hey, narrator was a cool guy. Our ancestor had some pipe weed on him the whole time. Your coach is laden. You can carry no more. You goddamn don't say. Look at that nonsense. Wow. We're rich, but I don't want to be. All right, let's take a look at what we put on Lin there. Additional fire resist at the cost of blight resist. Yeah, not here, thanks. This seems like blight central. I honestly think we can get rid of this trinket. The only other person that it would go well on is CJ, and CJ has a 50% chance to miss every fucking attack he does. The man really needs to open the eye hole slits in his mask. I'll just drop this on the ground. That's a pretty appropriate place for it. Honestly. Don't need that either, I don't think. If the sprawl shows up, we're not going there. It is bleed central to sprawl, but it's also flame central. Well, if we can't use these playing cards anyway, say la vie. Literally, say la vie to them. I don't know what. Yeah, I don't speak Russian, so I don't. Ah, you can't say that one anymore. I get. Uh, let me come up with a different language to say. Uh, German. There we go. I'll say I don't speak German now. I used to say I don't speak Russian, but, well, ever since playing the Stalker games. Let's see. I don't know. I've got a whole lot of items I've only got a single one of. Emil and Sweet don't need those necessarily. But if we are going to fight some cultists, I will bring a grenade. Here, who would like it? There we are. Those thunderclap grenades are just invaluable for cultists. I can't, I, I don't know. Shuffling their party so that the big guys are in the back is such an advantageous way to start. It really is. Drop this damn single bandage. We've got a medicinal herb anyway. Oh boy. We're coming to the sluice. We are, the sluice is like, Respite my God. What was that about respite being within reach? We're almost there somehow. 
Yeah, talk about hopeful. Maybe this ended up being more of a restock than I gave it credit for. Hmm. Well, I'll have to wait until they do that to yop. Once again, back lines first. We'll we'll let these gentlemen up front get their uh we'll let we'll let them get their cowardice on. Apparently they played Antiquarian in Darkest Dungeon 1 a lot. Frequent. Very frequent. How many times am I, am I going to take a knife to the chest for Lynn? Suffering strengthens the bond. I feel nothing, I shout. I, that's fine. I'll take as many knives to the chest as it takes. I was born in a dungeon. No hope. Escape. You cannot miss what you never see before. Oh, I need to play the surge again. I haven't played the surge since the let's play. I have just thought of that for the first time. Is that I haven't played the surge. Oh boy, that's a thought I've just had. I'll dwell on that thought later. That's a thought that's only important to me right now. But what a thought. Here you go, CJ. Free turn, buddy. No corpses to clear. I can't hit anybody. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. They're going to attack together somehow. Uh. Reveal. Yes! Oh, Lynn the matchmaker over here. Keeping the whole team together. Good for you. Alright, now these now these dickheads, before they can skitter again. A slow dissection. That was worth the yopping. An unavoidable end. Hell yeah, baby. That's what I'm good at. Line them up, knock them down. That seems to be kind of... Uh, uh, that seems to be the leper's thing. That's why he's holding his sword like a baseball bat. Someone else pitches him an enemy, and he swings the bat straight for the fences. Not ready to heal just yet. Not just yet. I bet he's gonna skitter. I bet he's gonna skitter, this jerk. You better not. You better not skitter. Don't you skitter. Also, stop cutting into my body. I need that. He did. Good for him. Pig, pig man or woman actually stood its ground. Good for whatever the hell it is. It's, it's hopefully led a long life because it's about to be over. That's one thing about yawping. Yawping adds it, it persists till the end of combat which is which is quite brutal there we go that's enough uh speaking of enough that is enough torture on my poor self-insert why don't you beat on lynn's self-insert for a little while huh <laughs> maybe i'll stop taking knives to the chest for her crap that's what I get for being the leper. These fellows are squirrely. They've managed to last for four entire rounds, and good for them. I am quite impressed. Scream into the wind with me sounds like a pretty good day, we really. Have a flame burning brightly for all the world to see. Damn right we are. And I. Agree. Screaming into the wind is a lot of fun. Very cathartic. You should try it sometime if you never have. It feels like you're fighting. You're fighting the wind with your voice. Scream into the wind. Oh man. I don't think we have to deal with cultists at the end of this one. Well, my God, how about that? Oh, that's ominous. The Roaring Heart does much for the weary body. 
Yep. Even more, perhaps, for the rest of the soul. Ah, the Keening Well. So gentle, so gentle of a tune. Once again, dirges. What is this? What's the item called? Songbook of Touching Dirges. What do you got, CJ? That seemed like a pretty horrible experience for you, taking bleeding poison daggers to the chest every couple of turns. Slayer of Swine. Good. If we go back to the sluice for some reason, I'll make them regret it. Lynn gained Deathless. Wow. 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 A permanent plus 5% HP heal at the start of every round. Congratulations, Lynn. That's damn good. That means Lynn is not coming off of Death's Door. Or going on Death's Door. I just... If Lynn ever goes on Death's Door at the start of the next turn, she'll automatically come back off of it. Yeah, nice melee skills, Dr. Beak. Well done. Audrey has a chance to just armor herself up. Ah, Christ. Oh, the loathing. Oh, the loathing's real bad. We didn't have to fight any cultists, so the loathing went up to four instead of three. Yikes. That means we're going to have to get in a lot of combat in the next area if, you know, we live that long. That was fun. I've never been to the sluice before. I guess the sluice is just sewers. It's just, uh, it's just swine. They gave them their whole own area to dwell in. I'll keep that in mind for next time. Lynn the Deathless. So far. Let's check everybody's relationships. I, I think we're all doing quite well with one another. Oh. Tensions are a little strong. Tensions are a little strong between Lynn and Dr. Beak. But I think I know how to fix that. This is worth doing. The Songbook of Touching Dirges. It's worth using, even though it'll stress everyone out. It'll keep their relationships in top condition. I won't let you get to the breaking point, my friends. Not this time. Song for the years I'll never see. Damn, CJ. Fuck, man. That's acceptance if I've ever seen it. CJ over there on the right, he doesn't need to experience breaking the shackles of denial he's already at the last stage of leprosy I mean but also of acceptance well Lynn and Audrey enjoy your pipe weed why don't you you could use it oh that was a great one from Audrey Audrey just so used to it just that ah it probably reminds her of her days of nobility in a somber way, a melancholy way. It is an escape for a lot of people from an abusive life. Let's see. Who would like to feast on slime mold today? Tasty. Utterly delicious. Ugh. Well, at least none of us caught dysentery. Well, that's once on this stream that things have changed. Here, who do we want to buff at the 20%? I could have given the 20% to CJ, but I feel like that would have been a bad idea. Check this out. It's actually a bad idea to give a character a lot more health than everyone else. Because think about this. If I give CJ a lot of health and then Dr. Beak dies, What's he going to do? The only thing CJ can do is self-heal himself with his giant health pool that will constantly get drained back anyway. It'll serve no purpose. So I try to keep everybody a little evenly spread. Just a little. Well, I got good news for you, CJ. You've already got the oozes. Whiskey flask? Yeah, here, buddy. You're going to need that. I'm bringing it in the stagecoach with me. 
share it with Lynn. Well, share responsibly, my friends. Let's see. Well, CJ, it's not like you can catch another disease, so I guess this one's going to... This one's going to Lynn. Here you go, Lynn. Have some candle wax. We'll just dip that in your ears. Much unclean prey in these wastes. Oh, that's great. That's confidence on her part right there. Much unclean prey. Good for you. Again, unshakable. It's like the real thing. It's like the real thing has joined us for this. All right. Let's see. Got a couple of mastery points. Experience, however painful, is the greatest teacher of all. Yeah, who needs tranquility when you can just experience beige? Right. So, Dr. Beak is currently the only one that can set enemies up for fear. So let's take a look at how many... We can execute a combo on. Audrey. Audrey can do combos, but hers are mostly crit damage. Huh. This one might behoove me. This one honestly might behoove me. Keep CJ from ever getting fucking moved again. That, that's, and, and it gives him the uh, 75% defense instead of the 50%. See, what, what'll happen is if I have Lin in first position and CJ in second position and Lin gets moved backwards, she won't go anywhere unless my resist uh, move also fails. It has to move everybody in the line. I think. I don't think it just shuffles. I think someone has to resist. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't work that way. But either way, it's kind of important to keep him in place. Because if CJ gets knocked out of position, he's fucked. Oh. Oh, his self-heal actually gets quite good. We'll, we'll give that a shot. Just so that I don't have to waste Dr. Beak's poison on the last ranks. Specifically to heal CJ anymore. Yeah, no point in that, huh? Although, <laughs> that's a stupid fun one. We may get some use out of Iron Swan. Why not? We have a mastery point left over. Iron Swan is now going to inflict fear upon the last enemy. So if Audrey is next, she can then throw a dagger at them on the same turn. Oh, yes. Now, precious relics remind us of a time before the end. My friend does not apply here. I am filthy rich for the moment. I won't get greedy about it, but filthy rich indeed. Everywhere in ruin. Finally! Everywhere in need. It is the shroud. It is finally the shroud. I knew it would show up sometime. 15% damage to everything in the shroud if we stick that on the wagon. Let's take a look. Planning and mindfulness, as vital to survival as sharpened steel. Get rid of these two inventory slots, I suppose. Reconfigure. Meet each challenge on its own terms. And you know, I think after going to the sluice, we don't need to have that equipped anymore. I mean, we're loaded with relics, even if I spend some of them now. Yes, I could, I could keep my relics, in fact. Oh, what? Oh, oh, the inventory is all kinds of, what? oh, what's going on? Oh, I've already got one on there. Right, you can't double stack them. Okay. Extra slots then. Bolt it on and be off. The mountain will not 
be denied. Now, see, this way, I don't pick up more relics anymore, but now I'm able to save my relics in fewer inventory slots. Ah, crap, but I need the almanac, don't I? Yeah, right. A pointless gesture! This will serve well. Ah, well. Yes, sirree. This is a tough one. Next one is the shroud, and, well, it's fish people. And we, we don't really have time to bleed, unfortunately. But I don't know if I'm gonna go for that specific candle of hope. Whoa! Whoa, 100% resistance encounters. No, 200% resistance encounters. Holy crap. Ah, they're gonna make me work for that one. Maybe we don't wanna go to the shroud. That's gonna be a bloodbath. You're telling me no time to bleed? I have nothing but time to bleed if we go there. Whoa. Screw it. I've been saving that book. The shrouded coast. Isolated. And drowning in amphibious degeneracy. That's okay. Soon it will be drowning in red. Uh, whose is yet- it's yet to be seen. Like, I'm not gonna get cocky. Let's not get cocky. That's not what the C stands for. The C doesn't stand for cocky, it just stands for cock. Uh... Wondering if I need the extra two slots. Or if the stacking for relics is more important. Let's find out how much we're gonna spend first. Buy that other grenade in preparation for cultists. It said there was gonna be a lot of resistance. Inoculant. Hmm, we could give someone real high speed. Low drag. Do that. Oh. Oh, it doesn't let you buy if your inventory's full. Well, that kind of stinks. That's, uh, it stinks that they don't let you go over your total inventory capacity when you're at an inn. That's interesting that they don't let you do that. Okay. Well, we'll spend these one at a time, then. Who wants it? Who would love- who would love some wax in the ear? Who, who wants it? You Hey, who wants it? Dr. Beak? No, Dr. Beak's got the mask. Here you go, Audrey. You're a grave robber. You should have disease resist. Especially where we're going. Essential for the pestilential catacombs. Very poetic of you. What are you, some kind of noble? Okay. Stimulating poultice. A bit of comfort on the road to damnation. Who are we stimulating? Are we stimulating Dr. Beak again? I don't know if we should. I don't know if we should stimulate Dr. Beak. We may want to stimulate Lynn. If we stimulate Dr. Beak, Dr. Beak will be able to move first and heal on the first turn. But we have just made Lynn an utter killing machine with this bleed. I'd like to give her a chance to use it. There you go. Again, can feel the blood rush coming on. Hell, there's another one. We can get, well, but let's not give it to two people. I don't want to make the game decide between uh, my friends. Oh boy, lady. Rest of your inventory ain't so great. I'll be saving my baubles, thanks. Maybe we'll run into the hoarder along the way. Ah, bread. I think there are some folks that could still have their HP buffed. Audrey, that's right. There we go. Whoops, I bought an extra bread. It's okay. 
No, actually, that's not okay. That was a hell of a misclick on my part. There's uh, eight relics down the drain. That's okay, though. There is absolutely no way I'm going to be able to save that all the way until the next in. Inventory almost all the way full. That out of there. Right. Grenades. We need to stack the grenades on whoever has them. There you go. And we don't need this pouch of lie because we've got CJ. For once in my life. Setting a bunch of fish on fire seems like a lot of fun. We'll just throw that at whoever's at the back at some point. And I suppose it's uh, once more unto the breach. Let us embark upon the shroud. Again. I mean, we embarked upon the Fodor again. We survived that one. Hey, thank you all for being here, by the way. Seven and a half hours of your pal CJ Dungeoneering. Thank you for joining me for it. A lot of open air dungeons in this game, though. Propriety floats listless on the tide. Brined in noxious degradation. Oh, we've been here before. I know just how noxious it is. It couldn't really get more noxious if it tried, honestly. But it is trying. You did tell me how the sea levels were rising. So, we got a hero shrine, which is fun. That's gonna be fun. Let's go check that out first thing. Build up some history on our good friends. Problem. Is it not? Oh. Oh, wow. CJ and Lynn both want to head for the unknown. Well, CJ and Lynn, you guys are idiots. Stick with what you know. Look Learn ahead. to appreciate the little things in life. to reflect, remember, and reconcile. Do not let go of the past. Hold on to the past. Learn from it. Make it a part of yourself. Run over all the tentacles in your way. Oh, Dr. Beak and Lynn ain't getting along so well right now. To be fair, Dr. Beak probably keeps pretty poor watch with those goggles. So welcome everybody back to the Shrine of Reflection. Let us see. Who would benefit the most now? I don't know what skill we're going to get. But let's think of which character right now serves the least purpose in our party. It's fucking me. It's me. I'm the le I'm the weak link. Now that now that Lin has ways to hit the middle of the pack for massive bleed, CJ is now the weak link. So, how's your leprosy going, buddy? I uh I hope it was worth it. A hollow clanging echoed throughout the palace. Chapter 2 Infection And I guess I know how this story goes Early signs could be ignored or concealed But soon the reality was inescapable whether by some affliction of lineage or by direct transmission, the symptoms of incurable disease began to openly manifest themselves. Racked with pain, he summoned doctors and aides from the farthest reaches of his lands, all of whom concluded the worst. The king was dying. And the funny thing is, in all of his attempts, he probably spread the leprosy and didn't realize it until it was too late because, well, they've established that this game takes place in a scientific era before people knew about diseases spread by physical contact. Bad news, leper. Real bad news for you, my friend. Who knows how many people you infected trying to uninfect yourself. I can see now what you're trying to atone for, my friend. Like I said, he was a good person, or he had noble intentions, 
And that seems to be the running theme of the leper's story, is noble intentions. Get it? Yes, indeed. I feel like the leper himself was probably a little too sick to fight at that point, so they didn't have us play a minigame. But I've had minigames happen in the middle of a character's story before. We may see another one for Dr. Beak. I mentioned this, they removed some of the redundant ones. So some of them just may not have a minigame anymore. Some of them may never have. What do we get? Revenge? No, 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 that's that's not a dish that you want to serve at all. Although I do like the very Dead Space Greeble shape of your skill icon. Apropos for a CJ, good for you. Weaken myself to beat your ass? Okay. That's pretty much what I'm good at. It's just usually I do it emotionally. Yeah, you see what he said there? I mourned my body and the kingdom that I have forged. That's the thing is, it's the and there where he doesn't seem like a super vain person. That doesn't seem like why he did what he did in the first chapter. Like he was literally giving hugs to the lepers in that chapter. It was naivete that cost him his body and all of that. And man, you gotta feel for the guy. Again, one sword swing at a time. We're making up for it. Uh, although you gotta wonder just how many of these folks are the very same lepers that we were uh, giving hugs to in years past. This is an inter this is an interesting skill. I might get rid of withstand. Nah. I think I'll keep drawing attention to myself. That is why I live stream after all. Choice. At least it should be. Excuse me, by the way, for hitting every single wrong hot key in a row. Something I'm particularly good at. Getting better all the time. Let's go, everybody. Fight so that others may flee. Uh. Uh. Whoa! Tried and tested. A bond to be counted on. Whew! I almost formed a thruple with Lynn, Audrey, and CJ. Thank goodness. Thank goodness Audrey and I only respect each other. Lynn, meanwhile, is in the back of the wagon getting it on with both of us. Fascinating relationship structure this game has. It's all right. You can have her. I shouldn't touch her. I'm the leper. Pillaging brigands. Enriching themselves. I'll share the whiskey the with her later. Collapses. Oh, it's you again. Oh, great. My good friend, the implication. Oh, what a bad team to fight this thing. Oh, my God. This is, this is gonna be rough. Maybe. Nah, it won't be that bad. We just gotta get rid of its, we just gotta get rid of its defenses. Do the same thing I did last time. Just focus on killing the goddamn thing. Hell yeah, stay hopeful. I'm with you, Dr. Beak. Dr. Beak, you've been quite quiet on this stream. Or this playthrough rather, but you're speaking up now. It has 50% stun resist. Oh, but that's not stun, is it? That's just chance to miss. Good enough. It would have done the bleed if the thing were if the thing were capable of bleeding. If it bleeds, we can kill it. The problem is it doesn't bleed. So what do we do? I could have just waited until Audrey's turn, but I want to leave this fella alive for the same reason as last time. There you go. Softened up for good old Audrey. Pardon my reach. Steady yourself. Uh, she knows she's a dead eye. You know, suddenly fear has settled in because of the implication. Right. Well. I don't think we're gonna get him on this turn. 
can always try. Oh boy. She's set up for a combo. I hope that the gunshot doesn't count as a combo attack. That's gonna be relatively brutal for her if it does. We've got Dr. Beak here for that though. And I guess healing salves. You go team! A potent mixture indeed! Dr. Beak, could you pass her a bandage? Maybe? Uh, I don't know. Ah, oh, boy. Well. Oh my god, Dr. Beak might do it. Dr. Beak. I trust you to defeat the implication. And it didn't even leave a corpse behind. Wow. How about that? Uh, what, uh, what, what was that about? Gonna get nine pounded? I don't think so. Not this time. I ain't afraid of no implication. I'd go out on a boat with Glenn Howerton anytime. <laughs> Abandoned or forgotten. It is ours now. How appropriate. How appropriate it is, then, that the implication is loaded on a bo uh, boat dock. Get that thing on a yacht. The only other appropriate place for the implication. Oh, great. I see fish people up there. Short, short celebrated victory. I see fish people. Can I gear up for the fish people? I can. Wait, resist? That ought to help. I can just give that to CJ. CJ, you're the master of blight. Go ahead. If any, if we come up across any blighters, swimming with their gills out of the deep, or gills just flapping at us. Harpoons poised. Where do they even get harpoons? Where do fish people even get harpoons? Yeah, you back there. I'm, I'm most worried about you. We haven't run into you yet. A little wealth can save a lot of trouble here. CJ wanting to, wanting to part with the valuables, but Lynn disagrees. Lynn says we can weather this storm. You know, well, I do agree with that. I do agree with that. I, I'm willing to take the relationship hit for Dr. Beak and CJ from Lin because we need to lower the loathing. We need to, we need to actually fight at these resistance encounters to lower the loathing. Okay, if you are so confident, Lin. I got nothing but trust in her. Uh, I did just get blinded, dazed, and I'm vulnerable, though, so... I'm gonna need some protection, let's say. Just pop that baby pod before it can do anything else. Screw the rest of these guys. Ah, crap. These aren't the ones that do blight. These are the fishmen that do bleed. This is a this is a different breed of fishmen than the fishmen I came into this fight expecting. What can we learn upon closer inspection? Crap! These are the wrong fishmen. All right, fine. I guess my blight resist won't help me then. I'll throw a dagger at a child. Couldn't have done it without you. Go. Oh, no, no, my friend. I see you've moved Lin out of position. That's something that you've... That's a very poor mistake you've made. She's got to move explicitly for telling you not to do that again. I'll show you in a minute. You there! Thank you, Audrey. Pick to the face from out of range. Wow! Did you see what she just did? She just used pick to the face from the back row, even though she doesn't have it equipped. 
All right. Scream into the wind, baby. Oh, uh, what are we? What are we screaming? Yeah. I gotta say, the positive relationships are, man, completely healing. Doctor Beak's stress there. Excellent. And let's go toe to toe. Oh. Slid his stupid helmet open. Oh, I do love how we're fighting on a shore here, but it almost, it still looks like we're underwater, just under a watery, foggy grave. The design of this area is just so awesome, especially once the fog starts rolling in. Oh, boy. I'd say just swing at him, why not? Again, he's got intestines to send spewing. Look, they're wrapped all over his arms. They're just everywhere. Yep, that's fine. I literally asked for it. Here we are. Okay. Lynn's getting quite a bit stressed out here. I don't really have a way to heal Lynn's stress. That's unfortunate. Yeah. We actually gotta be careful because I don't think I have any other moves that heal stress. She doesn't have any for herself. So we need to find some laudanum. Not that I have it unlocked. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just hit the bastard. Yeah, for 19, why not? He was already bleeding. Cleared with impunity. Hit him for even more than he already was hit, I guess. Make him regret even coming to the fight today. Lethality writ large. Good lord. She's unstoppable. All right, well, I kind of have no choice but to take that one. After a crit like that, that deserves a follow through. Oh yeah, whatever. See if I care. I like being back here and blighted and bleeding at the same time. I love being in pain. I was the flagellant. I was the flagellant in the other stream. I was him for a reason. Keep this dick bag alive for a second. We're gonna heal CJ. Yeah, screw you. Here, CJ, come off a of death's door, because you're about to be there. I could have ended this, but I would much rather add insult to injury. You're welcome one, nonetheless. Two damage? Really? Your last attack in this life. And it's a fearful scrape for two damage. Well, let me show you what real damage is like, my friend. That's what real damage is like. I love how they talk to each other if they're standing next to each other. Wonderful. The past is gone. Let it die. The past is gone. Take this bowie knife and scale it, then serve it up. Grill the salmon. Bottle case. Nice. Well, but we won't really need it too much after this. Only one leg of the journey left to go because apparently the sluice didn't the count. Loathing howls. Oh, the loathing howls. Tell the loathing to shut up. The loathing howls. <laughs> Watchtower? No, I would love to go all along it. So would Dr. Beak. Now, this is kind of important. If Lynn down there has a suggestion for which path to take, we kind of have to, yeah, we kind of have to pick it. Lynn is in a stressed out mood now, which means she's going to be inflicting stress on the rest of the team if we're not careful. But we just gotta be careful, as you know I'm so good at. Oh, hey, you seem like humans. Are you weak to being bled by a, by a goddamn, oh, what the hell is this name? A Bardiche? Is that what this weapon is? Yep. 
I'll give her a scar across the other side of her face. Not worth breaking the stealth. I just want to get rid of her on the first turn. Desperate, almost. There we are. You ain't gonna set us on fire. Specifically because I have no defense against it. Not that I'm gonna tell them that. Ah, oh, shit. Ah, screw it. Boy, am I glad I upgraded Chop. If I hadn't upgraded Chop, some of these elite enemies with the little crowns would be a death blow. The slow suffering begins. I can't believe there's 42. There's 42 fellow dungeoneers here in this nice, lovely, salty open air dungeon. Thank you, my dear. Let's keep going. I ain't out of the fight yet. Or ever, hopefully. There, get rid of that dodge. Next turn, you're taking out this fella. I'll leave him alone. What are you, some kind of hound master? Well, screw that. Screw that, I say. My God. Welcome, everybody. It's good to have you here. This is uh, this game has been such a wonderful game to stream. Let's see. Let's see if the mongrel tries to take this. Steady yourself. <laughs> it did. I, I. Oh, that was a strange series of events. I hit Blight on the grave, but not the man because the dog blocked the hit, and it did zero damage because it missed the dog. What a comedy! What a comedy of errors! A little too squirrely. A little too squirrely, that dog. Here we go. Free death blow for you, Audrey. I'm trying my hardest to get killing blows. I'm trying my hardest to get killing blows. To reduce her stress. There you go. If only it had been a crit. Uh oh. You're a hellion! You should be used to being bitten by dogs. It was probably part of your training. Yeah! I do love... I, I do love when video games make me kill dogs. I love it! I love when video games cause me to commit violence against domesticated animals. Oh. I melted it into an unrecognizable pile of uh, goop and gore. I don't feel so bad. Scavenge what you can and be off once more. One thing I do miss from Darkest Dungeon 1 was the unique gravestone that every character, including your heroes, left when you died or they died in the enemies. It was truly, truly harrowing to be in the middle of a fight and to see the gravestones of like, I don't know, Dr. Beak's mask, or the leper's sword and his half his face up against the grave. I think the Vestal is the worst because it's just like a screaming maw clutching a gravestone. Ugh. Nasty. Let's try not to let that happen to our friends this time. It's just like last time. If they go out, they go out together. Last time, Dismas made it all the way to the foot of the mountain, all by his lonesome. And hey, there we go. Lynn trying to heal her own stress in times of trouble. Good for you. She's batting out a hellion. Oh, oh, look at that. What a, what a way to represent hope. What, what a way to represent scouting. Like that's the, uh, that's the eye, the icon for scouting. That's really good. Looking for the symbols. I'm looking, I'm looking for the symbols. That's Baristan's shield up there. But I think the enemies also have that shield.
I wonder if the whole fucking thing is supposed to be it. I, I wonder if this is a, the sconce. This, I wonder if this is the, supposed to be the sconce, and then this is like tinder waiting to be lit on fire. Huh. That one's hella abstract if that's the case. If that's the case, that one's really abstract. Worth visiting. Is that a creature den that I can't avoid coming up? Oh my god. What did I tell you? I told you there was a creature den coming up. Let's hope that no one wants to go inside. Although, a creature den in this area may not contain spiders. Let's hope it doesn't. Pray. Pray that it doesn't. Oh. We're rolling upon a... Oh, great. Oh, great. There's a road battle in the way. Just push that shark into the water. Just, just have our horses shove it out of the way. A fight before the fight. I love it. My god, Lynn, how are you so damn fast? Uh... Nah, screw this. I think I'm gonna have Lynn use Iron Swan on this little bastard. This is an interesting setup and a shitty one. This is an interesting and shitty setup. Here. Try and fear him? He's got he's got 10 debuff resist. He's a newborn. Yeah, there you go. All right, Lin, next turn. Oh boy. Oh, but they're gonna attack her if they can. She's got the little, got the little taunt icon. We're good. Okay. Nothing in that, nothing specifically back there could attack her because she's got eight stress. We need to be very careful. God, we need to be so careful. Chance to dodge. Chance to dodge, but it's worth a try. This is an elite one. You can barely tell the crown is there, but... Oh, it's there, all right. Thankfully, Sucker Punch doesn't seem to always give you stress. Yes. This big guy in the front is a... Uh, well, was a pain. Let us hope to finish this quickly. Finally! Oh, finally an appropriate heal. Thanks, CJ. Very nice. Now, Audrey, finish that little bastard off. Gotcha, kiddo. Come back in a couple eons when you evolve again. Crawling on land. Who does he think he is? Thank you for the defense. Oh, thank me later, sweet thing. Sorry. Wait, Lynn, Lynn, you said that to Audrey. No. Never mind. If the cabin's rockin', don't come a knockin'. Dr. Beak, you could really use a heal, but I don't want to really waste a turn on you to do it. You're, you're healing yourself when you don't even have any status ailments is almost, it's almost a waste. I'm sorry, my friend. Stronger Blight versus more direct damage. Whatever, we'll try it. Oh! And I've got good news. Lynn's in a good mood today. Share in my slaughter, she exclaims. That's, yep. I'm with her on that one. I love to share in the slaughter, actually. How come you can see just fine? Oh, of course it can look above the fog damn thing can just see straight through the fog. You know what? Screw you. You be blind too. I don't want any of us to be able to see. Shit. Dr. Beak have a healing cell. Hmm. 
tough. Is essentially what I have to say here. But, oh well. What was I expected to do? Huh. Messy. But effective. Yes, sir. My thoughts exactly. Cut down these nightmares and blaze the trail to your redemption. Hey, sometimes a gamble pays off. Audrey has such a high murder rate. I know that it is, it's the dead eye. We gave her dead eye, stuck her in the back and basically gave her a chance to automatically cloak. And, and my God, she is just such a killer. She can, she can finish off anyone from that position. Excuse me, from that position. I see that's why she's amorous with us. Fuck, oh, it's the same. Oh no. Deep underground, that lair. Shit. No bonuses for fighting, huh? And this is a creature den, so it's two layers. Ah, with with Lin with Lin so stressed out, I shouldn't. There's an oasis right there. There's an oasis there. So if I complete this fight without Lin getting to 10 stress go to the oasis yeah screw this I'm out of here I'll sacrifice the flame for this one and that may be a bad idea but it means I won't encounter spiders taking a hit to the relationships on this one but sorry folks sometimes logic wins the day logic dict listen I saw the second Harry Potter movie I know how all of that goes. Oh, I know how all that goes. See, the spiders say that they're going to let you into the lair, but actually, they were just luring you into the lair. I'm sorry, what? What just happened? What? What'd they just do? What the hell? Oh, no! They- what? Whoa! They... Did they break up? Dr. Beak did... So, I, I missed what that pop-up said there. But it popped up for two of them. Crap. Did anyone catch what that said? It was white text. You can't do that game. At least put a drop shadow underneath it. Plus 10% healing given. That'd be good on Dr. Beak if she ain't gotten anything better. Yeah, yeah, that's... Oh, boy. But the max HP. That's fine. That's okay. Let go of your low-quality trinkets. I think I might have given Lin something. Did I give... I might have given someone something. I thought it said hopeful, cleared. Oh, they may have just gotten new traits. Oh, that could have been... Wait, no. What the hell happened? Oh, I'm gonna love looking back at this after this. Just to try and figure out why that happened just now. All right, well... What are we gonna equip on Lin then? I think generic healing salve, honestly. We can use that on Dr. Beak in the next fight. Both of them were hopeful cleared. I wonder why? What the hell did they do? What? I guess they just reached the point where they went back to being just friends. You know what? At least Lin, CJ, and Audrey are still a thing. 
Oh boy. Actually, I saw it that time. It's Dr. Beak. Dr. Beak's the dissenter. Dr. Beak, please. We're headed to the Oasis. It's almost over. We just gotta fight around to fist people first. Ah. Uh, we ought to fight him, Doc. I'm sorry. We have to keep the loathing abated. That's, it's better to do this, to keep the loathing abated. Well, we're gonna lose more points with Dr. Beak, but so be it. The thing is, who do I, who do I want to lose points with Dr. Beak? Me. I want it to be me, because I don't want Lynn to start on the blue path with Dr. Beak. Okay. Hey, Doc, let's ride into battle. I mean, I'm your leper. Why can't you be my fin? <laughs> Get it? Because they're all fish people. It's always all fish people. Our light's going out. Here you go, Dr. B. Help impeccably timed. Once again, we're going to pop this child. Can you defy the bleed? That is one elite cabin boy. They are all guarding this cabin boy. Wow, this is real bad. If they reach for Lynn, they may stress her out. And if she reaches 10, then all of her relationships, the all three golden relationships, we've already lost one, she's gonna lose the other two. Kid, you're not old enough to be participating in combat. I more did that to him, because he's stealthed, but he can still attack us on this turn. The jackass. Here, this is for you, kid. No, oh, they grow up so slow these days, now that I know their gimmick. Now, I really would appreciate if you would stop doing that. <laughs> oh, lucky. Very lucky. Is that the one? Let us take a closer look at the Yes! Thing. As repulsive as it is. Simultaneously, lucky and unlucky. They all targeted Lin and none of them did the stress damage attack. Thank God. You guys are pricks. They're real pricks. I think I'm gonna hit them in their fucking faces. Or, you know, their glowing weak points. See, here's a, here's a lesson for you in enemy design, wharf rat. Don't make your glowing weak point also be your brain. Would have been cooler if I'd have hit him, though. Here you go, Lynn. See? She's holding it together. Can't hit that fella other than with flashing daggers. I don't know if that's worth it, though. I think it may be worth it to just leave one of these guys alive another turn. Hmm. You know what? Let's get the non-king out of here first. You ain't got no crown. You're a pretender to the throne. Pathetic, I say. Only takes one. Or two. That's fine. He'll melt into goo when I am through with my Dr. Seuss routine. Even the word routine kind of rhymes there. A deliberate and methodical appliance of harm. Maybe I should start writing about how sneeches get steeches. I don't know. If another world war breaks out, I'll be like Dr. Seuss and start being a propagandist poet. <laughs> okay. Cartoonists did it too back in the day. There was a production code that said you had no choice but to be pro-America. You had no choice. Not anymore, though. Now we're rid of things like standards. Who needs them? That is not the move that I meant to pick. The slow suffering begins. 
but I was gonna go for flashing daggers here anyway, so <sighs> works out in the end. Was that dual sixes for flashing daggers? I think that is the most damage it can possibly deal. It's honestly a shame he's gonna die on this turn after I weakened him and everything. I wish it affected this guy. The smallest variable can make all the difference in the world. So wake up, Mr. Freeman. Wake up and smell the ashes. Remember, oh boy, everybody gets a little stressed out when the fog arrives. Yikes! Yikes! Whoa! We need to finish this like right pronto! Oh boy! This is gonna be close. No one can hit him right now except for Dr. Beak. Oh, Dr. Beak can't even hit him! Well, Lynn. Let's hope that you don't reach 10 stress on the next roll of the fog. Oh, because it was me this time. I took the random stress this time. Ah, God, if only she could finish it. If only. It would be so perfect. Apropos, even. Fuck. Keep her in second. Keep her in second so he has a higher chance of swinging at me. Wait! I might be able to do this. Hang on. Ah, oh, crap. This doesn't get rid of stealth. It only gets rid of their defense. Oh. I'll just hit the corpse anyway. Make myself feel better. Duh. Whew. Good news. Fog rolled out. And Dr. Beat can't do a damn thing, which is kind of funny. Here you go. Cure my ailments. At least has been tended to. That was almost real bad. He's still stealthed, by the way. Nobody can hit him, the jackass. He's just doing his thing. Audrey, have some absinthe to pass the time. Now if he attacks you, at least he'll regret it. Yeah, sure. Yop and yop again. He's just gonna reapply his stealth, the jerk. Well, or, or burn to death, that too. We are the flame, burning brightly for all the world to see. Honestly, Lin deserved to get the last move on that guy. Hey, medical equipment, traveling heal. That is underrated. Tra the traveling heal is underrated on longer journeys. It's your only way to heal outside of combat. The loathing whispers. Yes, indeed it does. And I hope that it keeps whispering of my exploits, as it should. It's something something holding fear in the heart of fear. Uh, it, it, I don't know, prevents fear from reaching anyone? I don't remember how it goes, it doesn't matter. There's a quote about it somewhere. Here, have the bleeding poultice because apparently we don't actually need we actually don't need the neutralizing powders. There's a lot less blight in this area than I thought there was. I kind of assumed this was the blight area, but this is a lot more bleed focused. But I won't drop those because we could go somewhere blight related on our next visit to the inn, you see. We can start stacking up for our next journey. Speaking of which, we've got an oasis on the horizon. Oh my God, and then the lair. Oh no. If I go to the oasis, we're going to the lair. Oh, but I could cut it and I could save the lair for the last leg because we have one more region. We got a pretty damn good team for the shroud. I don't know. I'd really love to tell the Loathing to fuck off. I do hate Loathing. Wait, hmm. Never mind. I'm used to saying oxymoronic statements. No, I'm not. 
Maybe just moronic statements. I have been doing this for several years. I think I'll get rid of this adrenaline tonic because while it is a healing item, it adds stress and we're trying to avoid that now. Onward and leftward. I gotta say it would be pretty funny if Lin had suggested the combat encounter for there. The primogenial power of the obelisks and were rewarded ah! for their supplication. Are you serious? Wow! Now that's a lack of luck, if I've ever seen it. Oh, Lin, thank God our bond is unbreakable because you and Audrey apparently were a fling. Weak hold on life. Minus 10% death blow resist. I mean, thank God that didn't happen in combat because it would have stressed everyone else out real bad. But damn it, we were almost there. Oh, oh, the pain. Oh, and our flame. We might as well tackle the lair before the flame goes all the way out. Take a breather, everybody. What a shame. That's just how dice rolls go, ain't it? There was a one in four chance of someone saying a bark and having it be her, and then half a chance of it being positive or negative. And we just so happened to land on both of those dice rolls running right up to the oasis. Wow. CJ don't want to touch it, uh, but CJ is an idiot. CJ is an idiot and Lynn is correct. We'll fix our relationships at the next inn. Mineral rich spring water. Whoa, I've never seen this before. Cool. Would have been, hey, uh, I uh, would have been useful a little bit earlier down the road. But well, that's a nice, convenient flask it's contained in. All right, well, no active healing for the stress, but that's okay. We can give that to Dr. Beak directly and have Dr. Beak heal herself. Oops, that's not Dr. Beak. That's Dr. Beak. Nope, wrong tab. Every damn time. Now, there are a couple of options we have, none of which are good. They're all bad options. We could go for the lair, high risk and reward, or we could go for two guaranteed combats and then the hoarder. That's brutal. With Lynn having just lost Amorous with Audrey and reset their relationship to neutral, with her HP at what it is, I don't think I want to go for the lair. I think we'll go for the lair, the lair on the last leg of the journey. Now, we need a... We need a trophy on the back of our wagon in order to make it to the mountain. Thing is, everybody else is doing so well. And we can get Lim's health back up with one heal from Dr. Beak. And I don't know what the, you know what? I don't know what the boss of the shroud is. Screw it then, fine. Lynn and CJ both wanna go for it. Lynn, CJ, and Audrey all wanna go for it. Let's make, let's, let's all just kiss and make up, I suppose. Flame, who needs flame? This ought to reignite our spark. On the back of our wagon, I mean. Don't worry, my friends. The Loathing ain't gonna have shit to say after this. Whoa, look at this. Now that is a boss fight arena if I have ever seen one. I mean, even the stress symbol up here is broken in half. We got the stress symbol up here. We got a coral in the shape of tuning forks. I mean, look at all these torches. Torch symbols, I mean. Way in the back. Way in the back. 
Uh, that's some complete nonsense back there. I don't even want to know what the hell that is, but I guess we're gonna find out. Reround bout. Let's see how we do. The Church of the Change. An inglorious heap of rotting timbers. I'm gonna say that big old pearl in the background is A, worth a lot of money, and B, transforms men into monsters. Or mongers. It, it, fishmongers. It turns them into fishmongers. Bleed resistant ones, too. Yeah. Right. It's Bosun all the way down. What does he do again? What can we learn upon closer inspection? Yes, right. A, a push and pull. The push and pull. The ebb and flow of the sea is apparent in this man. Well, screw you then. I'm not going anywhere. Or Lynn's not anyway. You couldn't move Lynn if you tried. They aren't weak to much of anything, are they? It's almost like we got a boss fight incoming. Maybe we can- hey, maybe we can stun this guy out of his first turn. You know, I should have known by the crown that was an impossibility. This is the king of the bosun over here, this bastard. What does the BB stand for? Backstabbing bosun? Well, three bosun are going to get to attack us in a row, so about what I expected. Steady yourself. It's okay. I've got a doctor for a reason. That's why I attracted the attention to her is so that I could get her health low enough for Dr. Beak to heal her, because it wasn't yet. Thanks, game. Oh, Close thanks, game. Begins. I didn't necessarily need that. Someone else on the team needed a little bit more than I did, Audrey. Oh, God, but they're not... Ah, uh, that's right. I got a relationship to repair first. <laughs> it's a heavy sword. Yeah, I am stealing your glory, Doc. You have had enough glory for one day. Take a rest. Air. Relief! Sweet relief! Hey, you guys back there! You smoke? Because you're gonna be smoking after this! Uh. Why, a 29 critical to accompany mine! Thanks, Lynn! See, these bosuns are doing great at getting everybody back in place after moving them. Good for them. It's like they're trying to help us. Buff my damage when I can't even move? My god, she's got unshakable faith in me. Bravo! There you go, fish lips. Enjoy it. Uh... You know, Lynn, I gotta say. Bleeding and healing for the same amount in every turn about sums it up. That about that about sums it up. Why, if I happen to hit him with my weapon in this instance, he'll perish. Why, yes. Messy, but effective. I was almost hoping he wouldn't. All right. Well, Lin is still bleeding, so I don't necessarily want to... I was hoping that wouldn't kill him, because now... Yeah! 
Yeah, I won't. I won't waste my spring waters. I won't waste my spring waters unless there is stress to be healed. A calculated generosity. But it's about the same to heal what her that way. One, nonetheless. There you go. See, they're making their way back. You just gotta use the relationship and affinity system the way you have to determine the way that it works but the way that it works is so realistic and human help each other out when you need help and your characters will I... oh it's just so good i don't even know how to phrase it anymore i've been streaming it for eight and a half hours oh great fog's rolling in i hope it rolls right the hell back out i got two more fights in here I love the affinity system. I love how it just makes sense. If you spot an opportunity for someone to be healed at no detriment to your turn order or strategy, and you take it, there you go. It's a gameplay mechanic that encourages you for thinking and acting like a human, a kind person to your teammates. Let's keep going. Oh, it's you. It's finally you. Oh, Lord. Docker. Ugh. At that size? It could dock with anybody. All right, so those guys are going to be back there shuffling around my entire party, so that's going to be the worst in the world. We'll just try to bleed him. He's got pretty high resist against, against Lin, but it's okay. They've got higher higher blight resist I think oh but these are upgraded bosuns these are elite bosuns this is a docker and his team of elite bosuns this guy's flanked by a bunch of buckets and I don't mean the ones he's carrying off his shoulders Goodness for move resist. Uh, Dr. Beak, you're a little out of position. And he's got even higher blight resist than that. Well, that stinks. Well. This is unfortunate. What can we learn upon closer inspection? That I'm screwed is what we're learning. Never give up hope. Ooh. My man here is matching my DPS. Good for you. Good for you, my fine fellow. By which I mean I'm going to chop you up into fine fish fillets. Case in goddamn point. Well done, CJ. Probably the only time I've ever had reason to say that to myself. He's got 50 death blow resist. Are you kidding? Are you bosun? Well, fine. Get him on death's door. Get it started then, shall we? Fuck that. Fuck that. I'm just going to kill him. I'm not going to try to do my usual thing of waiting eight turns for him to blight to death. No way. Get him out of here. Eight and a half hours indeed, my Cloudy friend. I'm so sorry, Cloudyak. Uh, I'll be respectful from now on. <laughs> Address you by your full name. I like the Yak better anyway. Let's see. Get this big old corpse out of the way. Heave. Ho! Okay. These bosun are a little bit more, a little bit more accessible now. Two turns and he's fish food. But I bet we can make it one. If I can do eight damage. This is why we have If It Bleeds. 
Oh, man. Ah, oh, but the percentage chance is pretty bummer. Perhaps I'll just hit him with my giant Bardiche. Here, have a halberd. I can't believe it. She did it. No, you know what? It's Lynn. I can believe it, actually. Well done, Lynn. That's correct, Cloud Yak. This game looks incredible. It is a beautiful game. It translated so well to 3D. Earlier, we ran into some spiders, and I had no choice, essentially, but to compliment the game on its 3D rendering of the spiders. They're terrifying. I just wish they hadn't done it. <laughs> Adrenaline tonic? Here you go, buddy. Heal yourself. Very good. Now make use of some of that adrenaline. Yeah. Now I hear we have a boss coming up. Still waters. Oh, that sounds like fun. What's it gonna be? Hag finger? Uh, that looks like some kind of hag finger. Who's next? They must be made to see that their monstrous god is mortal. You have fingers? You're a real big fish! Well, okay, That uh, the good news is it doesn't even really have anywhere I think it wants to go. It's right where it wants to be. Uh, in front of us so that it can commence with the goblin? Holy crap! Uh... Hey! He's four wide! He's four wide! I can fear him! Get to the front! Go, Lin! Get to the front! Yeah! Aqueous Yop! <laughs> Whoa! He's got eye lasers! Holy shit! He's got eye lasers! Leviathan! Leviathan! It's okay. Uh, I've got the other combat tonic. I'll use that. Oh, hell. Dr. Beak's really stressed out. I almost have to waste this on Dr. Beak. That's okay. That's worth it to get rid of that stress. Uh, Blight or bleed? Well, I, I guess you have to kill the fish before you scale it. A brilliant condition. By which I mean climb to the top of it. Whoa! The animation's on this fella. How am I even gonna get a finger? How am I gonna get a finger from him? No! Oh, throw it right in his maw! This seems too simple. This seems way too simple. Something about this doesn't sit right with me. I mean, I'm enjoying beating the hell out of the King of the Fishmen. But I don't know. I could use Withstand. Just for the protection. It'll call attention to me, but it looks like most of this guy's attacks hit everyone. Ah! He's got so many! He's got a lot of attacks that we haven't even seen yet. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll wait on Withstand. I'll wait on- I'll wait one more time on Withstand, then... Pull out something new! It turns out he's got fingers, all right! Lin! Lin! Ah! Ah! You give her back! Hey! What? Uh, what? Stop that! I assume I have to defeat his hand? No, he's hit me with the surge! What? Okay, well, this is some real bullshit! Why? Why must this always happen? Moved out of position by losing one person, and then it's just an absolute shit show. 
It's cool. I can't be stopped. I'm assuming if I get rid of the hand... Oh boy, hopefully things will go back to normal. Yeah. Yeah, normality. Normality is what I would like right about now. Welcome back, Lynn. Uh... Ah, his breath is so smelly. Sounds like fish food. I can't do a damn thing. I'm way out of position now. All right, well, ta tag out. Tag out, Audrey. Oh, are you kidding me? Really? She can't use Iron Swan on this guy. Th oh, that's right. Because of the hand. Son of a bitch. He's... He's... He's got me. If he grabs Lin again... Okay. I get it now. It took me a second. But I gotta get Lin out of the front. So that when he grabs someone... It ain't her, so that Lin can be at the front and use Iron Swan when he has a handout. Yeah, speaking of handouts, why don't you give me a handy, buddy? Uh, just throw a knife in his eye. I clicked on his eye because I want a knife to be thrown right in it. He heard me say that. This is frustrating. Dr. Beak is still kind of out of position here. Dr. Beak can't use blinding gas on him. Not that she necessarily needs to, but still. I guess I'll wait till he has a hand to give him a hand. Oh, my friend. That's fine. I could breathe underwater for quite a while. I had to learn to swim in high school. Don't worry. Everyone else will focus on getting me back. Lynn, you do your business. Anxiety forms insidious fears. Oh, it turns out that he can, in fact, grab anyone from anywhere. Ah, great. I do like that batter just, you know... It's not, it's not batter as in punching, as in battery. No, he pulls out a rolling pin, and he just steamrolls over my entire team, flattens them, until they are arranged differently, somewhat alphabetically so. This is going to get strange for a minute. Hmm. Got it. There we are. I said, there we are. <sighs> Dr. Beak can't use battlefield medicine at all. I was kind of hoping that wouldn't happen. It's okay, Audrey's got her absinthe. Man, boss fights in this game are rough. It's extremely annoying. It's not- I'm not gonna call it frustrating. I'll jump straight to fucking annoying. How many boss fights in this game are based around taking away one of your party members or making it so that specifically one of your party members is no longer in the fight? Uh, they did that a lot in Darkest Dungeon 1, and that's why the bosses are the least fun part of Darkest Dungeon 1. Sucks that they did it again! But it's okay. We can work around it. Well, Audrey's going for her absinthe, so she's not going to be able to move on this one. Still resistant to bleed, even with that, huh? That's impressive, honestly. Ah, and there goes distress. Uh-oh. Restless souls thrive in chaos they create. Ah, God, and there goes Audrey. 
That was my fault. What I should have done there was not waited for her turn. I could have moved Dr. Beak behind and then healed Audrey off of Death's Door. But Audrey would have taken damage if I had done that because Audrey had the barnacles on that hurt her when you moved, so. Well, here we are again. CJ back at this point. When we had Audrey, we didn't necessarily need CJ back yet, but now we do. Oh boy. No! See you later, Lynn. Find peace. You put up a real good fight. Alright, Dr. B. You and CJ. The classics. I'm sure you can handle this. Jeez. The greatest test of all. Oh, come on, Dr. Beak. Don't give up. I'm down there somewhere. You just got to get me back. Oh, Christ. Dr. Beak isn't even a... She's not even in a position to heal herself. Ah! Easy come, easy go, they say. Easy come back, CJ. Jesus! He's automatically on death's door? Oh my god! What a boss fight! What a horrible, awfully designed boss fight! What, a, what the fuck is this fucking fight? Who put this fight in the game? What a bad fight! The, the cauldron. Go ah, there I go. The game the killed me beyond. for my insubordination. Who is there even to grab? Oh, Dr. Beak staring down the face of death once again. And there she goes. Nothing can survive such a wholesale organic failure. Remain undeterred. And you will yet prevail. That was a hell of a failure, I will say. What a steamroll. What a terrible boss fight. Fuck that. I'm never fighting the boss in that area again. The, that is objectively a terrible boss. I'm willing to use the word objective to remove a member of your party and not replace them with something such that your entire party is immediately and irrevocably out of position if you can't defeat the hand. Awful utterly awful the fact that cj was still taking damage under the water they had it fine with the with the one with the cauldron the witch from the other game why did they change that fight at all to be the terrible fight that it is now holy fuck what a bad boss fight what an unbelievably bad boss fight compared to the librarian compared to the other boss that i lost against on this very stream at least that one i was able to say you know what that was my fault I'm able to understand why I lost there. Oh, that boss is just awful. What the hell? I'm glad he didn't have two hands. If he had pulled out his dick or something and started, like, wrapping his prehensile dick around the rest of my team, it couldn't have been worse. Move resist is pretty necessary. You know, it's true, I did destroy one of his hands. Actually, I destroyed two, and he pulled out a third. So that, that really can only mean one thing. Hmm. Yeah, well. Hope springs eternal. That's what they say about Darkest Dungeon. We still have yet to succeed. But my god, the amount of exploration that we got done on this stream. It was fun. It was a whole hell of a lot of fun. And I think that'll call it for today, my friends. Next time, we'll set out on the road once more. And perhaps break the shackles of denial. Getting better at it all the time. We're getting experience with the world this time. Last time we made it straight to the mountain, and I told you it was too easy. 
So this time, we didn't even get halfway there. But it was fun to check out the sluice, to check out two boss fights that I never want to fight again so that I can only ever fight the librarian. <laughs> and it was excellent to check out some new characters. Leper and Hellion are not, they don't have the best interaction, but they are one hell of a combo together of damage. So, all right, everybody, that's going to do it for Darkest Dungeon 2. Keep your chin up. We'll make it next time. And if we don't, we'll have fun struggling along the way. Thanks for watching, everybody. For the entire nine hours. I just want to say, as we're heading out here, there have been 30 to 40 people. 30 to 40 of you folks. <laughs> this entire stream. All nine hours of it. I don't know if it's been the same 30 to 40 folks, but my god, it's been so lovely to have you here. Encouraging, encouraging even, to know that it is still possible to get back to streaming to an audience. Let's do more, let's do more of it. This game is just fun. I'll see you next time, everybody. Maybe we'll get back to Days Gone next, but Darkest Dungeon, we ain't stopping, not till we reach that mountain. Have a good night, everybody.